really it's an honor to me to welcome this beautiful gathering i specially extend my welcome and deep gratitude to all the participants who arrived here from different states of india and different parts of the world i assure you that our organizing team and the family dungar college will put all the efforts to make this event memorable and memorable to you it's my pleasure to announce that our chief guest guest of honor special guest and other dignitaries dignitaries have arrived here and we welcome them we welcome chief guest of the program professor r k sharma sir honorary secretary royal society of chemistry london and coordinator green chemistry network center university of delhi we welcome our special guest professor s k mehta sir honorable vice chancellor university of ladakh we also welcome our special guest professor r k mahajan ex vc dav university jalandhar professor g p singh ji pattern of this international conference and principal government dungar college bikaner our guest dr rakesh har ji assistant director college education rajasthan we welcome and request our honorable guest and dignitaries to please occupy the distinguished chair on the dais and i also request dr narendra bhojak sir dr h s bandari sir and hod chemistry dr sushma jain ma'am to please escort our guest dignitaries to the dais audience please give a big round of applause for our guest dignitaries I also request Dr. Sushma Jain, ma'am, please occupy distinguished chair at the dais. Dr. H S Bandari, sir, please. To proceed further, light is symbol of prosperity, knowledge, purity, and. is the dispeller of darkness if you light a lamp for someone it will brighten your path also we have our tra traditional auspicious lamp lighting ceremony and saraswati vandana as a tribute to ma saraswati the goddess of knowledge now i request all the guests and dignitaries on the dais to come forward and light the lamp as we inaugurate this event please I also request to Dr. Uma Rathod, Madam, please escort the guest. अज्ञानता से हमें तार दे मा हे शार दे मा हे शार दे मा अज्ञानता से हमें तार दे मा 
तू स्वर की देवी है संगीत तुझसे हर शब्द तेरा है हर गीत तुझसे हम हैं अकेले हम हैं अधूरे तेरी शरण में हमें तार दे मा हे शार दे मा हे शार दे मा अज्ञानता से हमें तार दे मा ऋषियों ने समझी है मुनियों ने जानी वेदों की भाषा पुराणों की वाणी हम भी तो समझे हम भी तो जाने विद्या का हमको अधिकार दे मा हे शार दे मा हे शार दे मा अज्ञानता से हमें तार दे मा तू स्वीत वर्णी कमल पे विराजे हाथों में वीणा मुकट सर पे साजे मन से हमारे मिटा दे अंधेरा उजालो जाम को संसार दे मा हे शार दे मा हे शार दे मा अज्ञानता से हमें तार दे मा थैंक यू स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ एमएससी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री डूंगर कॉलेज बीकानेर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर एच एस भंडारी सर फॉर ऑफिशियली वेलकम द गेस्ट डिग्नेटरीज डेलीगेट्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स सर प्लीज गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आज के समारोह के हमारे मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर आर के शर्मा सर ऑनरेडी सेक्रेटरी आर एस सी लंदन नॉर्थ इंडिया सेक्शन कोऑर्डिनेटर जी सी एन सी दिल्ली आज के हमारे समारोह के स्पेशल गेस्ट प्रोफेसर एस के मेहता सर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ लद्दाख और हमारे साथ अब्रॉड से जुड़े हुए हमारे स्पेशल गेस्ट प्रोफेसर योर्जी केजलविच डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री बुद्धा पेस्ट यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी हंगरी साथ ही हमारे आज के स्पेशल गेस्ट प्रोफेसर आस्कि महाजन सर एक्स वी सी डी ए वी यूनिवर्सिटी जलंधर और इस कॉन्फ्रेंस के इस वर्कशॉप और सिंपोजियम के पैटर्न एंड प्रिंसिपल हमारे मार्गदर्शक डॉक्टर जीपी सिंह सर डॉक्टर राकेश हर सर असिस्टेंट डायरेक्टर कॉलेज एजुकेशन बीकानेर डिवीजन एचओडी केमिस्ट्री डॉक्टर सुषमा जैन मैडम कन्वीनर ऑफ दिस आई डब्ल्यू एस जी सी टी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू डॉक्टर नरेंद्र बोजक सर आप सभी की सादर उपस्थिति को नमन करते हुए आप सभी का मैं हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूं। साथ ही मैं आप हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूं हमारे यहां पधारे हुए देश विदेश से सभी मुख्य अतिथिगण अतिथिगण डेलीगेट्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स स्टूडेंट्स रिसर्चर्स और हमारे महाविद्यालय के प्रोफेसर आप सभी का इस प्रताप सभागर में स्वागत है and i hope your blessings at active participation and healthy discussion will make this event successful once again i welcome you all and with this i welcome jan tak pahunchane ke liye hamare yahan press aur media se upasthit hain patrakar bandhu gan main aapka bhi hardik swagat karta hu once again i welcome you all thank you thank you sir once again uh, i would like to inform to the audience that from uh, budapest university of technology hungary our one of special guest professor yorzi kelvich is live with us through zoom meeting uh, we also welcome to the sir 
now it's time to uh, for the floral welcome of distinguished guest and dignitaries for this i request dr susma jain ma'am hod chemistry dungar college and dr sn jatolia sir for the floral welcome and garlanding of chief guest of the program professor r k sharma sir honorary secretary rsc london coordinator gcnc delhi audience please give a big round of applause may i now request dr sangeeta sharma ma'am senior faculty member department of chemistry and dr rajaram sir to welcome our special guest professor s k mehta sir honorable vice chancellor university of ladakh by presenting a floral bouquet as a token of love and respect professor s k mehta sir thank you sir and ma'am now i invite dr pratibha payal and dr madhusudan sharma ji to welcome honorable principal sir dr g p singh ji by garlanding with flowers thank you sir thank you madam in the series of this uh, floral welcome now i would like to request dr suruchi gupta ma'am senior faculty member of our department and uma rathod ma'am for the floral welcome of our special guest professor r k mahajan sir x v c DAV University Jalandhar I also request Professor R K Purohit sir head department of geology of our college to present a floral welcome to our assistant director sir professor rakesh harsi in the continuation of welcome and garlanding we have distinguished guests from different parts of india and across the globe who are invited speaker and delegates here so to welcome them i would like to request dr sangeeta sharma ma'am dr sn jatolia sir and dr s k yadav sir dr rajender singh sir to please present floral welcome to all these distinguished guests as i announce their names dr ranjan dikshit dr ranjan dikshit dr dr ranjana dikshit sorry professor ranjana dikshit audience please give a big round of applause for our all the guests who have come from different parts of india uh, in this intense winter season okay. 
now i would like to call dr krishna along with that i would like to request uh, dr sangeeta sharma ma'am dr jatolia sir sk yadav sir and rajender singh sir please be here as i announce name please uh, welcome our guest dr krishna dr krishna please university of leeds uk and cambridge dr krishna okay i feel immense pleasure to call dr p k sharma sir head and professor jnv university jodhpur डॉक्टर नंद किशोर डॉक्टर नंद किशोर डॉक्टर नंद किशोर बिलोंग्स फ्रॉम आईआईटी बॉम्बे डॉक्टर भास्कर दत्ता सर IIT Gandhinagar Dr Bhaskar Datta sir Dr Mansi Dr Mansi Dr Pranjal Dr Prashant Dr Prashant please we are welcoming our all the guest who came from different parts of the world and our country really it's honor to us that we have their gracious presence here dr sriparna from university of delhi dr sriparna डॉक्टर अनुराग डॉक्टर अनुराग प्लीज Dr DPS Rathod sir sir we welcome you we uh, remember very clearly that you were present in our uh, the previous one IWSG CT in 2018 also we are really honored by your presence sir it gives me immense pleasure that some of our former faculty members of chemistry department who superannuated from the department and also present with us really we need their guidance and blessings to organize such programs and to make them successful in this regard uh, i would like to uh, invite dr rama gupta ma'am ex hod department of chemistry dungar college for floral welcome and i request dr sangeeta sharma ma'am dr asen jatolia sir rajender singh sir susil kumar yadav sir now i would like to call principal ms college dr vijay sri ma'am for the floral welcome 
and i request uh, to sangeeta sharma ma'am and the team please honor ma'am with the floral welcome also we invite and really we are honored by the gracious presence of dr vijay devra ma'am from kota audience please give a big hand to uh, vijay sri ma'am in this series of uh, floral welcome i would like to call dr ravi chandran dr ravi chandran please if you are with us dr ravi chandran thank you dr sangeeta sharma ma'am asen jatolia sir sk yadav sir rajender singh rajender singh sir zindagi ki asli udaan abhi baaki hai zindagi ki asli udaan abhi baaki hai zindagi ke kai imtihan abhi baaki hai abhi to naapi hai mutthi bhar zameen humne abhi to sara aasman baaki hai with these lines i request dr narendra bhojak sir convener of this 3 days international workshop and symposium on green chemistry and technology iwsc ct 2022 to present the preamble of it bhojak sir please thank you dr sk verma sir i am extremely grateful to professor rk sharma sir who has given me an opportunity at that time to perform the research work and develop those research activities and papers which were very difficult at that time to find out particularly in terms of impact factor journals and sir due to your guidance and blessings with professor b s garg sir i am here where again we have been blessed by the gracious presence of dr g p singh sir so when i am coming from delhi university to dungar college it was a different learning aspect for me at both the places professor sk mehta sir has been very kind enough to guide me in terms of fibers polymers and several other things uh, i am also thankful to professor r k mahajan sir professor rakesh har sir hod dr sushma jain ma'am and dr h s bhandari sir actually i am finding very difficult to resist myself just to give you the glimpses of 3 day workshop because uh, that is a different designing because i know that when i was working with the professor b s garg professor r k sharma professor a c jain then the research things were different and the designing of workshops and symposium particularly the conferences were entirely different nowadays we are trying to uh, not exactly the manipulate but trying to divert the things uh, uh, in the colleges uh, to inaculate and encapsulate the uh, real teaching learning aspects and i hope and wish that from today to last day uh, we will be trying to focus on these aspects but at the same time i would also like to inform you that when uh, particularly for the uh, young scholars and students when you will be listening to professor nand kishor ji you will be finding an entirely different areas of organic chemistry with respect to computational parts when you will be listening to professor p k sharma sir you will be finding kinetics in terms of different catalysts 
and when you will be listening dr bhaskar datta you will be happy to find somewhere where he is citing his research you may be dreaming to find that that place dr krishna is also there who is uh, working in university of leeds and dr ravi chandran is also having very good citation and few of our resource persons are on the way due to the delay in flight probably they will reach by 2:30 or so when i'm saying the primable it's a part of uh, learning experience so today you will be learning by virtue of the keynote addresses invited lectures but at the same time we are very fortunate and i am happy to tell you sir uh, particularly professor sharma sir mehta sir and mahajan sir in dungar college we have developed one smart science laboratory with the blessings of our principal dr gp singh sir where we are performing the uh, student activities and experiments on augmented and virtual reality and we have developed more than 33 algorithms uh, to provide the augmented uh reality experiments and students will also try to present these we will also be having here uh, sophisticated instrumentation lab where uh, the students can go and find out some experience from uh, dr h s bandari and so but for me i know that there are so many limitations and i also understand that uh, you will be feeling uh, particularly if you are coming from outside then some troubles in one way or others uh, i am just trying to assure you that we will try to minimize it as the principles of green chemistry that minimization of the uh, hazardous materials but uh, as we all know that perfection cannot exceed above 99.9% so we will try to uh, accommodate in that but i would like to emphasize when you judge this event kindly also judge on the basis of contents which will be given by our contributors fellow contributors young contributors and for that purpose we have designed uh, one complete poster session physical tomorrow and one e poster session day after tomorrow and i hope and wish that the students who has prepared research scholars who has prepared the uh their posters will be very interesting for you simultaneously you will find some experiments performed by green chemistry network center particularly uh, dr shripadna and dr kanika who will be delivering here their their uh, typical experiments here and i again cannot resist myself to pronounce three names uh which you would like to interact definitely maya kumari anu jain and kajal charan uh when you judge your poster and your research work kindly try to judge with them and at the same time you will find ruksar there who is also going to present similar research work and that is based on the pg teaching experience i mean to say when you are teaching then the student is preparing so my request is that particularly to all students when you are going to listen professor r k sharma sir professor nand kishor ji dr datta professor p k sharma professor s k mehta try to understand from their lectures and try to convert these into your work we will be having around uh, uh, 12 sessions out of which except two sessions all are student centric they are also the two uh, these are also the student centric but basically these are industry oriented so i mean to say 10 are completely for the students part and two are for the industrial research that is also good for the students who wanted to get the uh, placements in uh, different industries 
but others are for the academic activities so with these words uh, uh, rest of the things uh, we, we have already provided you in terms of our uh, program schedule and we will try to uh, rectify it if there are any errors or so uh, again thanking you uh, for your gracious presence here with firm request that uh, kindly try to accommodate yourself within our limitations we will try to manage best possible things for you and try to judge on the basis of contents if we are poor in content kindly inform us with a strong words so that we can uh, improve ourselves in different terms and three things are there we will be also discussing in the validity session one is the interaction one is the learning and third is the teaching thank you very much when you are coming from all over the uh, india and particularly to professor george and professor heshnovej if i am pronounce, pronouncing correctly george uh, probably correct yeah and, yes that's correct uh, yeah, yeah fine thank you and uh, uh, professor uh, christina and uh, uh, professor aljimir will be joining tomorrow uh, despite of the fact that he is uh, one of uh, person is in delhi but due to their some uh, visa problem they are uh, uh, they could not able to arrive here so thank you once again i wish that we will able to make better interaction and we will able to find good publications thank you very much thank you sir i would like to inform you that this program is uh, going on live on official youtube channel of this college government dungar college bikaner and also are some of international delegates and speakers they have joined us on zoom meeting now to proceed further i request to our guardian honorable principal sir pattern of this 3 days event dr gp singh ji for his address and blessings sir please thank you dr verma honorable professor r k sharma sir s k mehta sir who has traveled from ladakh to bikaner r k mahajan sir assistant director bikaner division rakesh sir ji head of the <coughs> chemistry department of the college sushma jain overall coordinator creator whatever you say of the event dr narendra bhojak hs bhandari press media persons faculty members all the participants who are present in this hall first of all on behalf of my own and my college i welcome you all to this 3 day international workshop and symposium on green chemistry and technology first of all i pay my sincere thanks to professor r k sharma for playing a key role in allotting this seminar to this college for second time if i am correct so thank you sir for the trust on the college i tell you all the participants will certainly enjoy their stay in the bikaner 
and in the college too because in the bhojak sir's lab whether uh, it's ar vr lab or green chemistry lab so many things besides the normal research papers i think uh, we must have a session for the experimental demonstrations too which will certainly scintillate the minds of the young scientists young researchers who have traveled to participate in this particular symposium so that way this event will certainly prove a great opportunity to all researchers of the field the concept of interdisciplinary approach as you all know is a great need of today's world one of the most important aspect of all civilized societies is to provide the packaging material to provide the need of the growing population to face the challenges to imbalance the ecosystem so we will be able to fight all these if we all are united to work in a disciplined way and i think the green chemistry approach is one of the major idea which will certainly uh, fight to some extent to the global threatening as you all know due to the increasing demand tremendous increase in demand of the packaging industries the great challenge before the scientists is to reduce plasticity and i bring to your notice sir that within a very few spell of time lab in the college is able to develop green composites with around 30 to 35% reduce of the plasticity despite the limited resources which our students have they are working and they are able to prove themselves not only on national platforms but international platforms too and this symposium in particular will certainly open a new uh, opportunities for all the young students of the college so once again i welcome all guests and i wish all comfortable stay uh, to all those who have traveled to participate in this particular seminar thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much surely we are able to organize such events conferences and many other program it is because your guidance and support only now it's my honor to announce that director national research center for camel nrcc bikaner professor k tahu is among us is with us now we want to welcome sir for this i would like to request professor a sahu please uh, for this i would like to request hod physics dungar college professor md sharma ji hod zoology professor devesh khandelwal sir and professor in zoology dr pratap sir please present a floral welcome to dr a sahu sir director nrcc bikaner thank you sir as we all know that distinguished guest
from different parts of country are with us on the days and we don't want to lose any chance to felicitate them to welcome them before i invite dr h s bandari sir for felicitation of our chief guest of the program dr r k sharma sir honorary secretary royal society of london and coordinator green chemistry network center university of delhi i would like to present as brief uh, intro about sir about achievements of sir dr r k sharma is senior professor and coordinator of green chemistry network center university of delhi he is also honorary secretary of your royal society of chemistry london north india section and in charge of international chapter of the american chemical society green chemistry institute after obtaining his doctoral degree in 1986 from university of delhi professor sharma worked on jsps post doctoral fellowship at kumamoto university and university of tokyo japan he has teaching experience of more than 30 years at department of chemistry university of delhi he has successfully supervised 45 phd and mphil students and published more than 130 research papers in several esteemed international and national journals i would like to uh, request our all the audience please uh, give a big thank to uh, professor r k sharma sir his research interest primarily focus on the fabrication of metal selective functionalized silica gel for their applications as scavenger sensors and catalyst designing of novel metal chelating inhibitors of transcription factors dna binding chemical speciation molecular modeling studies etc he is the recipient of prestigious awards like insa jsps to visit japan in 2010 in 2010 one another award is there ugc tec award to visit mauritius in 199 world green award in 1998 research grant award by royal society of chemistry london in 1995 indo german award and in 1995 ugc national research scientist award besides he is also the member of various committees constituted by government of india and many central universities and other institutes professor sharma's incredible achievements the indispensable role played him in popularizing green chemistry in india is really worth appreciating strikingly he has organized more than 25 international workshop and conferences symposiums and delivers over 110 keynote address lectures and presentations at national and international level because of his efforts he even received the iupsc chairman gci den grant for three consecutive years 2005 2006 and 2007 for green chemistry networking in india and was also invited by dst to act as a member of green chemistry experiments monograph committee for undergraduate and postgraduate students also he was in, invited by american chemical society gci to present the activities of gcnc on asc's 19th annual green chemistry and engineering conference held in july 2015 at washington dc usa and uk science science and innovation network to act as an indian expert on green chemistry at durban south africa on 22nd august 2014 so with these words and uh, so many are their achievements but i i am not able to mention to all the all the achievements and uh, the research papers and publications so with these words i would like to invite dr h s bandari sir and suruchi gupta ma'am to uh, please present floral welcome and uh, safa ceremony soul ceremony and to please present sri phal
I would like to request all the guests present at the dais. Audience, please give a big hand. Soul ceremony. Please hand over Srifal to sir. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, uh, I request to Dr. H. S. Bandari, sir, and Suruchi Gupta, ma'am, for Safa ceremony of Professor R. K. Sharma, sir, and please. And please hand over the memento for the memories of IWSGCT 2022. Professor R K Sharma sir, please give a big hand for Professor R K Sharma sir. For felicitation, now we would like to felicitate our special guest, Professor S K Mehta sir. Now we feel honor that we have chance to facilitate our special guest, S K Mehta sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Ladakh. And before felicitation, I would like to recite brief achievements of Professor S K Mehta sir. Dr S K Mehta sir fellow royal society of chemistry is vice chancellor university of ladakh at ut ladakh and professor at department of chemistry ex chairman chemistry ex director safe cil ucim ex cri ck and gian coordinators punjab university chandigarh he is among world's top 2% scientist declared by stanford university he is highly active in the significant areas of research like metallo surfactant chemistry nano electrical sensor synthesis and applications of semiconducting nanoparticles he has more than 405 publications in international journals of repute with high h index of 60 citation index 11271 i10 is 247 two patents and is an author of 28 books and edited chapters he is recipient of renowned dwd and jsps fellowships bronze medal from chemical research society of india crsi authors award by royal society of chemistry uk Haryana Vigyan Ratn Award Professor W U Malik Memorial Award of Indian Council of Chemist ICC and STE Award he has been visiting scientists to UK Germany Punjab USA and France and has guided 16 postdoc 52 phd and 50 master students and handled 20 research projects sir really we are highly we are highly privileged by your gracious presence in this international conference and to felicitate professor s k mehta sir i would like to invite our vice principal sir professor inder singh rajpurohit sir and along with him i would like to request our hod chemistry dr susma jain ma'am please felicitate professor s k mehta sir by safa ceremony soul ceremony presenting a memento
Thank you, sir. Now we know that from University of Budapest, Hungary, we have our special guest, Professor Yorzi Kelvis. We also would like to welcome or felicitate Professor Yorzi Kelvis by presenting E Momento and E Flores. Professor Yorzi Kelvis, is it audible to you, sir? Yes, I am aware of you. Sir, we are highly honored and privileged by your gracious, gracious presence in the uh, our event. And we would like to felicitate you by presenting e flowers and e mementos. Thanks. Uh, George, we are also having your uh, uh, the hard uh, copies of these mementos, and I'm sure that when we'll be meeting in the IUPAC uh, meet or somewhere else, uh, I'm keeping all these with me, and I'll uh, give to you or submit to you. Uh, and you, I, I would like to tell you one thing here about the George that he is extremely down to earth, and he is. Uh, uh, one of such researcher who is uh, not only the DSC, but he is doing the things uh, in a different way. The way uh, which he is creating is the newer path and leading scientists there as well as in the field of our team chemistry. Thank you, George. Thanks. <clears throat> Now I would like to uh, inform you that a very known personality of Dungar College, superannuated from Department of Chemistry, Professor D.C. Jenser is with us. And please give a big hand in honor of Professor D.C. Jenser. We also would like to present floral welcome to Professor D.C. Jenser. And for this purpose, I would like to invite Professor Vikram Jeet, sir, from Department of Sanskrit, Government Dungar College, Bikaner, and Professor Divya, uh, Divya Joshi, ma'am, to please present floral welcome to Professor D.C. Jain, sir. In this series of facilitation, now I would like to uh, inform you that former principal of MS College and former HOD Department of Geology, Government Dungar College, very known faculty personality professor in subject Geology, Professor Sisir Sarma sir is with us. We also would like to have the opportunity of uh, to welcome sir. And for this purpose, I would like to invite from Department of Botany, Professor Navdeep Bens and Professor Raja Ram sir, please. 
please present a floral welcome to professor cecil sarma sir thank you sir really we are honored by your presence we need your support and guidance always now to facilitate our special guest professor r k mahajan before i invite dr s n jatolia sir i would like to recite a few achievements of professor r k mahajan sir professor r k mahajan joined back as professor on june 2019 at chemistry department of gnd university amritsar after serving as vice chancellor of dav university jalandhar from december 2017 to june 2019 prior to joining dav university he has held various prestigious assignments at gnd university amritsar during his tenure as professor of chemistry at gnd university he has held several additional post being the head of chemistry department dean in the faculty of science professor in charge examination in the office of controller of examination dean college development council and coordinator in university industry linkage program his research specialization includes chemical sensors colloids and interfaces environmental chemistry and material science in the field of sur surfactant chemistry he is currently focused on exploring the interactions of surfactant ionic liquids with drugs so as to utilize their potential as drug carrier he has been research supervisor of 28 phd 68 msc dissertations and still guiding two phd students he has successfully ac accomplished 11 research projects funded by department of science government of india so sir we also would like to felicitate and for this purpose i i would like to invite ex hod department of chemistry dr rama gupta ma'am and dr s n jatolia sir please felicitate sir by sole ceremony by handing over srifal and memento here i would like to inform you that dr rama gupta ma'am our ex hod is also a student of amritsar university and sir professor r k mahajan also belongs to the same university thank you ma'am thank you sir now to proceed further we would like to felicitate our guardian patron of this 3 days international conference professor gp singh ji before that i would like to say few words about sir professor gp singh ji is among the persons who does not stop until the job gets done he is principal konban dungar college bikaner he considered as best physics teacher in rajasthan best administrator one of the best principal in college education rajasthan he is dean faculty of science maharaja ganga singh university bikaner also member of academic council of maharaja ganga singh university bikaner jodhpur uh, jnv university jodhpur rnb global university bikaner 
and member of various state committees professor jp singh is founder member of bikaner research consortium birc and he has also completed two terms of coordinator sep for pre teacher entrance test rajasthan government of rajasthan professor uh, gp singh sir joined college education in on 8 july and 1986 he has published more than 50 research papers of uh, more than 50 research papers in international and national uh, journals he has guided more than 10 phd scholars and i would like to inform all the delegates and participants that under his supervision only and seer guidance this college was able to get a grade consecutive consecutively third time by nec ugc research area of our principal sir is biocomposites and semiconductors and uh, i have uh, uh, listened many times sir on the topic semiconductor really uh, uh, his knowledge on semiconductor is valuable and very remarkable so with these words i would like to invite i would like to uh, invite professor vikram jit sir and professor devesh khandelwal sir to felicitate our principal sir dr gp singh ji also i would like to request our hod ma'am and uh, coordinator of this conference dr hs bandari sir to please join i request you to please safa ceremony of our principal sir audience please give a big round of applause for our principal sir sole ceremony of our principal sir थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर विक्रमजीत सर खंडेलवाल सर now our alumni of this dungar college professor din dayal gudesaria and professor kamal kishor verma are with us may i request uh, to these alumni to please come forward for welcome of our assistant director sir dr rakesh harsh ji please hand over memento to professor rakesh harshi please give a big hand for our uh, ever smiling face dr rakesh harshi handing over srifal dr din dayal gudesaria ji handing over momento to sir thank you sir now we would like to welcome our hod head department of chemistry professor susma jain ma'am and for this i would like to invite senior faculty member of our department gorav chawla sir and madhusudan sir and dr s n jatolia sir ma'am please we want to have this opportunity to welcome you to felicitate you we are working under your supervision under your guidance in the department
Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to announce that two of our important speakers, delegates from Kokrajhar, Assam, Dr. Mansi and Dr. Pranjals have joined us. They are from Central Institute of Technology, Kokrajhar, Assam. Sir, we welcome both of you to this uh, auditorium of Government Dungar College, Bikaner, and in this three days international and international symposium and workshop. Please. Thank you, sir, for your presence in this conference. Now, after felicitation and welcome, I would like to invite our chief guest, Professor R.K. Sarma, sir, for his address and blessings. Professor R.K. Sarma, sir. Professor S. K. Mehta, Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Ladakh. Uh, Professor R. K. Mahajan from Gurunanak Dev University, Amritsar. Dr. D. P. Singh, Principal of this college. Uh, Dr. Narendra Bhojak. Uh, Professor P. K. Sharma from. University of Jodhpur, Professor Nand Kishore from IIT Mumbai, distinguished participants of this workshop, international workshop on green chemistry. First of all, as you know, I'm from Green Chemistry Network Center, University of Delhi. I would like to welcome all of you on behalf of Green Chemistry Network Center. Green chemistry, as you know, is that chemistry which is good for human health and environment. And at the center, Green Chemistry Network Center, we are working very hard to popularize green chemistry in India. We are touching all parts of the country. I'm going to describe this in detail in my lecture in my keynote also about the activities. But I would like to mention a few things why the green chemistry came into the play. There are two founders of green chemistry, Professor John Warner and Professor Paul Anastas from US. Actually, uh, John Warner, he was working as a top industrial chemist in Polaroid, but what happened, his two-year-old son died due to the rare birth defect. And he thought that this was due to the chemicals he was dealing with in the industry. So he left the job and joined academia. He joined UMass Boston. And then he founded the Green Chemistry. So green chemistry is the same chemistry, but that chemistry which is good for human health and environment. And we are popularizing this. We are organizing workshops. We are preparing educational materials, even a monograph. We had written a monograph and forward of that monograph was written by Paul Anastas, father of green chemistry. And to inspire the students, what we did in that monograph, we have designed the experiment. The old traditional experiments, what they were doing, we have just replaced them or changed them, the same experiment without do, using toxic material. So uh, to inspire the students, we have shown that, see, the same thing you, you can do this way also. 
which is good for human health and environment. So we are doing these type of activities. We are demonstrating experiments to the students to inspire them to come to the... We have introduced two papers in the syllabus of uh, undergraduate syllabus of Delhi University. Uh, we have uh, designed a course for a university of Central University of Rajasthan. It is the first university started MSc in green chemistry. So we did that uh, framing the syllabus. And not only this, we are going to industries also. I will show you the industries cases. And we are showing them that, see, if you will use green chemistry, this is not the expenditure. This will pay the money also. This is not that that you are expanding or this is what expenses of money or like that. So uh, this way we are popularizing green chemistry in India and mostly you will find in IIT, ICER, or NITs, you will find they have introduced this green chemistry course. And we are visiting like uh, we have, like mostly I'm going in those institutes delivering popularization lecture. Uh, I will show you the, in my keynote in detail about these activities and how the green chemistry can solve the industrial problems. This uh, I will show you in my a keynote. Even uh, the experiment which we have designed uh, for the students are very popular. We have written a, uh, like a monograph and even uh, that monograph is translated in Hindi by Dr. Narendra Bhoja. So for those uh, colleges or universities which wants use that experiment in Hindi that is also available with us. Even we got the funding from DST also for doing these activities. And uh, as uh, um, informed in the introduction also that uh, I was invited uh, to prepare a monograph for DST. So we have prepared a monograph and that is available on DST website also. So in my uh, keynote, I will describe you in detail about these activities, what like same way we are doing research. In the research also, we got uh, this last month, we got a certificate from RSC that uh, we are in top 5% uh, high impact factor, which are publishing and highly cited researchers. So Green Chemistry Network Center, and you will find that uh, those generals which are um, inviting green chemistry papers or green chemistry manu manuscripts are having much higher impact factor than the basic chemistry generals. So this shows the importance of green chemistry. So with these words, I just want to congratulate uh, Dr. D.P. Singh and his team to organize such an event. Even in 2018 also, I came and this was a grand uh, workshop organized by Government Dugar College. Government Dugar College is uh, doing the um, very good, like this can be she seen in terms of you're getting neck A grade continuously for three years, three times, so, uh, again, I want to congratulate uh, Dr. D.P. Singh to organize uh, such a workshop. And uh, I hope this workshop will be useful, will inspire you towards green chemistry, not only the students, the scientists, industrialists, they will gain something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, considering your huge 
and remarkable contribution to the green chemistry i can say that in india green chemistry cannot be green without you uh so moving forward now now i would like to invite our special guest professor s k mehta sir vc honorable vc of central university of ladakh professor s k mehta sir professor arke sharma honorary secretary rsc london north india section coordinator gns gnsc and uh, one of my best friend uh, we have with us professor arke mahajan ex vice chancellor uh, dav university uh, professor George from Budapest University also online, and Professor G P Singh, who is patron and principal government Dungar College, Bikaner, and uh, then we have Dr. Sushma Jain, who is chairperson Chemistry Department, and the convener, Dr. Narendra Bhujak, and in the audience. Uh, many eminent personalities are present professor nand kishor professor p k sharma and eminent faculty members i am very happy to see former faculty also joining this function it's really a great honor for all of us to be amongst all of you and this is a great occasion for the college that they are organizing this green chemistry symposium which is international symposium for the second time uh, i also joined uh, in 2018 uh, participated in that symposium also and again today i am here it's always a pleasure visiting this college is a very eminent college and the faculty members uh, are taking care of this college immensely and it has a great reputation and as far as this green chemistry is concerned one has to discover you know creative ways of finding alternative routes and processes which are eco friendly and green alternatives to conventional chemistry in this aspects we cannot forget the immense contribution by professor r k sharma it's really valuable contribution and unparalleled expertise as a good educator makes him an excellent role model to students in the field of green chemistry we have you know an unnoticed or noticed connection between environment rather between chemicals and their effects on the environment and human health since you know beginning of the civilization and we have to find ways and this ways which are better ways can come from green chemistry green chemistry is a novel philosophical approach for scientifically based environment protection to sustain the world basically the focus is to reduce recycle and eliminate the use of to toxic and hazardous chemicals it is basically a sub discipline of chemistry it is actually an umbrella that helps not only all divisions of chemistry but virtually divisions of science business and arts so i think such an international workshop is very very helpful from the point of view as all, as all of you know that uh, we have new education policy 
which every everywhere we are trying to implement and in the that new education policy we have to offer many opportunities to the students mm -hmm. and one of the opportunity can be in terms of green chemistry so this can be a subject which has to be uh, taught to all so that our environment becomes safe and friendly so i'm really happy to be part of this symposium and look forward to eminent uh, talks which will be given by eminent personalities in the field of green chemistry and uh, you know i promise that whenever there is a green chemistry conference in your college i'll be coming definitely to attend this conference so thank you very much uh, particularly dr bojak for organizing this and inviting me and uh, uh, i also invite all of you to come to ladakh it's a beautiful place uh, at present in ladakh uh, it is much more pollution free maybe in coming times one one cannot say but we have to take strict measures to safeguard the atmosphere so thank you very much all the personalities all the eminent people present in the audience also on the dais my friend professor sharma and uh, professor jain uh, mahajan and all other who has uh, been a company always to eminent uh, you know wherever we have some or, uh, organizing some event we all all visit there and participate in the thank you so much everyone thank you professor s k mehta sir thank you for your uh, address your blessings your best wishes for the conference surely we will uh, visit ladakh sir it's a beautiful place uh, to visit now we would like to hear professor yorzi kelvis who have joined us from university of budapest professor yorzi kelvis is it audible to you sir yes okay okay sir we know that we have your keynote address in the evening session but in this inaugural session we would like to hear few words regarding the conference sir please professor yorzi kelvish okay dear organizers dear gp singh dear harshi dear dr harshi dear dr jain uh, dr bojak dr bandari dr verma dr sarma dr mehta dr singh ladies and gentlemen i am very happy to be with you online in this green chemical conference i am grateful uh, for the kind invitation of professor narendar bojak i am proud of the fact that i have many excellent indian chemist friends let me just mention raikumar banzal raki gupta gautam brahmahari bubum banarie kakoli gupta and of course narendar bojak <clears throat> you will see how green chemistry may be connected with organic phosphorus chemistry these days in the energy crisis uh, green chemistry has become even more important well i am from budapest hungary east europe not too far from the venue of the unfortunate war we have chilly previnter in budapest around 0 centigrade dark and fog we are just preparing for christmas that will be in two days so please receive my hearty christmas blessings and greetings extended to the organizers and to all participants thank you so much orzi kelvish we also uh, we also give our best wishes on the event of on the eve of christmas happy christmas to you sir thank you so much now we have professor r k mahajan sir with us ex vice chancellor dav university jalandhar sir i invite you for your address sir please
so very good morning all of you and uh, professor sharma uh, close friend professor sk mehta principal of this college uh, head of the chemistry department uh, assistant director from state education yeah and uh, uh, dr uh, bojek and uh, my dear friend uh, with whom i met after so many years uh, dr nanak shore and uh, dr pk sharma from jodhpur and uh, dr nanak shore from iit mumbai and uh, the other speakers from different parts of the country and the faculty of this college i am happy to be here and uh, really thankful to the organizers who have uh, invited me to this beautiful city city of uh, mata karni and uh, really a uh, fantastic weather uh, good sun and uh, beautiful hospitality and uh, good audience good people i love rajasthan so friends as far as green chemistry is concerned uh, professor sharma has spoken about and he will talk about a lot about uh, in his keynote address green chemistry uh, basically uh he has organized so many conferences and i have attended uh, i think uh, 60 or 70 percent of that and he is uh, doing a uh, great job in popularizing the green chemistry and in fact in the central university of rajasthan if i don't uh, uh, if if i don't if i remember that you started the msc you framed the courses of uh, msc in green chemistry am i right yeah so uh, since your principal is also a uh, dean sciences so i also request him to introduce at, at least green chemistry a part of the curriculum in bsc it's already it's already there okay then it's very good so uh to be here uh listen the young minds young people i have seen the program it will be a exciting very exciting and i must congratulate uh the organizers to organize the second time uh this type of the event in green chemistry and uh, the, uh, it's very difficult to organize uh such events um of that two of three days and uh, to keep the guests happy comfortable and uh, also take care of them is very very difficult i know that because i organized uh, so many conferences in my university also i know the problems being faced by the organizers so anyhow uh i congratulate the principal and uh, uh the his team uh for organizing such type of the events and i also congratulate this college for uh, this a grade getting a grade uh always three times in a day. i congratulate and in fact in fact i was uh, uh in two three colleges uh, of rajasthan as a nac team member and i found that uh, some of these colleges uh, they were not good but uh, as uh, i uh, heard from your colleagues uh, here this morning yeah, he told me about this college and that, that that this college is one of the best college in rajasthan that's very good no? so this is all due to the efforts of uh, the your team and teacher the team leader 
that uh, they take care of the students they teach them better make them good citizen and in fact uh, professor nand kut uh, who is from iit bombay he told me last night that uh, uh, how do you uh, know bikaner and how do you come here uh, in this conference he told me that uh, one of the student of this college is doing phd uh, there in iit bombay this is a, a great thing no that uh, your students are going to uh, such prestigious institutions for higher studies so with these words uh, i thank the organizers for inviting me and uh, i wish that this uh, uh, conference will be a of great success and mata karni again god bless you all god bless this college god bless us thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much for your address and your uh, best wishes to the conference and your views regarding our college the prestigious one government dungar college bikaner it is one of the uh, largest college not one of the it is the only largest college in rajasthan government dungar college bikaner more than 11000 regular students it was to inform uh, to the delegates who came from outside from the state now i would like to call our assistant director sir college assistant director sir professor rakesh harsh ji for his address sir thank you dr suresh ji <coughs> respected chief guest professor r k sharma ji honorary secretary r c london special guest professor s k mehta vice chancellor university of ladakh a guest of honor v k mahajan sir professor v k mahajan sir and professor kazlevich from department of chemistry budapest hungary dr g p singh ji principal dungur college dr susma jain <coughs> chairperson i w s gct dr narendra bhojak convener dr bhandari coordinator and all research lovers who are sitting in this hall offline as well as online i as assistant director college education of bikaner division and personally feel proud to welcome you all from the inner court of my heart and thank you for your gracious presence in this international workshop organized by chemistry department doon college bikaner sir this college is only government college of rajasthan maintaining a grade from nac for three consecutive cycles sir this is type of this type of achievement is not result of overnight task continuous and round the year good practices of academic and extra curricular activities are the result of such achievement <clears throat> today's symposium is the example of the same chemistry department of this college is one of the best department having silent worker and always busy in good practices during corona period each and every person have learned that air water food and drug are minimum requirement for the survival of human remaining all things are luxury perhaps keeping this thought in mind chemistry department emphasis this symposium to improve technology particularly on food water and drug it is not my hope but i am sure that after this symposium each and every researcher will be benefited and outcome of this symposium will open new horizon of research in future i will be happy if next time faculty member of chemistry department will emphasize their research to improve air also through technology with these words i pause my speech with best wishes for this symposium thank you thank you sir thank you very much to our assistant director sir college education rajasthan now it's time to release e abstract book and souvenir of this conference the e abstract book has abstracts from all around the globe and the messages from
So uh, now I would like to request Umar Rathod, ma'am. Now, I would also like to request all the guests on the days to please release the e abstract book and souvenir. All the guests on days, please. The e-abstract book is in form of CD and as well as in form of hard copy is before you. It has the abstract from all the participants, all the delegates, invited speakers. I request to audience, please give a big hand for the release of e-souvenir, e-abstract book of the three days international conference. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guests and dignitaries on the dais. Now, I would like to request our head of department, Dr. Susma Jain, ma'am, for his official vote of thanks to this inaugural ceremony. Ma'am, please. Good morning. Good morning to all. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today occasion a resounding success. First and foremost, I would like to thank our chief guest, Honorable we see Professor V.K. Singh, who despite his busy schedule, he contribute the time uh, for the preparation of this conference. And uh, I also my heart, uh, my also express my heartfelt thanks to Honorable V.C. Professor S.K. Mehta from Ladakh for his valuable contribution. We are grateful to thank uh, to uh, our se secretary RSC London and coordinator uh, GCNC Delhi, Professor R.K. Sharma, for his kindness, his interest, and continuous support. I thank our whale winner, special guest, Professor R.K. Mahajan, XVC Jalandhar, and Professor. Georgi Kelvich, Department of Chemistry, Budapest, Hungary, for his word of encouragement. I thank to our patron and principal, Professor G.P. Singh and chairperson, Dr. Rakesh Hars, for their unstinted support and guidance. I would like to thank all speakers, invited guests, and delegates who are from India and from outside of India, and also who all share their knowledge in the symposium uh, online and offline. My heartfelt thanks to member of the press media for evincing interest in covering the event. I would like to thank all guests, invited guests, and all the 
uh, faculty members, coordinators, conveners, committee members, and the students who are doing hard work for the success of this conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, before the uh, tea break, I would like to uh, I would like to talk with Professor Georgi Kalvich. Professor Georgi Kalvich, are you there, sir? And yes, is it? I am here. Okay, sir. I would like to inform you that uh, we have released the e souvenir and abstract book of this conference, and we have used your digital signatures for this purpose. So uh, it was to inform you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On uh, this, uh, the paper of e abstract book only. Okay, thanks. Ha, thank you, sir. Now, I would like to uh, thank to all of you for listening patiently in this inaugural ceremony. And now we have our tea break for 15 minutes. And after the tea break, two important keynote sessions are going to be held in the keynote address. First, we will listen our honorable guest, Professor R.K. Sarma, sir. And in the keynote session, second, we will uh, we will have an opportunity to hear Professor S. K. Mehta, sir. So with this note, thank you, all of you, and hope. Uh, and before inviting all of you for the tea, I would like to welcome our ex-HOD of department, uh, uh, Professor R. S. Verma, sir. And we would like to have the opportunity to welcome you, sir. I request to Professor S.N. Jatolia, sir. Sir, please present a floral welcome to our ex-HOD, most respected uh, sir, Professor R.S. Verma, sir. Audience, please give a big hand for our HOD, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, blessings that you have joined with us. Now, again, I invite you all for the tea, tea, uh, tea break of 15 minutes, and then after we will again assemble here for the keynote session first. Thank you. Thank you once again.
we are going to start first technical session very soon Uh, we are going to start the first session so i'll request uh, session in charge for this particular session dr suruchi gupta ma'am to uh, kindly conduct this session chairperson for this are professor r k mahajan co chairperson dr rama gupta ma'am and repertier dr abhilasha sonel ma'am i request uh, dr suruchi gupta ma'am a very warm good afternoon to one and all present here i suruchi gupta welcome you all to the first technical session of the international workshop and symposium on green chemistry and technology today we have with us professor r k sharma director of gcnc university of delhi and professor s k mehta vice chancellor university of ladakh sir it's our honor to welcome you the session will be chaired by professor r k mahajan co-chaired by dr rama gupta and repertier dr abhilasha sonel we welcome you for conducting technical session first i hand over the mic to chairperson professor r k mahajan thank you madam uh good afternoon everybody and uh, for this session we have the two speakers uh for the first one is professor R rk sharma and uh, second one is professor sk mehta so uh about uh, first lecture uh, which will be delivered by professor rk sharma the brief introduction of professor r k sharma uh is like this he is a senior professor and coordinator of green chemistry network center established at the department of chemistry university of delhi he is also the honorary secretary of royal society of chemistry london north india section and in charge of international chapter of the american chemical society green chemistry 
Institute. After obtaining his doctoral degree in 1986 from the University of Delhi, Professor Sharma worked on uh, JSPS postdoctoral fellowship at uh, uh, Kumamoto University and the University of Tokyo, Japan. He has a teaching experience of more than 25 years at the Department of Chemistry, University of Delhi, and uh, supervised 43 PhD and MPhil students, and published uh, uh, about 100, more than 130 such papers in the Internet Journals of Repute. His uh, research area focus primarily on the fabrication of the metal selective functionized silica gel for their application as uh, scavengers and sensors and catalysts and uh, designing or novel methylating inhibitors of uh, transcript reflectors and um, many other modeling studies, uh, chemical speciation, etc. He is the recipient of aspirant of uh, prestigious awards like uh, uh, INSA JSPS to visit Japan in 2010 and uh, UGC uh, TEC award to visit Mauritius in 2010, World Green Award in 1999, 1998, such grant award by Royal Society of Chemistry London, 1995 No German Award and 1995 UGC National Research Scientist Award. He is also a member of various committees consumed by the government of India, many central university institutes and institutes. Professor um, Sharma's incredible achievements, the indispensable role played by him in popularizing green chemistry in India is really worth appreciating. He has organized more than 25 international workshops, conferences, symposium, and uh, delivered about 110 keynote addresses at various national as well as international platforms. He, is, uh, he received IUPSE uh, Cameron Kem, GCIDEN grant for three years, consecutive years, 2005, 6, and 7 for a Green Chemistry Network in India. He was uh, invited by ACS GCI to present the activities of GCNC on the ACS 19th Annual Chemistry and Engineering Conference held in July 2015 at Washington DC, USA and UK Science. And uh, uh, he also um, invited uh, uh, at the Innovation Network to act as an Indian expert uh, on green chemistry in uh, Durban, South Africa on 22nd August 2014. With these words, uh, I invite Professor Sharma uh, to deliver a talk uh, on Green Chemistry Network, integrating uh, green chemistry into teaching and research. Professor Sharma, please. Thank you, Professor Mahajan. You can listen my voice without uh, my. So, as you know, I am from University of Delhi. I don't. So, this network center actually established in Delhi University under the recommendation. Of the panel of world leaders, which is headed by Professor Paul Anastar, known as Father of Green Chemistry. And this network center is working for building a green chemistry network all over India, preparing and disseminating green chemistry educational materials, designing training workshops, and taking up green chemistry research projects. We have research projects from government agencies as well as from industry. So in my talk today, I'm going to cover briefly about the activities. But before going to green chemistry, let us see what chemistry is giving. This is the chemistry, which is not 
only extending the length of the life, which is 47 years, 75 years, but also increasing quality of life by providing so many things. Hello. So we chemists are making world worth living, but there is another side of chemistry. Chemistry also leads to toxic world. Chemistry also leads to pace disposal, pollution, danger, toxic emissions, accidents, cancer, landfill. And according to a survey done by a Nobel laureate, Richard Smalley, the humanity's top problems for the next 50 years are energy, water, environment, food, and the most serious problem in the countries like India is population growth. He said 7 billion people in 2011 and expected to be 9 plus billion people by 2050. And very interesting comparison of population growth, you can see here. Whole UK population is equal to now Rajasthan's population. Brazil population is UP population. So this way we can say that the population growth is very serious problem in India. And you know, Nature provides us resources. We are consuming resources and creating waste. And again, nature converts this waste to resources. And this way, this cycle goes on. What, what we are doing because of the population growth, we are exceeding the carrying capacity of the earth. And we are using resources and creating waste faster that the earth can take our waste and convert them back into the resources. So now this is, we are consuming resources and creating waste this way. So the question arises, can green chemistry reverse this error? Let us discuss about this also. Uh, this is a picture, it looks like a graphic art, but this is not. Take a more closer look, a more closer look. You know, plastic waste is a very serious problem nowadays. Two million plastic bottle discarded every five seconds in US. And 86% of plastic bottles used in US end up in land, taking up 1000 years to buy. It. And you can see only generation, no recovery at all. So this plastic waste is a very serious problem. Plastic contamination, you see 90% floating debris as an ocean is plastic. Projected to grow tenfold in 10 years. Plastic found in sea worlds and mammals and more serious problem than this is, these are the plastic bottles we are using. And this pla these plastic bottles, they release potentially harmful chemical bisphenol A, which is used as a plasticizer. And this releases a, this bisphenol A. And this recent research says that BPA is linked to breast cancer in women, brain damage in children, obesity, heart disease, and even then we are using the same bottle. Another picture, if you can recognize, take a more closer look a more closer look. 
you know, 426,000 cell phones retired each day in the US. And India is the second largest mobile phone market in the world after China. And this e-waste is so serious problem. You see what US is doing in terms of recycling, he is between 50 to 80% of e-waste collected for recycling in US are not recycle but is very quickly placed on container ships bound for destinations like china or india and this is not a solution of the problem and this e-waste is so dangerous that the u.s department of toxic substance control determined that the most electronic devices are toxic based on 1000 toxic substances in e-waste this is all latin copper cadmium mercury all of which can be poisonous to people and this is so this is a very serious problem even this came in times of india that delhi is the second largest producer of e-waste in the country after mumbai so what to do two three times i was invited by the delhi doordarshan and we discussed in a live show and we discussed about this problem. How can green chemistry useful in solving this problem? So a big question before us is within the next 50 years, how can we provide it to 10 billion people with energy, water, food quality of life and future technology and that is without global warming without resource depletion and without toxics in the environment and one of the answers from my side is green chemistry so i'm going to discuss about this also you know uh, just going to, through the green chemistry I just want to show about the importance of green chemistry. This came in chemical and engineering news in January 2021. In US, a sustainable chemistry leg legislation enacted by US Congress. And now they are promoting green chemistry concepts in federal grant. They are preferring uh, green chemistry projects for giving the grant. So this shows the importance of green chemistry. Now the question arises, what is this green chemistry and why we are talking now about green chemistry? So I'm just going to take first, what is this green chemistry? And I'm just going to explain this by taking one slide and one relation. We know that risk is a function of hazard and exposure. If you want to minimize risk, either you minimize hazard or you minimize exposure. But the traditional way is by minimizing risk, by minimizing exposure, using gloves or safety glasses or helmet or lab coat. This is the traditional way of minimizing risk. But if we can minimize, we can reduce or eliminate this hazard, we can minimize risk, even if there is any accidental exposure. And this is the approach of green chemistry. So green chemistry is defined as the design of chemical products and processes that reduce or eliminate the use or generation of hazardous substances. This is green chemistry. So people started recognizing the benefit of green chemistry. And finally, in 2005, the Nobel Prize awarded to green chemistry. And see the comments of Nobel Committee. This is a great step forward for green chemistry, applying basic science to the problems of man, society, and the environment. 
So this shows that the best chemists in the world are doing green chemistry. Now the biggest challenge of green chemistry is to get people to adopt it, to convince people to do green chemistry. So we started this mission way back from 1999 onwards. The National Symposium was organized and an IUPAC Symposium was organized in 2005. You can see that was inaugurated that time by our chief minister that time, Sheila Dixit. This is Professor James Clark from UK. He came, then Pietro Tundo from Italy. He came and chaired the session. These are all world leaders in green chemistry. This is Terry Collins. This was the ACS GCA director at that time. But we found that people were reluctant to adopt green chemistry. So there were reluctance to change. And we know that this happens when you start a new thing. There are impediments to innovation. Change can come much more slowly than anyone would expect. And simply stated, people don't like to do things differently from the, they, from the way they have done them before. They don't want to come out of their comfort zone. And new ideas and new perspectives often face harsh opposition. And there are two, three very interesting examples to support this. I just want to show you those examples. You already know about this Mandelieu, inventor of periodic table. This man refused to acknowledge the existence of radiation or even the electron. The great Einstein rejected quantum mechanics. He said, quantum theory is certainly imposing, but an inner voice tells me that it is not yet the real thing. And the third example, which I will show you is very interesting. This is the Nobel Prize winner of 2011. He got the Nobel Prize because of the discovery of this type of crystals, quasi crystals. But when he discovered these crystals, people, he said, people just laughed at me. Even head of his research group said that, go back, he said, go back and read a crystallography textbook and asked him to leave the group for bringing disgrace on the team. And I felt rejected. So this happens when you start a new thing, when you discover a new thing or start a new thing. So we knew that. So we continued for our mission, popularization of green chemistry. We know the benefits of green chemistry. And these words of Mahatma Gandhi actually encouraged us. Mahatma Gandhi said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. So we continued for this mission, popularization of green chemistry. And we knew that if we want to incorporate green chemistry principles into academia or in industry, the best way is by organizing workshops, not by organizing conferences. So what we did, the first workshop we had organized in 2003 with the support of Indo-US Science and Technology Forum. And this was the inaugural session picture. This man was the DST secretary that time, chaired the inaugural function, and this man actually del delivered the inaugural letters. The inaugural lecture was delivered by this man, and this man is Paul Anastas, father of green chemistry. So that time he was the scientific advisor to the US president. So he came from the Washington, delivered the inaugural address. And uh, this is the picture of those participants. And you can see these are the world leaders in green chemistry. Terry Collins, famous for catalysis work, got the US presidential green chemistry award also. This is Mary Kirchhoff, 
director of green chemistry institute this is robin rogers famous for ionic liquid one he also got the us presidential award and these two are the john warner and paul anastas these are the founders of green chemistry so they all came and they recommended that if green chemistry is to grow is to popularize in india then there should be a green chemistry networking networking of different centers so we started working on networking and we got continuously for 3 years iupac cameron gci then grant for this purpose uh, this is a simple form anyone can join our network green chemistry network and can help us in popularization of green chemistry so for this popularization we are going to schools also this is uh, the green chemistry symposium organized by delhi and gurgaon schools i have delivered the lecture there and every year we are organizing workshops at delhi to popularize this green chemistry this is a training workshop on green chemistry for students educators and industry 2009 10 11 then this is in 2015 and the uh, valedictory this is the group uh, the participants you can see professor mehta also here so um, uh, this was the uh, dsc secretary that time in 2015 ashutosh sharma came and delivered the lecture also valedictory lecture not only in delhi we are touching all parts of the country to popularize green chemistry we are conducting and participating in green chemistry workshops and conferences that were held in many parts of the country you can see near in nagpur assam punjab hyderabad gujarat rajasthan sikkim then again mizoram punjab up then central university garhwal himachal pradesh This was covered by all the media, and in Bihar, uh, Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Kerala, Punjab, Udaipur, Jaipur. This is in Jaipur. This is in Punjab, Jalandhar. <coughs> Sorry. And this is in Punjab University, Chandigarh. Uh, and now the question comes that we are delivering the popularization lecture going to different places what is the result of this what is the outcome so just i want to show you the outcome of these activities in the form of a real world case of green chemistry in indian pharmaceutical industry where wealth came from waste through green chemistry so this is very interesting example i just wanted to share with you the green chemistry is about reducing waste materials hazard risk energy environmental impact and cost and everything is followed in this real world case <coughs> sorry so what is that case let us see what is this case you know ranitidine hcl is an important and cheapest anti ulcer drug available to common man and these are the producers of this drug and sms pharmaceutical is the world's largest manufacturer of this drug so what happened since pollution control board instructed these two companies sms pharmaceutical and saraka they were asked by the andhra pradesh pollution control board to stop production shut the plant because of the emission of a gas methyl mercaptan as a waste from manufacturing process let us see what is the manufacturing process this is the traditional method for the production of ranitidine the raw material dmso and then 
renitidine followed by methyl mercaptan. And this, this methyl mercaptan is a very toxic gas, very horrendous smelling gas. You can smell this gas even at a level of 1.6 ppb. So here, the green chemistry came into the play. This is, this was at that time industrial practice to treat this gas. So much input, so much output, and even then there is release of unwanted methyl mercaptan. So the green chemistry came into the play. A green chemist who was working with us to popularize green chemistry designed a catalyst for this industry, SMS Pharmaceutical, and that catalyst did wonder. That catalyst converted methyl mercaptan to DMSO, and DMSO was the raw material they were using. So what was the toxic gas that was converted to the DMSO, the raw material, and again that was used in renovating <laughs> production. And because of that, there was the 40% reduction in the cost. So advantage, low capital costs, reduced cost of production, nominal supervision, highly protective, and environmentally friendly. I got a letter from this industry, SMS Pharmaceutical, to visit their plant, to see actually what is happening. So I got this letter from this industry, and in that letter they had written that being inspired by your speech in the conference on green chemistry held at IIT Guwahati, we have concentrated on one of the burning problem of Hyderabad drug industries. So same way as I am delivering the popularization lecture here, I was delivering the lecture in IIT Guwahati conference. And these industry people, actually they were attending that conference and they thought green chemistry might help them and green chemistry did help. So I visited their plant and not only me, with me, there were two pollution control board people, Dr. DC Sharma, this man, additional director, central pollution control board and Mr. MD and Sima, he is member secretary, Karnataka State Pollution Control Board. So everything was explained by that industry. Everything was clean, no smell, nothing was there. So these two pollution control board people were so happy that they requested me, if you are going to organize another workshop or conference, please invite us also. So because this example was a very interesting example, so we have displayed this example on our website and we got a mail from dr reddy's lab you know the dr reddy's lab is a major pharma industry so i got a mail from them that ours is a pharmaceutical industry manufacturing renitidine and as per the website there's a development on wealth from waste say methyl mercaptan gas is converted to vms so can i know more details so I guided them also, and they're also putting a plant to Hyderabad. So these are the 12 principles of green chemistry. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about these 12 principles because explaining 12 principles require at least one semester. So I'm not going to touch these 12 principles, but you see, the use of selective catalyst is one of the very important principles of green chemistry. And according to this Nobel laureate, this Nobel Prize winner, who got two times Nobel Prize, you know, this year also he got the Nobel Prize. So according to him, catalysis is the engine that derives the development of chemistry. So catalysis is so important in chemistry. And you see, you, in support of this statement, there are so many Nobel Prize 
awarded in this in to the chemists who were working in catalysis area. You can see 2005, 1, 1973, 63, 1900, 1918, 1909, even 2010, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry awarded for palladium catalyzed organic synthesis. 2018 also, this was awarded to Francis Arnold. Then this is in 2021, Nobel Prize was awarded to uh, the chemist Benjamin List and David Macmillan worked on catalyst area or catalysis and this year also. So my group or we are also working on catalysis area. You know, there are two types of catalysts, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous catalysts are very active and selective. But the heterogeneous catalysts are not so active and selective, but they can be easily separated and reused. So what we are doing, we are combining these two the activity and selectivity of homogeneous and ease of separation and reuse of heterogeneous catalysts. So this is our publication, um, reviews in Green Chemistry Journal and Coordination Chemistry Reviews. Even recently, a review published in ChemCom about the development of heterogeneous photocatalysts by the covalent grafting of metal complexes on various solid support. Few uh, publication in the last few years, you can see this is in uh, photochemistry, photobiology, ACS applied nanomaterial, then new general chemistry, material advances, then applied surface science. Uh, this is in general of environmental uh, material advances, Dalton transaction, nature scientific reports, and chemical society reviews. <coughs> we have published one in this environmental science, nanoscale, general catalysis. Then uh, this is uh, molecular catalysis, current research in green and sustainable chemistry, Dalton transaction, material horizons inorganic chemistry, uh, then this is in CAMSASCAM, CAMCATCAM, RSC advances. So these are the publications, Material Chemistry Frontiers, AC Mega, Material Horizons. Uh, this is in uh, CAMCOM, again, ACS Omega. And these are the last few years publications, scientific nature report, nature scientific report, green chemistry, chemistry select. Mm. Then this is in a chem plus chem. This is again in green chemistry. This is sustainable chemistry. Uh, chem cat chem, general of material science. Coordination Chemistry, Dalton Transaction, again, Green Chemistry, General of Material Chemistry A. So these are all publications and I'm very happy to share with you that we have the publications on our work in Green Chemistry and we got a mail from the editor of Green Chemistry that I'm emailing to let you know that your article was one of the most downloaded article in Green Chemistry. So I'm very happy that at least our work was recognized worldwide. Not only this nature scientific report publication, we have published one paper in nature scientific report and this came in top 100 scientific report chemistry papers. Even this is uh, in Material Horizons we have published. 
this is in chemical society reviews having impact factor now it's 60 impact factor so considering the application of this work what we did uh, this world scientific press they invited me to write a book on this so we had written a book also on silica based you know organic inorganic hybrid nanomaterial even uh, considering our work this journal published by Elzebier uh, invited me to be included in the editorial board of this even wherever I'm going again, uh, I'm just showing the participants about the impact factor of basic chemistry journal and green chemistry journal. This is now, it's, I think, 13 or 11 impact factor. So this shows that the high impact factor journals are considering green chemistry. Many scripts. This is, uh, we are going to industries also. Uh, this is the workshop. Uh, we had organized for Mumbai industries around 300 chemical industries participated. Uh, even this is, uh, I was the opening speaker in a national seminar on green technology in unit operation in Baroda, Gujarat. Even after that, this came in the newspaper also, even our prime minister praised about this work. Dr. Reddy's lab, they always on science they they used to organize science day symposium and uh, in that symposium they used to invite one scientist or professor from all over india to this symposium so this time in before the lockdown in 2019 i was invited to deliver the lecture on green chemistry this is uh, in japan uh, Japan Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, they invited me and I delivered the lecture there. Even recently, Tata Chemicals, they started a green hour. They said green chemistry offers a strategic pathway to build a sustainable future using renewable bio-based material which do not harm the environment and we at Tata Chemicals try to implement the 12 principles of green chemistry to develop sustainable product and processes for the future and this green hour they started aims to bring leading global experts from academia and industry to share their knowledge and experience in implementing green chemistry principle. So they started this green hour and they invited me to Pune Tata Chemicals, Puna, and on August 25th, I delivered lecture there. Uh, how much time is left? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So I'm skipping this work, what we are doing. Currently, we are having uh, two projects. One is from uh, DST, 62 lakhs, around 61 lakh 55,000. This is up to 23. And another from the uh, multinational industry, Racket Bank Kaiser. We have the project from them, and we are working on that project. This is in research we had recently, we have published two books on green bond forming reactions. And this is published by De Bruton. Even uh, the green chemistry work with, by my group is included in world's top 2% scientists during 2021, 22. This list was published by Stanford University. So by even I got a certificate from uh, Royal Society of Chemistry London also for publishing research in the top 5% of highly cited works from Indian institutions. So I'm happy at least our group is doing something. So this is about the research. 
Now come to the education. What we are doing just within five minutes, I'm just going to show you our work. As I said, we have incorporated two papers on green chemistry in undergraduate syllabi of Delhi University. Even uh, we have designed the syllabus for Central University Rajasthan. This is the first Central University in India started MSc in green chemistry. For helping the teachers, we have published this book, an introductory textbook on green chemistry, very cheap edition. We have requested them that this should be a cheap edition. So uh, this is published by Bailey. Then this is uh, published by Stanford publication, Green Chemistry for Beginners. And as you know, the, if you are interested in doing green chemistry and reading green chemistry articles or experiments, then this is the best journal published by American Chemical Society. So Journal of American Chemical Society publishing Journal of Chemical Education from since 1924. And this is the world's premier chemical education journal. So what we are doing, we are designing experiments for students, green chemistry experiments, and we are publishing that in this Journal of <laughs> Chemical Education. This is a synthesis of magnetic nanoparticles using photo ex potato extract for dye degradation, green chemistry experiment. Then this is the preparation of gold nanoparticle using T, a green chemistry experiment. So uh, we are publishing, like there are two, three more experiments we have published in this journal. Even this uh, publication, we got after this publication, a mail from General of Chemical Education that uh, that the article below represent the most read from General of Chemical Education. Our experiment was the most read experiment. Even University of York, UK, they published a newsletter. In that newsletter, they have indicated this uh, experiment as a breakthrough, nanotube. We have uh, published a monograph on green chemistry experiments. So this is uh, the foreword of this monograph is written by Professor Paul Anastas, who is father of green chemistry. Even this monograph funding received from DST Department of Science and Technology for designing and revalidation of experiment. And uh, the same monograph was translated in Hindi by Dr. Bhojak. Even uh, I was, as I said, I was invited by DST to prepare the monograph on green chemistry experiments. So we have prepared that also, and this is available on DST site as a PDF. You know, the pharmaceutical industry is the most waste producing industry. So for that industry, you can see here, these are the large quantity generator of waste. So for those that industry, we had edited a book, uh, Hazardous Reagent Substitution, a Pharmaceutical Perspective. And this was published by Royal Society of Chemistry, Green Chemistry Series. Considering this, the popularization of this uh, uh, work or this book, I was included in the editorial board as a series advisor for this um, RSC Green Chemistry series. Even uh, we got the Newton Fund or uh, funds from British Council, Newton Fund for organi organizing international workshop on green chemistry for societal needs, healthcare, pollution, and circular economies. So we had organized that in December 2019, just before the lockdown. And uh, what we did, uh, the 25, 25 participants 
participated from the UK scientists and educate professors. And there were around 25 from India we have selected. And you can see Dr. Bhojak also here in this workshop. So this was organized by us in Delhi. Even now, uh, this is very popular newsletter published by ACS, Green Chemistry Institute. They had written an article based on our activities, ACS International Student Chapter, University of Delhi. And they have included my group's work. This is my group worked in green chemistry. And uh, this is in the report and uh, on the, these activities, even ACS provides, provided us the funds to par participate, my student and me, at uh, 255th ACS National Meeting at New Orleans, US. Uh, we got the awards also, Green Chemistry Award from ACS, ACS student chapter 1718. Then we got a grant, global innovation grant from ACS, 5,000 US dollar to organize a workshop on green chemistry education. So this was the workshop organized by us, greening our education system, initiative for provocating and preaching beyond benign concept in classroom and lab. This was the teachers and the students participated in this workshop. We got 2019-20 uh, ACS Honorable Mention Award for chapters dedication and commitment to chemistry. Then uh, we got Again, 21 student group development and engagement grant award by ACS. And this is recently on July 18, 20, one of our chapter member was the former secretary, ACS student chapter. Uh, now she's a faculty at Hindu College, University of Delhi, was selected to join these Nobel laureates to interact with these Nobel laureate, this is, uh, I think last year's Nobel Prize winner, David Macmillan, 21 Nobel Prize winner. And there are the others also, Nobel laureate. Uh, recently we got a grant from British Council. This grant is known as Going Global Partnership Grant. And in this grant, our theme was Green Chemistry Education Today for a sustainable tomorrow to develop a course on green chemistry, a syllabus for green chemistry. And these were the partnering institution, Green Chemistry Center for Excellence, York University, UK, then Hindu College, and University of Ladakh, Professor Mehta was also the partner. And uh, this is, uh, there was the interaction between the students and this is the industry vice president of Dr. Eddie's lab, then Racket Bank Kaiser. This is Dr. David Constable also joined um, that workshop from US. This is the Green Chemistry Institute director. Then uh, I went to Professor Mehta organized a workshop there on 22nd August at the University of Ladakh. So we went to Ladakh. I and Professor Mahajan also, you can see. And uh, this is an Amrassar recently, very recently, we had organized a workshop at uh, Amrassar. This is uh, recently, a few days back, I was invited by Racket Bank Kaiser Industry, multinational university, UK-based industry. So we are, uh, I was invited to deliver the lecture on green chemistry, role of green chemistry in sustainable industrial practice at Racket. So I went there. This is just the last slide I just want to show you. You know, whenever we take any material, any uh, experiment, if we see and we take any chemical, we just go for these properties, physical properties, state of matter, 
color, melting point, boiling point, solubility, electrical conductivity, and the day when we will consider these two also, toxicity and impact of environment. That day, I will stop delivering lecture on green chemistry because chemistry itself will be green. Thank you very much for your time. So any question, any comments? Anybody wants to have a clarification or anything want to ask yeah. about so green chemistry? Answer, 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 answer. Uh, any, anyhow, I think uh, I, you have uh, done a lot of work you now. And uh, my uh, maybe suggestions from others also. One suggestion that uh, the green, okay. First of all, sir, it's a very nice presentation. Although we are working on the green chemistry, we know you by your work for long back. So today you got the chance to meet you. Uh, very nice, but how to actually mean green chemistry, nothing but how to uh, take the environment in the our work coming I mean, finally, coming to the whatever we are doing our work, inorganic chemistry or physics material, whatever. Everything is putting some waste, and waste is putting harm to us. How to prevent the, that way you have given nice, so we are so motivated to your work. And whatever you have given the, all the novel laureate, like uh, uh, Daniel Setchman, sir, then Robert Grab, sir. Uh, research stroke. We have met all personally in our during our PhD time and the postdoc time, and they had also given given them nice talk how to what the importance of green chemistry and how to, and same thing and especially at Daniel Sessman he he was teaching PM 2010 when he got the Nobel Prize then we saw the same time then evening. The next time next day we got a photo also. So that way also whatever he was saying, so he told how he was published the same work in the 1982 he was published first paper in the quasi crystal. That time I was the university all the time. What is, what is the meaning of a quasi crystal? No one accepted it. And finally accepted and he got the Nobel Prize in 2011. So similarly also in chemistry also like that initially and now it's so popular, we also motivated. I wish all people try to do that in the area of. Okay, thank you, sir. No, no, no. He, he I, just, uh, I just uh, impress how you have presented the game chemistry and the importance of game chemistry to all people. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Joining the main chemistry network center, they should go to our website. Uh, just you see our website, www.ttnc.in. You just write www.ttnc.in. And uh, we have given a form there, that website. You can fill up that form and send us. You, uh, I will go send you the card. For uh, this green chemistry or helping us in green chemistry. In the website, you also have some that something they can write on the comments on this. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there are so many things. Yeah. Go to the website. So I think Kanika, uh, uh, you must be getting many mails uh, like that and. Uh, 
uh, I think uh, what I can suggest is that instead of having a, a green chemistry network center, we should have a university of green chemistry, no? <laughs> Something like that. Where some industry, industries also can participate and uh, they can come and uh, you can solve their problem. I mean, this, this type of these things can be uh, written to the government of India for setup of uh, are enhancing the center now. Yeah. Can we write to the ministry, some ministry to that? Yeah. On that also, like when we prepared the monograph on green chemistry experiments, we have written to UGC. That you I think you should this also. We write are, the we no right right to the Ministry of Environment I think uh, that would be uh, the better no uh, yeah, we are interested in the Ministry of Environment also even there is the highest body which decides for the import license of the yard of material and the paper so uh, but you know uh, Takes time. Yeah, I, I I know that. Anyhow, so <laughs> yeah. so anyhow, we uh, thank. Uh, no, maybe in the in the lunch you can uh, because it's already too late. I want, I want to one thing. Can we have some satellite centers of India? somewhere in India? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I I think there are many questions, uh, the, the suggestions also, and how to enhance this uh, chapter and uh, all these things. So we can discuss uh, maybe later on. Uh, Professor Sharma is here for the for up to twenty fourth uh, till last day, and then. Uh, uh, anybody can uh, meet him and uh, um, can take the advice or can give the advice. So anyhow, with these words, uh, let's thank uh, Professor Sharma for the nice talk. And uh, now I request the next speaker, uh, Professor S.K. Mehta, please be brief. And uh, <laughs> because it's already too late and is um, uh, so the brief um, biota of Professor S.K. Mehta, um, he's a fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry. And uh, pre presently, he is a vice chancellor, University of Ladakh, UP, Ladakh. And also the professor at the Department of Chemistry, ex-chairman of chemistry, ex-director, SAF, ex-Craig uh, Gyan coordinator, Punjab University Chandigarh. He is among world's top two declared by Stanford University. He is highly active in this significant area of research like uh, uh, metallo surfactant chemistry, nano electrochemical sensors, sensors and nanoparticles, colloidal chemistry, and nano drug delivery systems. He has uh, uh, published more than 405 publications in the journal of Pewt with, uh, with the H index of 60 and citation index uh, of 11,271. And the I index is uh, uh, 10. I10 is uh, 247, uh, two patents, and is the author of about 28 books are the chapters. He is a uh, recipient of a renowned uh, DAAD, DART, and JS uh, fellowship. Um, Awarded a bronze medal from Chemical Society of India. Uh, he is an author, author's award by the Royal Society of Chemistry, Haryana Vigyan uh, Ratna Award, and also awarded uh, Professor Vahaju Malik Memorial Award by, from the Indian Council of Chemists and uh, the ST Award. He has been a visiting scientist to UK, Germany, Japan, USA, France and has guided 16 postdoctoral, 52 PhD and 50 master students and handled 20 research projects funded by the different funding agencies like DST, BRC, CSIR and uh, the many other funding agencies 
So I invite Professor uh, Mehta for the talk. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor Mahajan and uh, co chairperson and uh, for the kind invitation to deliver something. <laughs> and I'm really grateful to Professor Mahajan as well as Professor and uh, Bhujak for this kind invitation and you know giving me opportunity to deliver some of the aspects of our work which we are doing but uh, before uh, showing few slides about the work very briefly because already as mentioned by professor mahajan that already time is uh, we are late already so i will show you few things about ladakh because i am uh, vice chancellor of ladakh now and uh, it's a fascinating place. I think uh, many of you must have visited there or they know about the place. I'll just rush through a few slides just to highlight about Ladakh and University of Ladakh. As you know, University of Ladakh was established after the bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir in 2019. So relatively, it's a new university. But uh, still considerable progress we have been able to make in this university. And uh, uh, as you can see that uh, this is a beautiful picture of Ladakh. You can see the dry mountains. And uh, such pictures you must have seen earlier also, they're very common. These are, there are so many monasteries in that. Uh, in Ladakh, uh, you know, Ladakh region means Leh and Kargil, two districts, and there are many valleys. And, uh, you know, in, in Leh, it is maximum <clears throat> uh, Buddhism, which is prevalent, and Kargil, it's more Muslim population. But these type of monasteries you will see everywhere, very beautiful, worth visiting, and uh, very precious. Just to mention about Ladakh, it is a joint capital, a largest town of Union territory of Ladakh uh, of, in India, Leh. I am talking about Leh. As I mentioned, there are two important uh, uh, districts, Leh and Kargil. Leh is located in the Leh district, was also a historical capital of Kingdom of Ladakh. The seat of which was the Leh Palace and the former residence of royal family of Ladakh. Uh, city is located on the bank of Indus River. Indus River is also famous. All water from this river after Leh goes to Pakistan. So, but it's a very important river for the Ladakh. Uh, mountains dominate the landscape around the Leh, and it is at the altitude of 3,500 uh, 3, meters. So, almost you know 11,000 feet. And uh, you can also go up to 500 meter, that is 20,000 feet. So such a height, there are some problems which also you face, high altitude problems. Oxygen level is less. Uh, but you can, you know, when you come there, uh, taking some precautions, you won't feel any much problem. The access through road is 434 kilometer from Shirinagar Leh Highway which connects Leh with Shirinagar and 473 from Leh Manali Highway. So by road, one can also travel, but from Delhi, it just takes less than one hour uh, of uh, time to reach uh, you know, Leh by air. So you, you will find all these mountains which are dry and uh, the weather is certainly cold weather. So as I mentioned, uh, the area is very large, 45,000 square miles. 
area is there and uh, it basically contains ladakh range which is southeastern extension of karakoram range i think you must have heard about karakoram is where pakistan india and china's border uh, match and the upper indus river valley ladakh is one of the highest region in the world its natural features consist of mainly high plains and deep valleys there are very important valleys zanskar valley is there dras valley is there uh, changthang valley is there and so on uh, leh basically is a cold, cold desert the climate is cold and uh, it has long cold winters from late november to early march so this is a time when temperature is very low now when i came here the temperature at in lay was day time it was minus 8 minus 9 and night temperature it goes to nowadays it is minus 15 and it goes to minus 25 or minus 30 also in the coming months uh so city gets occasional snowfall during winter the weather in the remaining months that is very fine and warm during day uh you will be surprised that out of 365 days 330 days it is sunny you will find that sun is blazing like anything but still it is very cold so this is the location of the university this is the location of the university lay campus is at the shrinagar uh, lay highway and uh, uh, this is around 100 acre land which was given for one of the campus basically this was satellite campus of university of kashmir earlier but after bifurcation this was converted into university now called university of ladakh so it's very near to shrinagar highway shrinagar lay highway so these are beautiful pictures you can see that uh, how uh, you know houses how they are specifically keeping in view uh you know the conditions there because uh, there are landslides the which can uh, cause due to erosion prolonged and heavy as well as due to earthquakes but rain as such is not very heavy only occasionally it comes in 2010 flash floods occurred cloud because of the cloud burst a lot of damage was done but normally it is not there but may happen because of the again climate change which is related to green chemistry so uh, so they use timber frames uh, 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 which are braced against the wall which resist seismic seismic load during the earthquakes so keeping the uh, that into consideration the houses are built so some of the beautiful pictures you can see how they are they make designs and uh, they use lot of wood and a uh, lot of beautiful uh, ways how they build the houses about the university of ladakh you know there are two campuses one in leh one in lakargil so although the distance between these two is more than 250 km uh so both campuses constitute university of ladakh both were satellite campuses of university of kashmir earlier before 2019 but after 2019 uh, government of india decided to form it as a university of ladakh it is the only trans himalayan institute of higher learning and research in whole of the india and uh, uh, as i mentioned there are two campuses and there are six degree colleges which are constituent colleges of university of ladakh and you can see the two campuses this is kargil campus and this is leh campus so i have to take you know both the campuses naturally but headquarters is at leh then occasionally i have to go to kargil campus also so there are many things developments which are taking place we are organizing many events and we are inviting uh, you know eminent personalities uh, famous personalities foreigner indians to ladakh to do many activities which are possible and uh, as such you know before forming university there are i it people say that there was a flood of foreigners they explored ladakh a lot but after the bifurcation uh, ladakh is uh, a famous tourist place for indians also 
So only this year, more than six lakh people visited there as a tourist, and because of uh, unique uniqueness of the Ladakh. <clears throat> and uh, we have uh, undergraduate, and postgraduate courses, and undergraduate courses are in the colleges, and postgraduate courses are in the uh, universities, university campuses. We have also PhD program, but as you know, it is only three years old, so naturally the progress is. Uh, we are progressing slowly and steadily, but uh, still we have a good number of uh, students in colleges and reasonable number uh, in uh, university. So we have already started so many, uh, you know, usual science departments are there, humanities are there, departments are there. So large number of uh, courses we are running. Uh, other, and also we are offering many certificate courses for example, Chinese course, you know, army wants that we hold many Chinese courses because of the reason that every Jawan who is sitting at the border wants to understand Chinese so that they can learn what they are talking, what these Chinese are talking. So that way we are offering them courses also, yoga courses, entrepreneurship, and so many, uh, as you can see, long list is there. We are trying to uh, work on these and uh, trying to offer many of the courses. Then we, uh, you know, there are few areas which are very important, which may be relevant to other people also, for example, to this college also. Climate change is a issue, which is a, a all over it is a issue. In Ladakh also, it's a big, big uh, issue because, because of climate change, uh, glaciers are vanishing. So we need to do a lot of research, why they are vanishing, what are the circumstances, why temperature is increasing, and more effect is, uh, you know, felt in that region. In, for example, in the Ladakh region, or Kashmir, or Jammu, and so on. So that is one area which, which we are focusing, then biodiversity. You know, it's a unique diversity is there. So there are some medicinal plants which are not you won't find at other places. So we have to focus them. And, uh, you know, 95% of the population is a tribal. They are under ST category. So we have to, you know, work on that also. So as I mentioned, it's the only trans Himalayan studies and there are remote areas which are unexplored. So all these are taken up by uh, university. Center for Studies in Climate Change, I mentioned, then Data Science and Artificial Intelligence, which is uh, the most important, uh, you know, area nowadays. So we are also working on that. So biodiversity, as I mentioned earlier, uh, basically the mandate is to explore, uh, collect, identify, and document the rich flora and fauna resources of U UT Ladakh, which is unexplored as of now. So we want to explore that. For that, you know, we have started a project for students and faculty. Uh, during vacation, for example, nowadays, there is a two, two months vacation. It's in, it, during winter, it's very difficult because of snowfall, because of uh, cold conditions. So we have from uh, 16th December to 15th February uh, vacation time. We don't have any vacation time in the summertime. So during that, you know, our students and faculty, they, because they, many of them are living in remote areas, so they explore and they collect the data about these medicinal plants, which are very, very important. Tribal center, there are many uh, things of, you know, socioeconomic uh, conditions. One has to understand language, culture, and heritage of tribals of uh, Ladakh. In new education policy, I think everybody now is focusing on that new education policy. So where language has become very important, local language, you know, we have to introduce uh, subjects in their local language also in a big way. And also the, we have to study the culture and other aspects of uh, uh, population of that area particularly. So many activities we are trying to do. As I mentioned, trans Himalayan studies, uh, because this is the only trans Himalayan university of the country, and uh, we have a dedicated center for that, uh, and uh, uh, which will again focus on society, culture, history, economics, environment, and other you know, contemporary issues and challenges faced by uh, the population. Uh, center for Climate Change this is the most important 
once i was in uh, in europe i stayed in germany and i also visited uh, prague i got uh, uh, you know agreements with many of the institutes there like uh, czech academy of sciences prague you know and heidelberg university then uh, uh, we have cologne university and so on so i actually had agreements with them and their teams will come to ladakh also and to do research on climate change in europe i saw that in every big university there is a focus on climate change because this is the area which is very has become very very important because you know you have cha- seen the changes occurring all over the world in the environment heavy sometime heavy rains sometime no rain and so on so there are so many changes are occurring so to study the climate uh, and that you know because ladakh is a unique place it is such a high altitude whatever changes occurs it will affect not only india but other uh, surrounding uh, places all uh, countries so that's why uh, focus to study on that and we are collaborating many many universities many institutes leading institutes this aspect <clears throat> as i mentioned artificial intelligence i was surprised to see that uh, these uh, leading institutes they are artificial intelligence data analysis is the most important one all these climate changes which they study it is stu- they study using this artificial intelligence all data analysis is done so we have to, to our students these areas which will be very very helpful in research and the new policy we have to offer our students many such uh, you know areas or subjects in which they are interested you know they can learn these things and they can use them for example green chemistry this can be offered to the uh, post graduate and undergraduate students for the subject and uh, they have the flexibility to study for green chemistry or artificial intelligence or so many uh, multidisciplinary courses which we have to offer uh, naturally the, uh, the you know I, as i saw in in the uh, us that these things are very prevailing and that's why you know they can do uh, research which is unparalleled so we have to compete with them so we have to offer the great to our students all the uh, uh, such opportunities we have to give sent this is another one because uh, the st category as i mentioned 95% so we what we do is we have opened a coaching center so that more and more uh, students can clear upsc exam it is easy for them because seats are reserved for them also focusing on that so there are many activities already dst has uh, given big projects to us first grant for 7 crore uh, we have been a technology enabling center already we got climate change cell for 9 crore we got so many uh, things which we are, we are pro- trying to progress in a big way so these are some of the glimpses so i can uh, show you many more slides but uh, i th- time uh, is a little short so now i will come to uh, green chemistry aspects what we have been doing uh, chemistry research for a long time but uh, in between we also focus on green chemistry aspects so in this aspect i will just take one example It won't take much time uh, i will uh, i chose this uh, starbun mediated porous metal oxide nano composites as efficacious catalytic materials so why i have chosen this carbon mediated porous materials are uh, synthesized using green methods so that it very much relevant to this uh, international workshop and symposium on green chemistry which is organized here and uh, in this aspects i will start with for our students particularly what are porous materials as you can see uh, we have macropore or mesopore and there are different types we have micropore mesopore and Uh, macro pore and these are the pore sizes the for micro pore it is less than 2 uh, nanometer uh, meso pore it is 2 to 50 and uh, for macro pore it is greater than 50 so how we can distinguish uh, these in this way and these are the mechanisms which uh, uh, are prevalent in these this is three dimensional and here capillary is used no condensation and type of adsorption basically it is non specific but for mesopore it is specific so potential applications of mesoporous materials which are which can be uh, created uh, using thirds 
it is there are so many applications of mesoporous materials you know adsorption sensors chromatography catalysis electrochemistry and filtration so all the in the all these uh, this meso mesoporous materials can be uh, used so when you talk of green chemistry uh, there is a increasing pressure from both society governments for chemistry based solutions to develop sustainable eco friendly products and processes that reduce waste and prevent toxic substances from entering the environment this is the basic uh, focus that we should have uh, methods which should be developed where we uh, should not have uh, uh, toxic substances uh, produced or we can reduce the waste and then coming to chemical industry uh, is vitally important to the world economy however the industry le has led to some serious environmental damage and a low public perception of the industry when are we talk of industry that they, we say that they are polluting the our environment uh, they are not following the norms which they should follow you know they are not uh, treating their water for example which is coming out toxic uh, uh, materials are there so you know chemical industry has to understand that they have to also take care and that's why perception can change you know if industry is taking care of all the uh, important uh, points into consideration and in order to prevent further environmental damage and to encourage more young uh, people towards green chemistry public acceptability needs to be raised by the adoption of greener and cleaner processes and green product design so we have to focus on that so adoption of greener and cleaner processes all may be available again the cost factor comes into play <clears throat> industry they don't want to spend uh, much more funds on that uh, 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 process they may be little expensive that that's why they don't adopt it but we have you know make the processes in such a way they should be effective and can be adopted by the industry we should aspire to maintain and enhance the high quality of provisions of green and sustainable industry to enable a strategic step change to a low carbon this is the focus nowadays low carbon <clears throat> bio based economy based on the core values of high quality pure and transitional research and education embedded within a framework of the system so focus is on this you know uh, low carbon bio based economy and it should be sustainable this is the goal which is, which has to be focused and we have to devise methods using this green methods although methods are available we have to make them green which can uh, naturally and bio based economy that will be more acceptable and it will be for sustainable growth now as mentioned by sharma uh, you know we have a we have a collaboration with the university of york uh, professor matharu who also comes uh, quite often here we have uh, jointly collaborated also dr sharma me and uh, dr matharu we had conferences also we have the projects also and so on so uh, and they have been involved uh, this is green chemistry center for excellence university of york they have been involved in the research on the conversion of waste biomass to mesoporous material that is the focus for many many years they are doing this type of work now the green chemistry has a uh, green approach has provided new technologies of bio waste utilization and developing future bio refinery systems and uh, you know this has led this is their work. this has led to the development of what we call starbun technologies and this starbun technology basically starbun uh, you know term has taken from a star plus carbon have actually combined starch with carbon and that is called starbun so this technology was developed by university of york and uh, star based mesoporous materials which are called starbun uh, and due to their unique range four diameter network have outstanding potential in range technologically important applications that are that is critically dependent on mass transport of chemicals to the carbon surface so that's why they have become very very important and in this research organization of natural materials at the nanometer scale level in biological system is utilized to produce mesoporous materials 
and uh, it has been shown that it could help to generate systems with same efficiency and selectivity demonstrated by nature so it is uh, keeping that in view that it is similar to processes which are uh, close to nature these can be uh, this has been proved to be uh, of the similar scale so that's why open technologies have become very very important and uh, you know particularly bio based mesoporous uh, uh, starbun uh utilizes natural ability of polysaccharides basically they are using the polysaccharides to retain their organized structure due to pyrolysis the so pyrolysis is the method which is being used starbuns are novel family of carbonaceous mesoporous materials derived from polysaccharides that consist of continuum of materials obtained uh, at different temperatures you have to go to maybe 300 400 500 temperature that is pyrolysis and uh, depending on the starbun preparation and temperature the surface functionality is ranging from hydrophilic to hydrophobic whether low temperature prepared materials or high temperature materials can be prepared easily so this technology when we say uh, you know green that means it it avoids the use of harmful chemicals which is in normally in chemistry we use harmful chemicals it should be sustain it is sustainable that is polysaccharides where we can use starch we can use alginic acid we can use pectin we can use hemicellulose and these are renewable renewable sources that are widely available in many countries in india also these are all available easily and uh, the methodology is very simple it comprises of three stages Uh, gelatinization dehydration and controlled pyrolysis so these are the methods we can create biomass easily and then uh, it is environmentally uh, benign that is non persistent non bio uh, accumulative and non toxic so this way the, that's why focus is on such technologies for example this was uh, you know uh, 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 created or uh, uh, given by uh, university of york so just to uh, show you broadly that uh, how this process is done for example we take poly uh, uh, saccharide uh, which is a source you can have maize you can take from there you do extraction gelatinization retrogeneration you can convert this into polysaccharide gel and further on you can have you can dry it you uh, having solvent exchange you can create a porous polysaccharide and then uh, you know when you create this uh, you can do carbonization and you can get this material and uh, this is tunable porous material high me uh, mesoporosity high surface area controllable at electrical property particulate or monolithic form so these all these you can uh, easily obtain by using this process this method which has been successfully done in the literature also by many people so you can see uh, what is the difference you know if you take a pure uh, starch or alginic acid in the pure form or if you expand it uh, expand the starch and uh, then uh, you carbonized at 300 degree centigrade and then uh, same same is you know this is the abc you can do that and similarly alginic acid you can do that so what you are doing basically you are increasing the level of por porosity with each step you are increasing the porosity this is what is required uh, to increase the efficiency of the material and uh, what are the application of starbun you can see the uh, basically adsorption <clears throat> is one of the specific uh, uh, example of the, the the application and this can be used for specific adsorption of target molecules from for example gas mixtures for pollution control an aqua solution for water purification and uh, you know starbuns again you can see they are interconnected with micropores and mesopores network which is responsible for enhanced carbon dioxide adsorption and so on so these are you know unique things which uh, where you can also use critical metals uh, you can separate them using uh, adsorption method <coughs> then another application is catalysis you can use these materials as catalyst in many of the processes 
because they they are an excellent support for heterogeneous catalysis where its unique and tunable surface characteristics are appropriate for many reactions some of the toxic reactions also you can replace using starbun for the catalysis and then you know the results have been found that they are very very useful production of polymers and high value intermediates all these have been reported chromatography uh, you know particularly starbun materials derived from alginic acid are particularly you know useful in chromatographic stationary phase materials and uh, as they uh, present a minimum micropore content this avoids reduction of separation of efficiency as a consequences of irreversible high energy analytic adsorption in sub 2 nanometer pores so these are some of the applications which are there are many examples already in the literature coming to specific example i take which we we are, we have done many uh, processes in this way but since uh, uh, in my lab we have been synthesizing nanoparticle in a big way and using them for different applications for sensor application and so on i won't go into detail so so use uh, these starbuns as uh, the methods are known we prepared these starbuns and then uh, we what we did uh, we combined this molybdenum oxide nanoparticles along with starbuns so we produced this catalyst what we call molybdenum oxide starbun catalyst and we tried to use that for wastewater remediation so that was the target to combine starbuns with nanoparticles and see how the whether efficiency increases or not and we found that they became more efficient and they can be used easily so this is the uh, you know starbun uh, yellow ones and uh, these uh, dots you can see these are molybdenum nanoparticles which have been embedded on the surface so naturally we have a pi pi stacking between aromatic part of the pollution pollutant and the delocalized pi electron system of the composite so <clears throat> coming to the waste uh, treatment uh, uh, processes a number of processes have been acknowledged in nature for water treatment but each of them it has been found that they suffer from some of the drawbacks hence uh, there is a always need to have this particular uh, criteria that we should have material which is cost effective we should have material which is environment friendly sustainable technology you know it is it has to be sustained and when you are scaling up it has to be sustainable uh, in laboratory sometimes we do some processes they but when we try to scale them they fail so we have to keep that in mind also and the material should be locally available and socially acceptable uh, for example in uh, punjab you know always in the news uh, polari uh, burning they do is you know, if we can use that material for such uh, you know useful purposes it will serving the both uh, both the purposes so this type of uh, technology one has to develop and uh, we have found that uh, particularly the among the transition metals molybdenum oxides and derivatives have attracted a lot of attention uh, due to unique structural and optical properties so you know there are many things which are very important uh, for this because it has a wide band gap semiconductor and uh, some specific properties and even there are certain reports that it show antimicrobial and antioxidant uh, effects also and uh, it is not an endangered element you know there are many elements like we are using lithium in a big way lithium batteries and other things you know and in nature it is in the limited amount so after many years we won't find the lithium available in the on in the earth so but molybdenum is one which is not in endangered so we can use this type of material which is available in plenty if it can be used for some purpose, uh, Uh, useful purposes that will be uh, very important i'll take just a few yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know we use this and uh, what we do is biomass for uh, fabrication of composites we use greener methods we use uh, no use of temp uh, templating agents uh, use of harsh chemicals is prevented nanoparticles will act as a catalytic active sites for degradation of uh, 
noxious you know effluents and so on so this is just a, a very quickly because time is very short we have prepared these nanoparticles using uh, ahm that is ammonium hepta molybdenum tetrahydrate and using microwave technology we can convert into pure molybdenum trioxide hexagonal nano rods similarly second method carbon carbonaceous material where we have taken biomass derived corn starch and using carbonization we have increased the uh, uh, surface area we could increase from 0.8 to 332 meter square per gram so this way then mixing these two will give us uh, this is the way how we have done uh, i won't go into detail so using this uh, solvent exchange freezing drying uh, starting with microwave uh, gelatinization and so on so ultimately when we do carbonization this is carbon 350 we have given this name but this is molybdenum based carbon carbon molybdenum combined so these two materials we got and what it is we i'll just skip this so crystallize both these materials and you can see this is pure expanded molybdenum expanded carbon 350 and uh, carbon molybdenum 350 and you can see the surface area has increased uh, for uh, for example it was 74 here and when we have used molybdenum it is it becomes 102 so all these parameters uh, micropore again it also increases mesopore uh, also we compared and this uh, uh, be uh, the adsorption pore also we uh, compared and these are 10 graphs which clearly shows that these molybdenum particles uh, you can see nano particles very much visible on the material so we use this for the catalytic reduction of para nitrophenol you know which is a, a material which damages the crops and uh, using just simple adsorption phenomena versus wavelength we could see that four nitrophenol transform into four nitrophenolate ion as uh, you can see it shift, shift is to 400 nanometer so uh, then the when it forms four uh, nitrophenol it decreases with the simultaneous appearance of growth of the small absorption band at 290 nanometer which is corresponding to uh, formation of 4 ap so this experiment we did and we uh, you know from 0 minute to uh, 25 minutes we observed the changes uh, in this and uh, uh, you know reduction of 4 nitrophenol by sodium borohydrate on uh, both uh, cmo and starbun we try to analyze and then uh, find uh, we could find that uh, what is the Uh, apparent rate constant which came to 11.2 into 10 to minus 2 per meter so just to conclude this just one example we have uh, done so so much of research many examples are there but because time is short i can't go uh, to all these examples just to conclude that successful synthesis of novel composite containing molybdenum oxide nanoparticles embedded on starbun framework the process follows an in situ green process that's more important without the use of any harsh chemicals uh, molybdenum loading uh, as evidenced by icpms was 179.337 mg per gram very good uh, value and uh, we could prove that it is highly uh, efficient catalytic reduction of 4 nitrophenol uh, has taken place with the uh, you know rate constant 11.2 into 10 to minus 2 in comparison to other molybdenum containing composites material has real time application in water uh, water treatment such as catalysis adsorption and filtration so with this i thank you all of you for patient listening thank you so much and you can see so we want the art should be green thank you very much yeah do no, any question if anybody i think uh, you can have questions during the lunch time okay. <laughs> so uh, thank you professor mehta for a nice talk and uh, um, this is a new area of research where the green chemistry plays an important role so with these words uh, i think uh,
let's thank uh, both the speakers uh, professor uh, sharma and professor mehta for their nice uh, so i hand over the mic to the organizers now thank you sir due to delayed session uh, we are just concluding it i re request uh, dr suruchi gupta madam session in charge for this to kindly present uh, uh, one small token of appreciation to our chairperson co chairperson and uh, repertier thank you sir dr suruchi gupta madam is a senior faculty member in our department uh sir please yeah it is for you uh, now i request uh, dr suruchi gupta ma'am to present this to dr rama gupta ma'am who has been ex hod of our department and now i request to dr abhilasha ma'am to kindly uh thank you for all of you uh, now you all are invited for the lunch and after half an hour we'll start the industrial presentation work कोई बात नहीं
technical session of this workshop. The session will be chaired by Professor R.K. Sharma and co-chaired by Dr. Devesh Khandelwal and repertoire is Pratibha Payal. I request you to, sir, be there. Today, we in this session, we have two lectures. First, from Georgie Kelvis, Budapest University of Techni Technology, Hungary, and the second one by Professor Nand Kishore, IIT Bombay, Mumbai. It is our honor to welcome all of you. Thank you. For conducting technical session, I hand over the mic to chairperson. Yeah, I think we are uh, ready to start this one session, technical session second. Uh, Professor George, audible today? Yes, I am here. Yeah. Uh, now I just, uh, just to start with the introduction of Professor George. Uh, basically, he is PhD in 1990 and DSC in 1994. Uh, Professor George developed a P a heterocyclic research in the subject of ring enlargement of five membered P heterocycles and on the utilization of the products so obtained. He elaborated the synthesis of a number of families of compounds, bridged P heterocycles, precursors of low coordinate fragments were synthesized and utilized in uh, phosphorylation. The study on the synthesis and relativity of uh, aromatic phosphols forms another relevant part of this research, his research. Additional research interest uh, for jo uh, Professor George includes uh, Dale's elders reactions, low coordinated P fragments, uh, selective relux reductions, uh, phosphine boranes, uh, and selective reductions. Mechanism and uh, theoretical aspects are also for the, uh, his interest. Recently, he has uh, uh, turned towards environmentally friendly uh, synthesis, environmentally friendly chemistry, 
the, that is the green chemistry uh, fo forms new aspect of his research it means mw chemistry this syn energies and mw and phase transfer catalyst ionic liquids the development of new catalyst and monitoring reactions by in situ methods he took also part in industrial projects such as the synthesis of pharmaceutical intermediates and products he is the author or co-author of ca 550 paper uh, around uh, 550 papers the majority of which appeared in international journals so i welcome professor george to deliver his uh, uh, research paper on this technical session professor george okay thank you please give me permission to share my presentation yeah. because i cannot Professor okay. Thor Skelvis, please, okay. Uh, okay. now it is enabled to you. Okay. okay. Moment, please. Okay, dear chairman, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Kandelwal, thanks for your kind introduction. And thanks also you to Professor Narendar Bojak for inviting me. This is my second Green Chemical Conference with you. I am from Budapest, Hungary, Europe. We are uh, four and a half hours later and we are having a snow-free winter presently. As I mentioned in my address after the felicitation, I had the pleasure to connect organophosphorus chemistry with green chemistry. And now I should like to uh, sum up the most important uh, results. <clears throat> One of our major model reactions is the synthesis of phosphinates. The classical version is the esterification of phosphinic chlorides with alcohols. The green alternative would be the direct esterification of phosphinic acids. Although this is impossible on conventional heating, under microwave irradiation, the esterification surprisingly took place. Or microwave assisted direct esterification uh, could be used for cyclic phosphinic acids in the first approach for hydroxyphosphaline oxides. The only drawback is the relatively high temperature above 200 centigrade required. This problem could be eliminated, however, by the application of suitable ionic liquids as the catalysts. It can be seen that in the presence of butyl methylimidazolium hexafluorophosphorate uh, as the additive, the model esterifications could be carried out at lower temperatures in shorter times and in higher conversions. Moreover, the protocol elaborated uh, was quite uh, general and could be used for other five and six membered derivatives like uh, phospholene uh, oxides and hydroxy hexide or phosphinin oxides. Then different phenylphosphinic acids were also subjected to microwave assisted uh, and ionic liquid promoted esterifications. The reactivity order was interesting. Here you can see the typical enthalpy profiles for different reactions. The ideal objects for microwave assisted reactions are the thermoneutral chemical transformations having a relatively high enthalpy of activation. So, case B. Uh, is the blue line, is the ideal object for microwave assisted reactions. Such reaction is the direct esterification of phosphinic acids. For example, the that of the hydroxy C methyl phospholine oxide that doesn't take place on conventional heating, as I mentioned, only under microwave irradiation. The entropy of activation is as 
uh, as high as 135 kilojoule per mole. At the same time, the esterification of simple carboxylic acids uh, runs through a lower entropy of activation of 75 um, kilojoule per mole. The pharmaceutical and fine chemical industry is more and more interested in developing continuous accomplishments. Therefore, we made efforts to elaborate microwave assisted flow synthesis. Here you can see uh, the commercial flow cell that was inserted in a SIM uh, reactor, and we could apply this for several reactions. Our next targets were the phosphonic, phosphonic acids. So far, I have been spoken about phosphonic acids. Now we change for phosphonic acids. Traditional synthesis involves esterification of phosphonic, uh, phosphonic dichlorides or the orbus of the action. In the first approach, the alkyl phenyl H phosphonates were oxidized, then the ester acids were esterified. However, we could not be satisfied with the efficiency. For this, the direct esterification of phenyl phosphonic acid was studied in detail. <clears throat> The low, uh, you should see the low line. We learned that the microwave assisted and ionic liquid catalyzed protocol furnished the monoesters in good selectivities and in acceptable yields. At the same time, the dye esterification was not efficient. However, the monoacyl phenyl phosphonates could be esterified further in reaction with alkyl halogenides under microwave irradiation. So this was an alkylating esterification. In this way, phenyl phosphonates with two different alkyl groups would be prepared. Esterification of alkyl phosphonic acids was also studied and we experienced uh, similar things. Uh, DFT calculations suggested uh, quite high enthalpy of activation of 161 kilojoule per mole for this reaction. Here, it is confirmed that the thermoneutral reactions with relatively high enthalpy of activation are the best models for microwave promotion. This is possible due to the statistically occurring local overheating effects. It follows from, from our results that uh, the method of choice is when the first hydroxy group of the phosphonic acid is esterified with alcohol under microwave conditions, while the second hydroxy function is converted to alkoxy by alkylation using an alkyl halogenide. Okay, after phosphonic acids, phosphonic acids, let us see phosphoric acid derivatives. Similar experiences were obtained with the esterification of phosphoric derivatives. Here I summarized the different uh, phosphoric derivatives, and I'm going to speak about the esterification of species E and F. So similar experiences were obtained with the esterification of phosphoric acid derivatives. One hydroxy group could be esterified directly, but the second one had to be accomplished by alkylating esterification. Uh, this synthesis was, was turned greener uh, when phosphorus pentoxide was the starting material because phosphorus pentoxide is, is a very simple uh, reagent prepared directly from elemental phosphorus, not via phosphorus halogenides. <clears throat> and here, the overall process is when phosphorus pentoxide is uh, uh, reacted with alcohol to give the mixture of monoalkoxy and dialkoxy species. Then this mixture is esterified to the dialkyl, the red to the red species, and then the red species is converted by alkylating esterifications to the blue one to the uh, tri triester. You saw that we dealt much with direct esterifications. At the same time, the opposite reactions. The hydrolysis were also interesting for us. Therefore, the acidic hydrolysis, hydrolysis never investigated in a comprehensive way were explored by us. 
First, the cyclic phosphinates served as the model compounds. The transformations were monitored by P31 NMR spectroscopy. On the one hand, the optimum conditions were determined. On the other hand, the pseudo-force were their kinetic key values were calculated. Here you can see the runs of the hydrolysis of one ethoxy phospholine, phospholine oxide and one ethoxy hexahydrophosphinine oxide. Again, a very interesting order of reactivity was experienced by us. And then the consecutive two-step hydrolysis of phosphonic esters were also investigated. The effect of the alkyl groups was mapped. Beside the AS2 mechanism, the AL1 fission was also substantiated in the case of the isopropyl ester. The effect of the ring uh, substituent uh, was also um, studied. Then we exa uh, examined other uh, models as well. And we wish to elaborate the microwave assisted hydrolysis as well. Instead of the corrosive hydrochloric acid, paratolian sulfonic acid was applied as the catalyst. At the same time, it also acted as a microwave adsorber, being a polar compound. Batch and continuous variations were developed. Transesterifications could also be accomplished in our microwave flow reactor. One, on the one hand, the ethyl phenyl H phosphonate prepared in the previous case could be converted to other ester at around 200 centigrade. On the other hand, dibenzyl phosphite uh, in the second line could be transformed to mixed esters or to fully transesterified products. The outcome depended on the conditions applied. I mean the temperature and the molar ratio of the alcohol. Other phosphinates were also subjected to transesterifications or alcoholysis, as you like this. Moreover, diphenyl uh, phosphinates were also involved in the reactions under discussion. Now we are changing for a completely different topic. This is uh, in connection with the these days so fashionable uh, cross coupling reactions. The reaction I'm going to speak about is the um, phosphorus uh, carbon cross coupling. This is called the Hirao, Hirao reaction. A new observation, of course, is that the microwaves may make possible the simplification of certain catalyst systems. The Hirao reaction is the PC cross coupling of an aryl bromide with a POH reagent, mostly diarkyl phosphide, in the presence of palladium tetrakis triphenyl phosphine or palladium acetate, that is the precursor together with mono and bidental P ligands. It was experienced by us that under microwave conditions, there was no need to add an extra P ligand as the p sync coupling took place in the presence of some excess of the P reagent. On the right side in the middle, you can see that the reagent may have a tautomeric form. And this, uh, this trivalent tautomeric form may be the ligand in the hero reaction. And of course, this reaction could also be extended to other model compounds. You may ask what the real in situ formed palladium zero catalyst might be. Well, the catalyst can be seen at the right side of the uh, top scheme. And this is a P palladium P complex. Two, uh, uh, two phosphorus reagent is connected, are connected to the palladium atom. That was reduced from the oxidation state of two to zero. And again, the reagent or phosphorus reagent was the reducing agent. And uh, on the below scheme, you can see that uh, the catalytic cycle comprising uh, uh, comp catalytic cycle comprises the usual three steps: oxidative addition, ligand exchange, and reductive elimination. 
And of course, these steps were defined by us by quantum chemical calculations. But I cannot afford to go into details because of the time frame. It, it was an interesting experience that palladium acetate could be replaced by nickel chloride. But in these cases, acetonitrile had to be used as a solvent due to the heterogeneity. It is a good question if palladium or nickel should be your choice. Well, nickel is cheaper, but more toxic. Here we calculated the mechanism of this kind of reaction and we got interesting results. Not a nickel zero, nickel two transformation is responsible for the, for the uh, uh, hero coupling, but a nickel two, nickel four transition. It's very, very interesting. And also we try to apply the cheapest uh, catalyst, the uh, uh, copper, uh, copper salts. They, these are so-called weak catalysts. For this reason, we had to start from yodobenzene. Again, let me, uh, let me show you uh, another kind of topic. This is the third topic for today. In certain cases, the catalyst may be substituted by microwave irradiation. A typical example for such an instance is the Pabachnik fields uh, three component reaction comprising the reaction of an oxo compound, an amine, and the diacute spike, and affording, affording biologically active alpha aminophosphonates. In the last decade, newer and newer catalysts have been suggested to promote the phosphomonic condensation. However, we found that under microwave irradiation, there is no need for any catalyst. Moreover, the three component condensation could be accomplished under solvent free conditions. It is worth mentioning that the alpha amino phosphonates are of pretty important uh, biological activity. Okay. Then we uh, elaborated new synthesis regarding double Kabachnik fields reaction and Kabachnik fields reaction started from carboxylic amides. These were also interesting uh, cases uh, for us. And uh, as I mentioned, they are potentially biological active species and sure enough, uh, several derivatives were studied and they showed uh, significant activity on Messa uterine sarcoma cell lines. Okay, after aminophosphonate, let me speak about uh, hydroxyphosphonates. Amino alpha aminophosphonates and alpha hydroxyphosphonates are brothers and sisters. Uh, the Pudovic reaction is also of interest as produces alpha hydroxyphosphonates by the reaction of carbonyl compounds with diacyl phosphides. This is an evergreen topic, mainly again due to the uh, biological activity. We have developed, in the middle you can see, a microwave-assisted catalytic and solvent-free method for the addition of diacyl phosphides uh, on the carbonyl group of substituted benzaldehydes. At that time, we didn't know that there would be even better synthesis and there is no need for microwave irradiation. So, uh, in the meanwhile, others are also elaborated solvent-free reactions, but on working up on the working up procedure, they used a lot of solvents. So you, you may ask, why is it good if a reaction is uh, carried out without solvent, but the working up uses, uh, requires a lot of solvents for chromatography, for recrystallization, for extraction, and etc. So we were, who elaborated a uh, real uh, green method, when we used only a very small amount of solvent, and we could crystallize out the hydroxyphosphonate in a pure form. And this is a general uh, reaction for the preparation of hydroxyphosphonates. Hydroxyphosphonates has many, uh, a lot of possibilities for um, uh, chemical reactions. And uh, let me just tell you that uh, uh, hydroxyphosphonates may be transformed to aminophosphonates in the, in the uh, upper scheme. 
This is an interesting reaction because it, it, it happens on a sterically crowded carbon atom, but a so-called adjacent group effect promotes this kind of reaction. Hydroxyphosphonates can also be rearranged by the phosphor group reaction to benzyl phosphonates. And also hydroxyphosphonates could be acylated and phosphorylated. These important reactions made available, again, very good species that could be subjected to biological activity, but this is another chapter. Okay, uh, let me just show you several examples uh, how uh, we examined, how we screened uh, these compounds, for example, on against osteosarcoma and other kinds of uh, on other kinds of cancer cells. The Pudovic reaction was also extended to phosphonoyl ketones. This was a really, really a new chapter, and we met, we came across a lot of interesting uh, issues. And also, alpha ketophosphonates uh, could be involved in uh, the Pudovic reaction, affording this kind of hydroxy bisphosphonates. These are again very interesting, form an interesting uh, group of compounds as there could be, again, a rearrangement. And with that much, with this kind of uh, reactions, the outcome depended on the substituent located on the carbonyl group. And let me change for the last part of my uh, lecture. <clears throat> uh, this is on in connection of hydroxy bisphosphonates I just mentioned uh, two minutes ago. From practical point of view, bronic acid derivatives are very important. They, these are medicines, and these are used. These hydroxymethylene bisphosphonic acid derivatives are used against bone diseases. Bone diseases, uh, for example, tumor affecting bone tissue, uh, or the pager disease, osteoporosis, and they have they enjoy other kinds of applications uh, as well. And uh, we had the industrial task to elaborate uh, green synthesis because this reaction was studied in details, but nobody optimized this reaction and used an unbel unbelievable uh, excess of the reagents without any, uh, any goal. They use phosphorus trichloride, phosphorus acid in an excess. And we were who optimized this uh, reaction. Actually, this is not a green reaction, a heterogeneous reaction uh, to and requires skills to carry out. Luckily, uh, in the industrial sale, they apply this reaction for small batches. Why? Because this is a green medicine. Uh, hydroxymethylene bisphosphonates are green medicines. I'm, what do I mean? I mean that only micrograms, micrograms per, per, per month or milligrams per year is the necessary dose. So these are even green medicines. And the synthesis uh, was made greener uh, by us. Even a patent uh, was born from this uh, long uh, years research. At the end of my lecture, I should like to show you my immediate colleagues, my PhD students, my former and present uh, PhD students and collaborators who helped me in elaborating this kind of uh, project. And uh, let me call your attention to Symmetry. This is the MDPI journal. Uh, Professor Rodisnov is the uh, editor in chief, and I am the uh, Editor-in-Chief for the chemical section. If you wish to submit papers, please try, try, try to do this and I am going to help you. And you are also encouraged to submit papers to current green chemistry and current organic chemistry, which uh, journals are also led by me. Thank you for your kind attention. If anybody has a, any queries. Since there is no query from the audience. Thank you very much, Professor George, for your nice presentation for the next.
So second speaker of this technical session two is Professor Nand Kishore. Uh, just a few words about Professor Nand Kishore. Professor Nand Kishore is professor at the Department of Chemistry, IIT Mumbai. He was head of the department from December 2008 to December 2011. He did the MSc from Guru Nanak Dev University in 1983. And after completing his PhD from IIT Delhi in 89, he received postdoctoral training at Yale University, US uh, from 89 to 91. And then at National Institute of Standards and Technology, US 1991-92. He joined as faculty at uh, IIT Mumbai in 1992. Mm. Then his research interests include understanding physical chemistry underlying the biologically important uh, systems. His research group has contributed to the thermodynamic characterization of protein folding intermediates drug protein interaction, protein solvent interaction, and drug delivery systems by using a combination of color calorimetric and spectroscopic techniques. He has published more than 140 papers in International Journal of Repute in areas of physical chemistry, biophysical chemistry, and biochemistry. He is also editor of Journal of Chemical Thermodynamics, he has delivered several lectures, plenary and invited lectures. He is also a fellow of National Academy of Sciences, India. He was a president of the Indian Chemical Society, Mumbai branch from 2010 to 2012. So with these words about Professor Nand Kishore, I would like to invite him to deliver the lecture. So, uh, good out. Hello? Yeah. So, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Bhojak, Professor Sharma, organizers of the conference, for giving me an opportunity to come here. Not only just thanking for that, I would like to thank this college for giving an excellent student and also meeting friends whom I didn't know that I will be meeting after several years. Professor Mehta, Professor Mahajan. So uh, this particular workshop and symposium is on green chemistry. And I will touch some aspects of green chemistry in our research in the form of use of ionic liquids. But as was told in the introduction, we use a combination of calorimetry and spectroscopy in a big way in understanding the intermolecular interactions. And with regards to ionic liquids, I think their biological aspects have not been well uh, checked by now. Although we know that ionic liquids they do provide significant thermal stability to proteins. But there are other, other aspects that needs to be further explored. And how these 
systems affect the biological biologically important processes will obviously depend upon the intermolecular interactions therefore the key word that intermolecular interactions becomes important now when we talk about the drug discovery drug delivery everything involves some or the other aspect of intermolecular interactions for example there are many mode of action sorry for variety of platform technologies the delivery of drug can be oral it can be by many of the methods shown over here and when we talk about drug discovery then we connect with the functionality a suitable functionality has to be there in order to for the drug to function so again i think there are news growing news about the covid we have just gone through we have passed through that phase and the vaccines that we have taken whether it is covid shield or covaxin we all know we are scientists we know that what kind of function it performs so eventually the purpose is to have you know these spike proteins in the system so that as soon as these spike proteins are detected and our immune system attacks so i am not going to go into uh, the details of that but this does point out to intermolecular interactions so again the encapsulation of the drugs in whatever form whether it is in the large molecule or it is in the form of rna or other form then the further release upon uptake it depends upon the environmental conditions and again they have to uh, perform their action by interacting at some of the other target and in all these things proteins are very important and the protein folding how a protein folds from its primary sequence into the final native form is the protein folding problem do we understand the completely this protein folding problem by now do we have the protein folding code for small peptides small proteins yes but for large proteins there is absolutely answer is no so lot of research has gone into understanding the protein folding problem still continues but the additional information being added in this area is only marginal so once the protein is synthesized through that ribosomal that machinery it has to reach its final folded conformation and it may pass through various intermediate states and some of the inter one of the intermediate state which in early 1990s became popular for studies was this molten globule state or so called partially folded state why this molten globule state is important what is its significant significance so this is uh, the uh, model which has been proposed that from the unfolded polypeptide it may go through various states in the minimum energy conformation and on the way there may be several you know intermediate states depending upon which path is followed so therefore it becomes in studying these partially folded states so where where is this uh, important again uh, about 10 years ago now the 50 years of this protein folding problem was celebrated so what is the scenario at 2022 i as i just mentioned that there are maybe now by now 100000 protein structures in protein data bank good computational approaches but 
the experimental evidences to funnel model which i just showed are required improvements in biomolecular force fields they are significantly required so in our group we have used a combined calorimetric and spectroscopic approach in understanding protein folding and the other aspects that i am just going to highlight now okay so this is the normal path of protein folding and here that molten globule state or partially folded states i was highlighting if there is a deviation they may aggregate they may form form very nicely looking amyloid phases so this aggregation the or eventually leading to this fibrillation may look good but this is what is bad because this forms plaques and that comes in between that normal neuronal function and therefore leads to several neurodegenerative diseases so starting with 1854 when this term amyloid was coined means starch like structure but then in 1859 what was demonstrated that amyloid actually is a structure which is rich in protein and in 2022 what is the scenario do we have any drug which can prevent this formation of fibrils so if we have a solution that means we are addressing the neurodegenerative diseases and some of the diseases which are parkinsons alzheimers etc so what is the challenge as of now what i gathered from literature is only one drug is available which is effective in this and the challenge lies in finding solution to inhibit the amyloid fibrils and refold the protein structure to its native state now first step is how to monitor this formation of fibrillation there are spectroscopic methods and one of the best spectroscopic tool to monitor this is fluorescent spectroscopy and thioflavin t is a dye for which when it intercalates or it comes in between the associating fibrils its emission intensity will increase so i will divide this into three parts one is you know just monomers of the proteins we and where the seeding or the formation of aggregation may takes place let's call these as lag phase then elongation phase and then the mature mature phase now look at literature suggests that lot of work has been done here where they found good number of molecular entities where this formation of oligomers can be prevented and push the protein towards the native state the challenge is in this stage and is in this stage because once the mature fibrils are formed and then disintegrating it and then pushing towards native state is a question and then the toxicity is another issue these are the issues to be addressed okay so we use calorimetry in a big way today there are calorimeters available which can measure heats down to micro joules 10 raised to the power minus 6 joules and the processes which take place in our body do not generate large amount of heat therefore with the availability of specifically i would say isothermal titration calorimetry you can measure the heats of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 6 joules and you do not require more than a few microliter of the sample at a micromolar concentration level differential scanning calorimetry is another technique where the protein folding and nucleic acid melting processes have largely 
benefited in understanding. So when I was talking about the interactions, A plus B forming C, there are two approaches to understand this. One is qualitatively, how does this happen? And second, which is also very important, quantitatively, how this happens. Quantitatively, when I say that means how many moles of A are interacting with how many moles of B and how many moles of C are forming. That is one. Then second is, what is the Gibbs free energy change? How much is the enthalpy change? How much is the entropy change? Right? Delta G, delta H, delta S. Very important thermodynamic quantities. What is hidden in these? Delta G will tell spontaneity. Delta G naught. Fine. Delta H, exothermic, endothermic, has information about the nature of intermolecular interaction. So that means we can connect these exothermicity, endothermicity with the functionality. And third one, very important, is the entropy change. You know, sometimes we just ignore the entropy change. Entropy change is not just that A plus B is forming C and immediately we tell that delta S is negative. It's not just that. Because in biologically important systems, you also have associated solvent molecules. So when these molecules are interacting, there is a lot of water molecules released. So desolvation, desolvation penalty is another thing which needs to be considered in rational drug design. When we talk about the synthesis of new drug molecules or improvements in the existing drug molecules, one very important factor is that the polar group should not be introduced at a place which leads to large amount of desolvation penalty. So that means very good guidelines can be obtained by understanding the thermodynamics of the process. So this is what I was talking about. We get delta G, we get delta H, we get T delta S. You know, this is, this is a subject generally is not very much liked by students because a lot of numerical problems have to be solved. But it's a very interesting subject and gives a lot of information. And as I said, we get physicochemical guidelines for rational drug design and in pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, calorimetry find its place. For example, in drug discovery and development, We'll see that the isothermal titration calorimetry in industry find its use from target identification to validation, secondary screening, lead optimization, pharmacokinetics. Differential scanning calorimetry also finds its use. It can distinguish between the various uh, you know, isomers and enantiomers, uh, how they actually interact and they associate separately. So now coming to the molecules which have shown potential to inhibit this fibrils formation. Osmolites. Osmolites are the molecules, small molecules, which many organisms accumulate to overcome the stress, different kind of stress. It can be pressure, it can be temperature. And let's take a look at this. This is the emission intensity of thioflavin T as a function of time. This is for the protein. I think this is for insulin. Very nicely with time, it elongates and then forms mature fibrils. And these small molecules can prevent the formation of fibrils. We can see the reduction in THT fluorescence emission intensity, even we can see the images, the fibrillation has gone down significantly in the presence of these molecules. So that's a qualitative understanding, which has a good support from the imaging, good support from the spectroscopic observations. We wanted to understand 
can we apply calorimetry in understanding this process and what information we can get by using the calorimeter so consider this as the native consider this as a protofibril let's say you can induce this kind of aggregation by heating 150 minutes of heating and at 500 minutes of heating we see a nice matured stage is observed so there are variety of molecules which can be potential inhibitors starting from osmolites to the molecules which i am going to show and then finally i will show with the ionic liquids that what kind of behavior it has shown so this hydroxy urea and 5 fluoro uracil these are anti cancer see let us see how this interact so in order to inhibit this association what is required is that some molecules which can interfere in this and then stop the formation of association so is polarity important whether the intermolecular hydrogen bond is formed formed between drug and beta states so we designed experiments with these kind of molecules 5 fluorouracil hydroxyurea okay if we see the reduction in the tht emission intensity may not be very high but still significant what we observed that even at the later stage that means at the elongation stage molecules like hydroxyurea are able to inhibit by 46% and 5 fluorouracil kind of molecules are even able to uh, inhibit up to 19% now comes the use of isothermal titration calorimetry those who have used isothermal titration calorimetry like this kind of profiles because when we talk about any titration we have usually sigmoidal kind of titration profile so when you interact these kind of molecules with the associating protein molecules you don't expect specific binding site and that is why you just get sort of straight line kind of that heat profile and we had several time this you know we had to answer the questions raised by referees that you are using itc so extract delta g delta h delta s everything now how can you extract delta g delta h delta s from this you cannot extract the only information that you can extract is you can you know fit it to some sort of uh, polynomial or straight line get the limiting value limit enthalpy of interaction will be reflecting on the nature of intermolecular interaction for example if this is highly exothermic or exothermic polar interaction is established if this is endothermic that means there are hydrophobic contacts made so at least that kind of information comes and by using differential scanning calorimetry we can you know address that how much protein has unfolded how much protein uh, the structure is remaining at different stages of the uh, aggregation process okay so the next thing we wanted to establish whether this 5 fluorouracil is able to actually sandwich in between so we took help from the calorimetry we took help from the f19 nmr and then if you just compare these delta h's minus 69 kJ per mole with the native minus 27.3 with the intermediate and minus 13.9 with the mature that means these molecules are able to establish polar interactions here giving minus 69.5 here not to that extent and here to the reduced extent so at least here itc has helped us in establishing this type this type of mechanism okay now what about other molecules for example ultramin so we will not go into too much details 
Alcitamine doesn't reduce. This is again an anti-cancer agent. It doesn't reduce to that extent. Fine. Even you know this surfactants, non-polar surfactants like Triton X hundred. This also we used, and here also we saw that although there is some reduction, but not to that extent. Methamazole, which is an antithyroid drug, the idea was that whether the drug which perform action, you know, against cancer or you know thyroid or other things, are they also effective in preventing the fibrillation of the protein? And methamazole, as we see here, good inhibitor. And anyway, this slide is uh, there. Uh, why, why I want, why I had put this slide here is that uh, all the students must know that there is an Avsar program, which is by the Department of Science and Technology, where you can put your ideas, your research into layman's language, submit it there. It will be evaluated. You can win up to one lakh rupees, right? So if the information is there with you, fine. If it is not there, you know, look into and uh, try those. So uh, one of my PhD students, she has put this idea into a layman's language because this person is a very notorious person. This Mr. Beans. Everyone likes Mr. Bean from a very small uh, children to you know senior people, and the always this person finds out way of how to interfere in many, many, many things. So the idea presented by her in the story was that this person today has been able to interfere here, you know, somehow stretch these things, able to, you know, push these associating strands apart. But maybe one day his notorious character will find out a way to enter inside. And basically, you know, this is conveying the idea that what is required for the associating molecules to be separated. All right. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'll present that later. Even these drugs like ketoprofen, uh, you know, phenoprofen, look at the extent of reduction in the fluorescence emission intensity. Very, very strong inhibitors of the protein fibrillation. And again, as I said, with the help of DSC, you can find out that how much uh, this uh, structure is still remaining in terms of the enthalpy of unfolding. Now, you know, as I was mentioning that the ionic liquids, their potential towards this prevention of fibrillation or aggregation, we could not find reports. Although we could find reports that ionic liquids do provide stability to biologically important systems like proteins. So now the question is that how do they provide the stability to the protein? Is it by direct interaction or is it the other way? When any additive provides thermal stability to the protein, there are two ways. One is it interacts with the protein in the native state and the second is through the indirect solvent mediated effects. And we don't have uh, too much literature on that how these ionic liquids, they provide thermal stability to the protein. So what we thought we will work with the biocompatible ionic liquids, where we chose choline and along with that we used several amino acids. Amino acids or osmolites are known to stabilize the proteins. But what happens here? we wanted to check with the, their potential to be as inhibitors. Okay. So, as we can see here, this is again for the insulin. We have in the nat this uh, uh, native state and then elongation stage and mature stage, you know, well-formed fibrils within a period of 700 minutes. Experimentally, we can have it in the lab. Now, you add ionic liquids and you can see 50 millimolar of ionic liquid is able to completely suppress the formation of the fibrils. Of course, there will be questions.
that what is the relevance of this high concentration of ionic liquid for in vivo conditions and but in in any case you see the these ionic liquids are able to suppress very you know the, how it is able to suppress even completely that is a big question whether we take glycine base or we take leucine base we have tried with others and of course the secondary tertiary structure can be examined with the help of circular dichroism spectroscopy but yeah so these are just various images uh, in the presence of different ionic liquids we we saw even in some cases a complete suppression or complete removal of these fibrils so one question that is the relevance to in vivo conditions second question is cytotoxicity studies cytotoxicity of these things so that is also to be considered now once again same thing you know you use isothermal titration calorie what is interesting here is when you interact with these these ionic liquids with the native or elongation or insulin at the mature stage what we see is the heat of interaction is very close to zero very high thermal stability provided but enthalpy so as i said that you know these gives lot of information you don't have very highly negative value you don't have very highly positive value so that rules out direct interaction ionic kind of interaction a big kind of interaction but here you see the shift in the transition temperature is quite significant so this points out towards the role of solvent molecules in providing thermal stability to the protein so what we propose here is that the ionic liquids probably induce preferential solvation or they are preferentially excluded and as a result of that the protein gets further stabilized so again you know you can uh, we can check the effect on the secondary and tertiary structure on the protein with the help of circular dichroism spectroscopy <clears throat> this is uh, with the uh, the other uh, leucine based glycine based and uh, i think it is the probably the same slide i have uh, gone to so you know the the idea is that to understand the whether these ionic liquids variety of ionic liquids in addition to providing thermal stability to the protein thermal stability to the protein is in the state but here the effort that can they push the protein from the intermediate state or so called you know when i talked about the molten globule state towards the native state so we have tried to understand this process by using uh, the combined calorimetry and spectroscopic techniques the calorimetry has provided wealth of information about the nature of uh, uh, intermolecular interactions and nature of intermolecular interactions can be connected with the functionality and once we under the under functionality and therefore with the time we can have guidelines for a rational drug design so just to make some concluding remarks that specificity in different drug delivery systems is an important issue that i have not covered in this talk the combined calorimetric spectroscopic method that is what has or enables the role of functionality in drug partition there are uh, you know few review articles we can find in literature where you know oh, they have collected the data over a period of 20 years and then shown how these thermodynamic signatures have helped in developing or in understanding the first in class to the best in class drug like what they found is over a period of time the statins statins which are cholesterol lowering drug the drug molecules interact with the target in a more and more exothermic manner and that highlights the role of the polarity 
in the drug molecule. So continuous efforts are needed in establishing structured property energetics correlation, which are essential in deriving guidelines for rational drug design and specifically disintegration of formed fibrils and aggregates and pushing the protein towards its native state still remains a challenge and a lot of work is still needed to be done. Finally, I would like to thank the financial assistance from BRNS and SERB in executing this work. And of course, uh, the work has been done by the excellent PhD students. Once again, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, very nice talk, Professor Nankishore. And uh, uh, I just want to ask uh, one mm, question, or you can say one uh, query that uh, uh, what may be the possible reason for stability of uh, protein in the ionic liquid? That is, the viscosity is playing a role there if there is no interaction. So that is, uh, I was uh, talking about, you know, what I was talking about that our calorimetry suggests that there is the delta h is close to zero hey so let us you know if we uh, even look at let's say the, some information which is given in class 11 or 12 books this is about micellization when the micelles are formed the enthalpy of micellization is very close to zero right although when the micelles are formed there are so many hydrophobic you know, these tails are coming together, but the delta H is very close to zero. And that tells the role of the solvent reorganization. Lot of water molecules are released and lot of entropy generation is there. So we extended that kind of, you know, analogy here that if delta H is remaining close to zero, then it, it must be related to solvent uh, mediated effect. And if the solvent structure is altered, it will affect viscosity also. Yeah. That will also affect. Yes. You are taking just a simple uh, amino acid, for example. It, no, we are taking the choline based. You know what I'm talking because his specific question was on ionic liquid. Yes. Right. Yes. Ionic liquid. Uh, what is the chain length of the? Yes. Uh, that matter. Yes. Uh, it can aggregate also. It can aggregate also. It can make a micelle and it can grow the molecule of the protein. That is right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So, very rightly, as you pointed out, that its aggregation properties may also affect. I didn't show the results here, it's, but it's we. These are preliminary results. Because so, we. Yes. Can please. take some uh, help of some small angle microscope to study the shape of the, the, the structure that you get after. Yes, uh, yeah. that that will help in further understanding the mechanistic aspects. Yeah. yeah. Hope it answered your question. Okay. I just had a question about the toxicity of these uh, ionic liquids, for example, the toxicity of the device. And also how much are they expensive? How much do they cost in terms of the ionic liquids, yeah. not expensive, not expensive. We synthesized in our own lab. Right. And uh, as far as cytotoxicity aspects that we have not checked yet with this study. Okay. This work just got uh, published in Biochemy. Okay. Uh, and the other thing was you showed some results with surfactants. Yes. And you found that they were also helpful in deep relation to a, per, to a certain extent. I was wondering, so that was with Triton X100. I was wondering what about the other, for example, there are like, uh, Zwitter ionic, cationic, and ionic, and they might have uh, other effects, maybe? Yes, yes. We, okay. uh, although I showed with Triton X100, we have also uh, tried with the sodium dodecyl sulfate okay. and SDS. That also showed not to very yes. large extent success, okay. and that we also published that in JPCB, that is a published work. Tritons should be toxic, yes. Yeah. 
kelas di institusi kajian itu Mm-hmm. Yeah. DSC is giving the endothermic nature of reaction, endothermic and ergonomic. And yeah. along with that, you said that uh, you can we can get the information of how interaction of molecules. So how it will I mean, it can be how we'll know from interaction of molecules happening from DSC. From DSC? Yes. How yeah. do we know the interaction of yep. the molecules? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> One way is that the you know major use of DSC is to understand the shifts in the transition temperature. That has been applied in a major way to understand increase or decrease of stability. Now your question is how we can know about the interaction, right? Now can interaction means delta H? I'm not saying by enthalpy of unfolding. I'm saying. saying Interaction. You would probably you want to know A plus B. B is a protein. A is some ligand. So what is the enthalpy of in, you know interaction and what is in that will talk nature of interaction. Yes. So in, in the experiment, one is just H. Second is you form a complex and then find out the enthalpy of unfolding. And then use at uh, Hess's like Hess's law kind of addition subtraction will get delta H of protein ligand interaction. So indirectly, yes, we can uh, study about the nature of it. Even DSC can be used to extract the value of equilibrium constant, binding constant. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So Thank you, sir. You can ask if you want. If anyone wants, we will see. So. I think please join me in thanking Professor Nand Kishore. Sir, please uh, come on stage for just. I request our chairperson, co chairperson, and reporter to present a token of appreciation and memento to Professor Nand Kishorji. Ma'am, and I also request Dr. Sangeeta Sharma, madam, to kindly join. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, just a minute, sir. Uh, just a minute. Uh, so, we will request in a quick mode uh, to Dr. Sangeeta Sharma, ma'am, to kindly present token of appreciation. To our chairperson, co chairperson, and uh, uh, reporter. And uh, surely after one hour, we'll be replacing it because of some spelling mistakes. And uh, I think it should be generally accepted because we will have to uh, change all that. Dr. Patiba Pail, ma'am. Pratiba Pail. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now I request uh, uh, with us uh, industrial persons are there. Uh, we are having two industries. One is uh, Perkin Elmer and other is uh, Camferol, INX uh, Labs. So they will also be giving the presentation and hands-on training. Uh, just now the uh, augmented reality training was given in the SSL lab and that will be continued tomorrow also. So I request first of all to uh, for all persons to kindly be on the dais and to give your presentation.
uh, as i could able to know that perkin elmer company person two persons were supposed to come but uh, one could not able to come due to delay in flight so one person will be elaborating uh, without ppt but uh, the camphrol person are going to describe the their instruments related with augmented and virtual reality and all these instruments are already set up in our department in the smart science lab those are interested to visit uh, the ssl they can visit tomorrow after 5:30 uh, we are having a complete session there of sophisticated instruments as well as on the uh, augmented and virtual reality and day after tomorrow also after that we are having one session uh, that will be restricted session and uh, then uh, uh, there will be cultural program camp okay. in the next session we are having the uh, four speakers one is from hungary and other is very important dr bhaskar datta is there so i request uh, all research scholars and post graduate students who are outside the auditorium they must be in the pratap sabagar and then we are also having uh, professor ak changani with us he is working on the green energy and he'll be giving us a different scenario of uh, green energy concepts actually as they are setting it their own system i'm just uh, describing few things meantime i can tell you that in our laboratory we are having three types of uh, uh, virtual reality one is the oculus rift reality experiments other is augmented reality experiments and third one is the virtual experiments uh, based on the mobile system and in our institute itself research scholars have developed few algorithms on the basis of the uh, instrument provided by them and uh, these are very useful for the simple organic molecules like uh, strainless uh, ring th ring uh, theory and also to find out the three dimensional molecular models for uh, chlorophyll hemoglobin like this so let you please start Hello. 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 Yeah, I am audible. Right. All right. Uh, so I think as Sir introduced, uh, we are from the organization uh, IXR Labs, and uh, we have been working with Sir for the past uh, few years. Uh, we have a lab here, uh, which. i guess sir will be having practical sessions tomorrow in this is a virtual reality lab a smart science lab is set up uh, in the chemistry department itself and i think uh, uh, thank you for uh, thank you to sir for giving us an opportunity to present here today and i would also like to mention that uh, in the last 3 years that the lab has been set up over 3000 students have used the lab for performing experiments in virtual reality so we try to showcase through videos some of the uh, kind of content that we have and the kind of use cases we use the uh, labs for uh, and uh, that will give you a better idea but i think the best thing would be to go down to sir's lab and actually experience it there i think uh, sir would be happy to uh, accommodate you in the lab and showcase as well so i'll just get started uh, a little about us uh, we are one of the largest virtual reality uh, development setups in the country uh we work uh, we used to earlier work 
used to earlier work with the industry uh the likes of uh, adani hindalco ultratech uh, manufacturing setups across the country and uh, what we realized is that uh, a lot of the students there who are getting a lot of the users in the industry who are getting trained there are fresh out of college so many are times it used to be graduate engineering trainees or uh, graduates from college who used to go to the industry and to get trained uh, for uh, with uh, and familiarize with the work environment they used to use virtual reality so so uh, what are we offering so our content is a uh, interactive immersive uh, insightful experiential content now while i'm throwing all of these words i think i'll uh, showcase a few videos to give give a better idea so this is our offering a vr lab so the person is wearing a vr headset and uh, it's also a uh, cast on the screen so it's an immersive experience as well as a whole audience is engaged so what is virtual reality i think uh, thank you to uh, nand kishore sir for uh, in fact introducing mr bean because i am going to use the character in one of our videos इसका साउंड कैसे साउंड इस पर ही आ रहा है लैपटॉप से आ रहा है ऑडियो फॉर नाउ आई थिंक द वीडियो इज क्वाइट इमर्सिव नाउ बिकॉज इट इज एन एक्शन सो देर आर नो रियल डायलॉग्स एज सच Yes. Uh, so basically, uh, he has now worn the virtual reality headset, and uh, he is actually experiencing inside the environment. He has not turned on the treadmill on. So rather than moving on the spot, he is actually moving in the real environment.
So, so well, that was a, a little funny take on the technology. What virtual reality is, uh, you can recreate uh, virtual environments uh, in a different location. So as, for example, the user was in a mansion of a villain, but he was seeing it in his real, in the environment that he actually was. So for example, if I take the case here, uh, next to the smart science lab, uh, sir, as a sophisticated instrumentation, uh, instruments lab as well. All the kind of equipment that are there in the lab, you have them in VR also. In fact, you can have the uh, equipment uh, that are not there in the lab in VR as well. So you can have access to any kind of complex equipments that might not be easily available to you through VR. So uh, again, augmented reality, virtual reality and mixed reality, the spectrum uh, that the technology works on. Uh, virtual reality, you feel as if you are in that environment. In augmented reality, you fee, you see those uh, the foreign objects in this environment. So, for example, in augmented reality, if I have to see the I would see the instrument lying here in this space. In VR, I would feel that I am in the lab and I am conducting the experiments. Now, why virtual reality? Now, this is the future generation. So if that's the future generation, I think uh, as uh, academicians and as the uh, educational fraternity, we would want to be ready and prepared for that generation when it comes up, which is so comfortable with technology. So what we do, we, uh, pro we work with engineering uh, sciences and medical colleges. Uh, we have been working with colleges across uh, Rajasthan, uh, a lot of uh, government engineering and uh, science colleges, uh, one of the colleges being uh, Government Dungar College. Uh, Bikaner uh, Engineering College also has a, a VR lab set up for engineering. We have worked with the likes of um, National Institute of Ayurveda, uh, AIMS and Indian Spinal Injury Center uh, for the medical side of uh, things. In fact, we have recently collaborated with uh, IIT Kharagpur as well, where we have set up a VR lab that the whole purpose is to drive uh, usage in uh, engineering education. So uh, a little context about the kind of modules that are there. Uh, so you have, let's say, complex equipments like a jet engine. Now, uh, hard to make a jet engine available for each and every student in each and every college. But through VR, you can easily access it at extremely a fraction of a cost. Or if I take the case of experiments, uh, uh, the last experiment talks about um, the universal testing machine, the example given here. Uh, I being a mechanical engineer, uh, when I went to, when I performed this experiment in my material sciences uh, session, uh, I just got to do it once with one material. But the ideal case would have been that I perform it repetitively with different kinds of materials and get a better understanding of the concept. That's where I think VR helps. We can run the experiment multiple times with different variables, with different kinds of conditions. Medical, so uh, a little glimpse of the product. So this is an industrial tool. So of a bridge construction. Again, the jet engine example. So you are able to see each and every part and relate with the experiments so you don't need to buy a wind tunnel to experience it you are able to experience it through vr this is a tunnel boring machine now this example is again a great one uh, metros are coming up everywhere and tunnel boring machines have seen a great usage in india but 
civil engineers uh, from engineering colleges were not trained to work on those situations but through you are you are able to give them an exposure to an environment or something like a tunnel boring machine this is uh, the for the msc bsc courses So some of these experiments you see here, you would be able to actually experience it. So for example, these experience, experiments would be able to experience in uh, the smart science lab here. Thin layer chromatography, dissections. And this is how we deploy it in medical uh, colleges for use in uh, teaching human anatomy. So yeah, so we have been working with the uh, industry as well as uh, as well as academia to build the content. And this is the industrial deployments that we worked with. And if we look at the hard uh, numbers or the facts and the benefits, I think uh, it has consistently shown through research that you have a faster learning when you are working on it. In fact, uh, I remember just uh, talking about one of the experiments that we perform in VR. Uh, to actually do it, it takes a couple of hours, but through VR, you can do it and learn much faster. In fact, the good thing is you probably need a couple of hours of preparation before the experiment as anyways. So that could be done through VR and you could actually perform the experiment yourself in reality as well. So it's not really to replace the real experiment, but certainly to draw in more effectiveness for, from the experiments that you actually per perform in real life. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, from our end, but I think I'll uh, just end with one of the anecdotes that we had. So we deploy, we had deployed it in a, a college where we deployed it for mechanical engineering uh, students. And uh, there, uh, there is a case of uh, thermodynamics uh, and in, th in thermodynamics, you talk about cycles, all the thermodynamic cycles that are there. So we have a module of a jet engine where you can see how the Brayton cycle, which is a gas paper gas cycle, which uh, on which the jet engine runs, how it is related, how the theory relates with the practical application. We showcase that to that to the students. And uh, a few days later, we got a call back from the professor saying that uh, they want to implement it. Why? Because in the next class, uh, when the students were brought to the class, they had just seen a demo. But when they came to class, they in fact started asking questions like, okay, now we had seen it in VR that it is related, that th this theory is related to the practical application in this way. So now how is this other Carnot cycle uh, related? How is this other cycle related? So they started asking, the curiosity was sparked and they started asking those questions. And I think that's really the effectiveness and benefit of it, uh, not to replace the real labs that you have, but to draw in more benefits at a much fraction of a cost and time, in fact. So yeah, I think that's from my end. I think we'd be happy to take any questions or doubts. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as uh, the Perkin Elmer persons are going to demonstrate it tomorrow, because uh, one of their person has not arrived so far, I take this opportunity to tell audience that one of the experiments shown here by this uh, Camfrol company particularly related with the chromatography and thin, uh, titration has been designed by our research group here in the government Dungar College. 
and that is a good thing but at the same time what uh, yeah, in your presentation you should have added because this is the green chemistry and green material uh, symposium so uh, one thing is very interesting that the next generation materials uh, on which we, our group is also working for, particularly for the 3d materials and we are having a very small 3d printer here and the cost of the 3d material is approximately 40000 per kg if someone from uh, uh, hmm, any sophisticated lab uh, collaborate then we can convert our saji materials and the geolite materials available in bikaner into the uh, potential materials particularly related with the calotropos procera and others uh, thank you very much sir uh, for uh, supporting in fact, us i'll just add to what yeah. sir had said uh, sir has in fact uh, with one of uh, one of his students uh, also uh, published ah, the that, research that i just forget to mention but uh, she'll be going to present tomorrow yeah, so i think she'll be presenting uh, the she has developed well. around 10 uh, uh, mo mobile systems by which 10 molecular models uh, can be visualized with the help of the qr code so that is the just uh, impregnation on the mobile system so that is a different thing thank you very much so now because of the time constraint we are leading for the, our today's uh, thank you uh session and in this we are having the four speakers uh, uh, i request uh, professor nand kishore sir uh, to chair this session sir please to be on dais i also request our material physics and hod department of physics dr md sharma sir to be as co-chair and i hope and wish that dr anand khatri sir is also there to be on the dais as a reporter sir in this session four uh, speakers are there and we are having approximately one hour so you can decide yourself one is from the hungary and uh, dr bhaskar that is the first speaker 15 or 20 we can take then we will be having the cultural program here it's in. Dr. Anand, if yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's time for the next session. And uh, I'm told that only one hour is available and we have four speakers. So approximately 15 minutes. So uh, the first talk <clears throat> is by Professor Bhaskar Datta. Professor Datta completed BSc honors in chemistry from St. Stephen's University of Delhi and then completed his master's in chemistry from IIT Kanpur. He pursued his BSD in biochemistry from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, USA. After postdoctoral fellowship at Georgia Institute of Technology and an appointment as assistant professor at Missouri State University in US, he joined IIT Gandhinagar in December of 2011. At IIT Gandhinagar, Professor Datta is associated with the disciplines of chemistry and biological engineering. His research interests lie in broad areas of biochemistry and chemical biology. And within these domains, 
three different research themes are being pursued sulfonyl based pharmacophores quadruplex nucleic acids and development of nano bio constructs through the work on novel nano bio constructs his group hopes to facilitate applications that can directly be translated to the common end use he teaches a range of subjects including general chemistry basic and advanced biochemistry analytical chemistry and biotechnology both at ug and pg levels he was awarded the undergraduate chemical sciences teachers award of gujarat science academy for 2017-18 so i invite uh, professor baskar datta for his talk thank you so much uh, professor nand kishore truly a pleasure a uh, small part of my work will touch upon a topic of interest to you uh, i'm also very honored uh, to to be present here uh, thank you to dr bhojak and all the other organizers for inviting me to be part of this conference uh, i am a biochemist uh, we do some work that is of relevance to green chemistry i'm sure you'll be able to identify those parts there are two parts of this talk i'm going to give today and because of time constraints i'll try to only highlight the important findings uh especially the part which is of relevance to green chemistry the two parts are relevant to food and urine so of course i'll spend a little bit more time on food because food might be of more interest to us and urine is somewhat less interest so i'll spend less time on that try to do that the first part has to do with uh, some work we have done on release of specific substances on from food matrices and this interest started about 6 uh, years back Uh, with the help of one undergraduate student who was very interested in looking at uh, biomass but not from the perspective of the typical biomass valorization uh, the undergraduate was more interested in looking at uh, objects which are at the the top end of this uh, value chain so try and extract those substances uh, from biological sources from natural sources and uh, what we wanted to do here was to avoid the use of harsh chemical substances Uh, harsh thermal or mechanical processes we wanted to use ambient processes to do the extraction uh, which would be which would make it uh, more relevant possibly even uh, deployable at uh, field level uh, with this in mind uh, we of course had some uh, natural compounds we had some molecules in mind these molecules are known to be present in various food products uh, at the beginning we started looking at food products and we moved on we looked at why don't we look at the peels Uh, and the outer layers which we otherwise consign to waste which we would not consume and try to see if we can extract things out from those that would make it a true value addition uh, so our approach was very simple and straightforward we wanted to disrupt the the cell coating that is there on the outside of these peels of fruits and vegetables and that is already done in nature with the help of uh, several hydrolytic enzymes uh, some of those enzymes we don't possess but other animals possess and these enzymes are able to cut through a uh, very complex polysaccharides that would otherwise not be digestible by us and in the process of doing so they are likely to release the entrapped small molecules uh, which we are hoping to access uh, we relied on several such enzymes uh, many of these have also been used also in this specific context but they have been used much more to try and convert the biomass uh, into smaller molecules which can then be uh, either fermented uh, or taken towards more of a biofuel context we would we didn't want to go in that direction we wanted to just loosen up the peels try to see what is coming out and analyze them in terms of small molecules which are of interest uh, among these enzymes that we used were cellulase pectinase xylenase combinations of these one of the strategies that we wanted to adopt was uh, a drawback that is commonly associated with the use of enzymes which is their stability which is their reusability also has to do with the cost so instead of using free enzymes we wanted to immobilize them on solid supports especially uh, magnetic particles if we are able to immobilize those that adds to the reusability of our reagent so it's a biocatalyst but it can also be reused which therefore lowers the cost much of this process is being done in ambient conditions Uh, in aqueous uh, medium so it's a very green process as such uh, we were interested of course as i said 
to begin with, we were interested in core food products that when we moved on and we moved into the peels of fruits and vegetables. And one of the things we were interested was the peel of onions. And I really mean the peel, not even the layers which are eaten, but the dry chilka, which would otherwise be disposed of, we were interested in that. Try and retrieve some molecules which would be of interest to us. And in this regard, there's a wealth of literature that is available. Uh, plenty of compounds are clubbed together in the category of antioxidants, which is a very umbrella term that is used. A uh, wide variety of small chemical substances which could act as antioxidants are all put in this category. Uh, does not really uh, identify what those classes are. Uh, but antioxidants have traditionally been a part of Indian diet. They are also being consistently suggested as having very strong uh, immune benefits associated with them. And certainly we were interested in looking for certain antioxidants from these peels of onions. Uh, what we wanted to look at therefore was to explore the activity of the enzymes in the immobilized form on the peels of onions and see what kind of molecules uh, were being released. Uh, here's a typical workflow. I just put this up because I felt there were probably might be more students available. I'll probably skip this part and go directly into uh, what we uh, eventually found out. And we, of course, did a whole series of characterizations on these immobilized catalysts that we are making. Uh, here comes the first interesting part. When we looked at the peel of onions and we treated it with our immobilized hydrolytic enzymes, uh, we compared the profile obtained through chromatography with what you'd get when you do mechanical grinding of the peels. And interestingly enough, uh, we observed a distinctively different pattern of components. These are different components which are coming out from the onion peel that has been treated with this cocktail of hydrolytic enzymes immobilized. And we find that there is a clearly different pattern that you get here, even compared that to the bare enzymes, the freely soluble enzymes being added versus of course the mechanically ground form. What this told us was that we are probably able to access certain composition of substances, which are otherwise quite difficult to get if you just do the mechanical grinding or even if you're doing the enzyme hydrolyzed part. So we were interested in finding out what are these components and how is it that we are able to get rich proportion of that when we use our hydrolytic enzymes. Uh, so we used mass spectrometry for this purpose and uh, we analyzed these fragments that were coming out and using mass spectrometry, we were eventually able to pin down these substances. Um, they are related to this very well-known quercetin, but what we found out was that we were able to generate various glycosidic forms of quercetin. Some of these were in fact, not even synthetically easily accessible. So in particular, we were able to figure out that we got good amounts of these mono and diglucosides and um, the proportion of this that we are getting in our sample, the onion peel that is treated with our hydrolytic sample, makes it a very interesting quercetin rich mixture. Very difficult to get uh, because one of these, the diglucosides is uh, not very easy to synthesize to begin with. So here are the molecules of interest to us. Of course, we are getting quercetin. That is not a very difficult thing to do. But at this stage, the interesting thing we had obtained was that we are getting a fairly uh, distinctive proportion of these mono and diglucosides when we apply these hydrolytic enzymes in the immobilized format and on the uh, peel of onions. Uh, the release of this, there's very interesting release kinetic properties that were observed. We also observed uh, stability of the diglucosides versus the free form, uh, which suggested that uh, this possibly the proportion of diglucosides which exist in the membrane uh, cannot otherwise be touched. It's only when you pull them out using these uh, nano immobilized enzymes that you get them in the environment where it persists for a longer period of time. Fine, uh, so at this point, uh, we wanted to see what exactly we could use this interesting proportion of uh, polyphenolic compounds for. And uh, again, there is a lot of literature of use of uh, polyphenolic compounds, including quercetin as uh, agents which can prevent the uh, neurofibrillar degeneration that uh, Professor uh, Nandkishore was talking about. And we were especially interested in some literature where people had done work uh, with A-beta and shown that one of these polyphenols was an effective agent in preventing the fibrillation pattern. Uh, because we had access now to a couple of different molecules directly from the natural source, which are not the native forms of quercetin reported. We wanted to do these experiments. 
again i'll skip the workflow part here and i'll come directly to the uh, experiments on the tau fibril uh, process and we found very interestingly that the uh, proportion of quercetin mono and diglucosides that we were generating were able to exercise a very interesting mode of uh, uh, antifibrillar action the peptide aggregation was not being allowed by that proportion uh, it was more effective than using quercetin alone or using quercetin monoglucosides which are easily commercially available uh, and these results were validated by using different methods uh, using the thd fluorescence that professor nandkishor was talking about uh, microscopies of a couple of different types so in in this part uh, this started as the first sort of initial uh, place where we wanted to build up on our uh, use of these immobilized enzymes uh, we became confident of using these immobilized hydrolytic enzymes to get into the food matrices hydrolyze those release certain interesting components which were out there and some of these some of these small molecules may also of course have some medicinal purpose the medicinal use here was just a proof of concept we didn't want to pursue that full fledged we actually wanted to go much more into disrupting the food matrix and analyzing the products of that food matrix and this is where uh, the next project came in uh, there is a lot of uh, always a lot of popular discourse on the kind of things we are eating when we eat a box of chips or even sliced bread the type of products which might be there in these food matrices are not very easy to analyze because it's the uh, the processing itself uh, makes it very difficult for some of the analytes uh, to be released it's sequestered in certain chemical formulations which are not there in native foods as such so our approach at this point was to try and use our hydrolytic enzymes in the same manner but this time on processed food samples and we looked at uh, several processed foods including chips a uh, slice of bread noodles and so on mostly solid form and we wanted to do a similar assessment and see what kind of products come out uh, we did some uh, some work in terms of small molecule that were coming out but i'll just focus on very interesting observations we found with regards to two metals which we found increasing amounts of uh, when we do our hydrolytic treatment on the processed food matrices we find that there becomes quite visibly Uh, a roughening of the shape clearly there is some physical disruption that is taking place with the help of this cocktail of cellulose pectinase xylanase and amylase uh, and interestingly enough uh, as i mentioned we found these two metals one of them was lead and the other is tin which showed significantly higher amounts that were being released when we do our enzyme treated process as compared to when we do the normal acid treatment followed by the icpms Uh, and the levels of increase were significant so this was almost two fold to three fold higher levels of lead and tin which were showing up in these processed food matrices when we do our hydrolytic enzyme treatment so at this point the question to us was is it really that the food matrices have the kind of complexes which can hold on to the lead and tin much more not to be allowed to be detected with the icpms uh, or is it also possible that it's being introduced through our enzyme reactions in some ways so of course we've ruled out the fact that we are introducing it uh, it is there in the food matrix we've been able to trace it back the tin it's uh, it turns out comes from the packaging material leaches into some of these food matrices the lead we are not completely sure of so the lead increase levels are significantly higher we've also found out that you need this cocktail of enzymes based on literature precedent Uh, many of the other enzymes work in synergy with cellulase so cellulase by itself won't be able to do as well on the polysaccharide hydrolysis uh, compared to what it does with the pectinase and xylanase together and when we put all of those together we get the highest levels of lead and tin to be released we don't see this effect for any other heavy metal so it's not a spurious artifact it definitely shows that these two metals are higher than uh, what they are coming out in the standard assay but i don't want to scare you the levels that we are still observing are lower than the uh, approved levels so we are still safe in that sense but it shows that the hydrolytic enzyme method is able to release the food matrix in a way that is not normally accessible during the chemical analysis uh, we have since optimized this experimental protocol because it's a uh, uh, it's heavily dependent on the type of uh, volumes and incubation times ph which is being used and using these three uh, parameters we've been able to uh, generate some of these uh, 
uh, response area uh, surfaces. And I'll just show you a couple of these. So three parameters, pH, incubation time, concentration of enzyme. Uh, we look at what is the proportion which will allow the maximum amount of lead or tin to come out of one specific food matrix. Um, interestingly enough, the surface appears very different from tin from potato chips, for example, than what it is for lead from potato chips. So the combination of parameters which helps in the optimum release of one of these metals is not exactly the same as you would observe for another metal, which intuitively makes sense because the chemical complexes are most likely different for these metal ions. So what we have summarized at this point is we've optimized a protocol using our immobilized hydrolytic enzyme system, which can get into processed food matrices, disrupt it in a way that is not normally accessible, release some of these heavy metals, which are registering higher than the so-called normal levels which are coming out. And we are working on building a predictive model so that it's possible to use this procedure and somebody in the industry can use this procedure and try to predict what actual level of lead and tin might be present in that particular food component. I'll switch gears now. Uh, as I said, I'll spend a smaller amount of time on the urine. Uh, almost for the same reason, we are also interested in urine, doing something similar to what we are doing on the food. So we use immobilized enzymes and we try to transform the urine into something else. The question was, what can we transform it into? There's already a lot of interest that is out there because of the uh, dependence on synthetic fertilizers, the uh, energy intensive production of ammonia in these fertilizer systems. And so uh, we were interested in urine as a fertilizer, which of course, a lot of work has been done on this. Much of this work that has been done relies on energy intensive processes. Um, electrodialysis, uh, the precipitation methods, uh, you name it, they're dependent on heavy chemicals, acid uses, electricity, and so on. So we wanted to be a disruptor in this way. What we wanted to do was, uh, we wanted to use the concept of immobilizing these enzymes. In this case, we would use ureas, try to convert urea, which is present in very high concentrations in human urine into ammonia. Uh, we then you try to absorb this ammonia, which is produced in solution, onto a material which is not synthetic, which is purely biomass derived uh, and very minimally converted from biomass and be able to directly apply that biomass derived ammonia adsorbate as a fertilizer, for instance. So I'll skip this part. This is the part where we've used the ureas immobilized and I'll go to the part of the adsorption process because this is also a very interesting story. We use the peel of a fruit, banana peel, which is again, mostly used as waste. And we used sunlight, we used a very ambient process for converting it into a powder. And this powder is something which we have now characterized from a material perspective, so that it can be reproduced in terms of the procedure and the properties. And this powder shows excellent ammonia adsorption. Uh, you can actually see the SEM pictures probably show you very clearly that the left side, which is the, uh, the unabsorbed state, the dry state, has the open pores, which get filled up when you expose it to the ammonium ions. And we observe very interesting profile of a multi-layered absorption of the ammonium, the initial physical adsorption, followed by chemical adsorption subsequently. Uh, there's also very interesting correlations we are observing with the dilution of human urine and the adsorption capability of this biomass derived material. Uh, quite surprisingly, this is something that we weren't expecting. Our biomass uh, banana peel powder shows very high uh, adsorption capabilities compared to some of the other candidates which have been reported, which are also purely biomass derived. So in conclusion to this part, uh, I've not spent time on the ureas converting urea to ammonia, but interesting observations there was with the dilution of urine, we find this interesting enhancement and in activity of urea to ammonia con con conversion that coupled with the increased adsorption capability of the banana peel powder and the higher dilution suggests that these two are probably fit for use all of these processes are being done at ambient conditions, uh, no heat treatment, it's literally outside. Uh, and so it's probably ready for physical deployment at this point. That's all from my side. If there are any questions uh, that anyone has, I know this is just a very quick snapshot. Uh, feel free to email me, I'll be happy to uh, with the answers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Dutta. <clears throat> there can be maybe one question if there is any. Yes. Ma'am. 
on is magnetic nanoparticle right so uh, did you encounter any problem with these nanoparticles because firstly uh, they are they might be toxic to some extent and secondly uh, they also tend to aggregate so did uh, did that affect the properties of the immobilized enzyme right so the second point you're right uh, in fact we've we've stopped calling these nano immobilized systems uh, most of the time there is a fair bit of aggregation we observe uh, to answer the first part of your question all of our work uh, there's very little of it that has to do with use as a drug or as a medicine mm -hmm. there's very little that comes into contact with direct human consumption uh, the food part is anal analytical in nature the urine part is entirely a process it's converting a more harmful substance to a less harmful substance if anything, the magnetic iron oxide is only going to have some additional redox behavior there and help out. And actually, we are looking at another vertical we are interested in is uh, removing the pathogenicity of the urine. Uh, and there we are looking at the ability of the magnetic iron oxide as well. One of the major advantages with offset some of these defects is the reusability. So I've not shown it, but across at least 15 to 16 cycles, we can use the same batch and it shows exactly the same performance. Thank you. In food, in foods, right? right. No, this is the we use five food items. These are uh, these are uh, we used actually three different types of five food items. One is the global brand. One is an Indian brand of noodles, chips, bread slices. Oh, these are all packed foods. These are all packed foods. So the packaging material is playing a role in the chips. For example, the tin is the highest. Protein. Sure. That, that is coming from the yes, the tin, for example, is used in the ink in the chips packaging, and it's possibly coming leaching from there. Right. So the absolute levels that we are still measuring, those are within regulatory limits though they are at least two to three fold higher than what the orthodox conventional ICPN is. But yes, we'll probably do that at some point. Uh, the, uh, the food analysis part is actually being done for FSSAI. It's FSSA mandated work. Uh, so we are putting it out as a, a protocol for them. Okay, I think we can continue discussion later on. Uh, the next, we move on to the next talk. The next one is an online talk by uh, Professor Hedwig Bolsky. Can we please uh, connect? Uh, just a very brief uh, introduction about uh, Professor Hedwig Bolsky. Uh, Professor Bolsky studied at University of Technology, Budapest, and is basically a chemical engineer and has worked as a research engineer at Hungarian pharmaceutical company. Research interest was synthesis of burane alkaloids and their derivatives. Professor Bolsky has been awarded by Zemplin Geza Prize and award for research results in organic chemistry. From 97 onwards, he has been senior research associate at Geden Richeter and the main interest has been synthesis and medicinal chemistry of compounds acting on central nervous systems. In 2009, he was appointed as associate professor at organic and technology department of Budapest University of Technology and Economics. Over to Professor Hedwig. Yes, I am here. Uh, thank you for the kind uh, introduction. And uh, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Yes, I try it. Yes. Yes. You can hear me? We, we can hear you, can but see? we don't see your yes, screen. Yes, see. Yes, see the screen. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, ma'am, we don't see your screen. That uh, you have have you shared your PowerPoint? Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yes, now we can see. Yes, yes. No. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's it's okay. Everything yes, it is okay? fine. Yes, it is okay. It's okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I would like to thank. Uh, I would like to express my thank to the organizers uh, for the kind invitation to deliver a lecture here. Uh, the topic of of my uh, presentation is synthesis of voltage gated sodium channel blockers. Uh, after a literature overview, this, this talk will, be, will discuss two examples on the synthesis of voltage-gated sodium channel blockers. The first one is synthesis of tolperison derivatives, which are centrally acting muscle relaxants. The second example is 1.7 sodium channel subtype selective voltage-gated sodium channel blockers for the treatment of inflammatory pain. The voltage-gated sodium channels play an important role uh, in the physiological functions and the pathological processes too. The voltage-gated sodium channels are large trans transmembrane protein with channel forming alpha subunit with four domains, each with six transmembrane segments and one or two accessory beta subunits. There are sodium channels everywhere in the, uh, in the whole body, human body, but there are spatial fields. For example, brain type sodium channels uh, include 1.1, 1.3, 1.6 in central nervous system. Sodium channel subtype 1.4 is mainly expressed in the skeletal mask, 1.5 in, in the heart, and sodium channels 1.7 to 1.9 are characteristic of sensory ganglion cells. How can we characterize the voltage-gated sodium channel? channel blockers. It's an, an important question. The traditional method was the binding test with trichated batrachotoxina, uh, 20 alpha benzoate. BTX was, was applied as, as a radioligand. Batrachotoxin is, is an alkaloid actually with the sterile skeleton here, and it was isolated from Frox from Philobatis bicolor or Philobatis terribilis. The fl fluorometric plate reader based membrane potential assay for testing the inhibitory potency of uh, uh, voltage gated sodium ch channel blocking drugs is a more up to date uh, method. Uh, it was developed by our young uh, colleague, Sandor Kolok. So, Primary culture of cerebellar neurons were, were used, and veratridin was, was the activator of uh, voltage-gated sodium channels. Veratridin is an alkaloid of, of veratrum album, isolated from veratrum album. Here you can see the beautiful white flowers. Mm -hmm. The most relevant method for the characterization of voltage-gated sodium channel blockers is the electrophysiology, the whole cell patch clamping method. Here you can see the, the manual version of this equipment, and here is an, an automated patch for HTS for high throughput screening. This method is suited for studying both ligand and voltage-gated channels and Herc channels and so on and so forth. The therapeutic areas uh, where voltage-gated sodium channel blockers can be applied, it's, it's an important question. Epilepsy was the traditional field 
or, or various types of pain, acute, chronic, inflammatory, and neuropathic pain, and migraine. Migraine is a quite special type of pain. We have published a, a paper a review on this topic. Spasticity, psychiatric disorders, for example, bipolar disorders, mania, obsessive compulsive disorder, and the neurodegenerative disease, for example, stroke, belong to the therapy. The areas where voltage gated sodium channel blockers can be applied. These dimensioned diseases are characterized by an overexcited state of the central nervous system and with the abnormally increased activity of voltage gated sodium channels. A few uh, short overview on the voltage gated sodium channel blockers on the, on the market. Uh, an old drug is carbamazepine. Uh, a lot of derivatives were uh, synthesized and, and developed. Uh, they are anti-epileptic drugs. Lamotrigine. Lamotrigine is, is widely used for the treatment of epilepsy and later for bipolar disorder. As you can see here, various uh, derivatives were synthesized, changing the substituents on the aromatic ring or change, changing the nitrogen-containing aromatic ring here. Our company, Gideon Richter, uh, put on the market uh, uh, Lamotrigine as, as a generic uh, drug. Uh, the trade name is, is Lamolep. There are small heterocyclic compounds on the epilepsy market, interestingly with dual activity. For example, zonisamide zombi zombi is a voltage-gated sodium channel and T-type calcium channel blocker for treatment of epilepsy and prevention of migraine. Rilusol is a glutamate release inhibitor and potassium channel and voltage-gated sodium channel blocker. It's used for the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Topiramate is a carbonic anhydride type 2 inhibitor and voltage-gated sodium channel blocker for the treatment of epilepsy and prophylaxis of migraine similar to zonisamid. Rufinamid is, is used for the treatment of epilepsy and childhood epilepsy, lennox casto syndrome. Benziloxy, benzylamines, is, is also a, an important compound family uh, from the company Neuron. Safinamid is, is the most successful compound in, in uh, this family. Uh, it's a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, dopamine reuptake inhibitor, and voltage gated sodium channel blocker. Uh, it was uh, approved in the European Union in uh, 2015 for the treatment of Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease. Uh, its close relative is, is ralfinamide. The difference is uh, uh, between the position of the fluorine group here, but it wasn't so successful. And here you can see other uh, derivatives of, of this compound family varying the uh, amine functions, particularly the amine functions. The phenoxyphenyl derivatives are uh, famous uh, sodium channel blockers because they are state-dependent voltage-gated sodium channel blocker for treating pain and further derivatives uh, were synthesized. This, this compound was, was the starting point and this PPPA is, is uh, the most famous member of this family. Uh, researchers of company Merck uh, developed further derivatives of, of this family. For example, uh, this bond was cleaved here, and uh, this moichi was uh, closed into a ring. Here you can see a few examples. 
muksasoista ja soissöötä ja soissö. Tämä on pyrimidins hier. The clinical indications are pain, irritable bowel syndrome, epilepsy and sclerosis multiplex. The researchers from company Merck have synthesized this derivative, which is a subtype selective 1.7 sodium channel blocker. But this compound showed HEC HEG activity, and they could avoid this problem introducing here an amine function here. And they, they could overcome the HEG problem. This compound from Ebot, from company Ebot, is a selective. So the selective 1.8 sodium channel blocker with energetic efficacy. And interestingly, this compound showed 300,000 fold selectivity versus human 1.2, 1.5, 1.7 sodium channels. And it showed in vivo efficacy in a rodent model in neuropathic pain. And HTS hit was, was the base of, of this study. And uh, of course, further analogs were synthesized. Our company, Gideon Richter, is, is very active in the field of, of sodium channel blockers. I mentioned Torperison, which is a, an antispastic drug. Silperison, uh, its uh, derivative was, was developed, but later the development of this compound was, was stopped uh, because stop because of uh, side effect problems. Uh, this cognitive enhancer vincamin is, is also a sodium channel blocker. Uh, it was isolated at first uh, from the uh, plant wing, coming from evergreen, evergreen plant vincaminor. This is an alkaloid. This was a natural product, and this is a derivative. Epovincaminic acetylester is, is a derivative of this vincamin. The trade name is Scavinton. Here you can see, and this this it was a, a great success of, of our company. The vincamin and derivatives uh, are phosphodiester as one inhibitor, voltage gated sodium channel blocker, and binds to peripheral benzodiazepine receptor 2. This is our first example, as I, as I mentioned and promised in the introduction. The first example is the modification of torperison. Our task was to improve the sodium channel blocking activity at first, and uh, we can change the uh, aromatic ring, the substituents on the aromatic ring, the spacer, and, and uh, a mine function here. Here you can see the synthesis of, of phenoxy or phenoxyalkyl amines uh, with two simple uh, steps. Uh, the first alkylation uh, with the uh, halogenid, alkyl halogenid, and then another alkylation reaction with the amine uh, function. More than 300 compounds of this, this family were, were prepared, as, as you can see here, the, the modifications. Here you can see the mini screening cascade of, of our, our project. The first step was, was the BTX binding and later fluorometric membrane potential measurement, as I mentioned in the introduction. The second step was the selectivity screen against the uh, alpha-1 adrenoceptor binding. The third step is, is the most interesting because it's an, an in vivo test, a central muscle relaxant test, a mouse test. And the fourth step is, is the CNS, central nervous system side effects screen, rotarot test and Irvin test. Uh, here you can see the, the tremor test, uh, 
the mouse was put into a lightweight plastic box here, and it was treated with tremorogenic compound. This was our, our tremorogenic compound. And uh, the vibration of the box, the tremor, tremor of the mouse, the vibration of the box uh, caused the voltage signal, and this voltage signal was uh, modified by the electromechanical converter, amplifier, and other converter and sensor. And here on the screen of our computer, you can uh, see the, uh, this, this uh, photo on the tremor. And after the treatment uh, with our new uh, sodium channel blocker uh, compounds, uh, the tremor was inhibited, and you can compare the, the two photos here, the control and the inhibited tremor. Our best ethers and, and theoethers are in, in this slide, and the best substituents were halogen, phenyl, for phenyl, cyano group, and so on and so forth. The best space set, optimum of the space set was for carbon atom. And uh, interestingly, the, amine, the best amine functions uh, had a difficult uh, uh, structure. We have synthesized the compounds with rigid space R2. Uh, here you can see this. Uh, Piperidine rig here. These compounds show at the best uh, sodium channel blocking values and tremor values. For example, this, this compound uh, show at excellent tremor ED50 value. But the main problem was that the, these compounds show at HERC activity. And how ca can we avoid the HERC activity? I mentioned an example in the uh, literature overview that uh, the researchers of company Merck uh, could avoid the uh, HERG activity uh, intro by introduction of an amide function. We introduced this, this amide function into a spacer and in, into the ring. And the problem was that the uh, tremor the 50 values were lower. Sometimes uh, we uh, lost the sodium channel blocking activity. We have synthesized the paraethylphenyl derivatives too. And fortunately, we noticed that in case of the paraethyl derivatives, the Herg activity could be reduced. Here you can see this compound, the Dremoridi 50 values were. were uh, good. Uh, summarizing the, the first project, we could improve the metabolic stability of the tolperison. Uh, we could eliminate the HERC problem. About 300 phenoxyalkylamines were synthesized, sometimes with rigid spacer. The second project was the sodium 1.7 subtype selective voltage gated sodium channel blockers for the treatment of inflammatory pain. What was the background of, of this project? Uh, the synthesis of subtype selective sodium channel blockers came into the focus, as I, as I yeah. uh, mentioned Professor, example. Uh, sorry for interruption. Uh, may I yes. request you to please conclude uh, for the you know want of time. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. That uh, uh, company Merck pulled out the market uh, painkiller biox, and uh, in this situation, the uh, position of the selective COX-2 inhibitors weakened in the field of inflammatory pain, and we. Uh, started this, this project, this 1.7 subtype selective sodium channel blocker, benzyloxybenzylamine cluster was selected after a high throughput screening, and we have synthesized uh, 
several derivatives uh, modified the modified uh, spacer for example here indoor derivatives here still been derivatives double bond was was uh, introduced uh, and the ic50 values were uh, under uh, under one micromole and uh, the benzyloxy benzylamines uh, showed ic50 values under one micromole and uh, similar to this the dia the bicyclo-derivatives uh, were successful. successful, and uh, the most interesting uh, compounds were where we uh, introduced another uh, aromatic function here uh, into the benzyloxy benzylamine uh, uh, moiety. Yes, yes. And here you can see our uh, best compounds here, the uh, phenyl substituted benzyloxy benzylamines. And we could avoid the hair problem in, in this case, in this case too. And uh, the conclusion of our, our uh, work, uh, the subtype selective voltage gated sodium channel blocker uh, is, is a new trend and uh, our main problem was the herg activity side effect and we could uh, we could avoid this problem in uh, these two examples and the end of my lecture uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, to the colleagues in the field of pharmacology, in the field of medicinal chemistry and, and analysis, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Hedwig Bolski. Uh, if you permit, uh, would you like to take any question? Any question from the audience? Okay, since there is no question, let us... Uh, Thank uh, Professor Bolski for her excellent talk. Thank you, Professor Bolski. So we move on to the next talk. The next lecture is by Dr. Prashant Kumar. Is he? Professor, uh, Dr. Prashant Kumar is currently faculty at Department of Chemistry of SRM University at Delhi NCR Sonipat. She joined there in 2019 and completed his PhD in 2018 from University of Delhi. His expertise is in organic chemistry and he has received teacher's associateship for research excellent grant from CERB recently. He has published more than 30 papers and book chapters and is a reviewer of several uh, reputed journals. He works primarily based on metal catalyzed metal free CH activation for selective functionalization of bioactive molecules, microwave assisted multi step synthesis of biologically active molecules, and he is also an active member of Green Chemistry Network Center, University of Delhi and RSC. Dr. Prashant Kumar. Thank you, sir, uh, for nice introduction. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank organizers, uh, conference, uh, Professor Nandra Project, sir. My special thanks to Professor Arge Sharma for giving me this opportunity to present my work in this uh, wonderful symposium. So uh, nowadays we talk about uh, the development of sustainable uh, protocols uh, for the synthesis of organic molecules, for the selective functionalization, uh, uh, so that we can reduce the steps, uh, we can get good atom economy, we can improve the product yields, and uh, we can uh, uh, get the products uh, like uh, with high selectivity. So I also try to do a little bit in bit in this uh, uh, field. So my uh, work basically. Uh, that I'm going to discuss here today is a palladium catalyzed uh, 
protocols for the selective functionalization of valuable heterocycle molecules uh, through the CH activation. So uh, the great, uh, the German chemist uh, Alvin Mises said that the chemistry without catalyst would be a sword without a handle, a light without brilliance, and a bell without a sound. And another uh, great scientist, as Philip Mann said, that 90% of chemical products rely on a catalytic process at some point in their manufacturing process. Catalysts are the philosopher stone of chemistry. So uh, this catalyst, they work like a policeman as he does the traffic. They don't appear in the global chemical reaction scheme, but they drag the molecules where they need to go in the fastest, most efficient way possible. So we can see uh, the role of catalyst everywhere in the fine chemicals, production of chemicals, pharmaceuticals, agrochemicals, in petroleum polymers and electronics. Every way we can see uh, the involvement of catalyst in some or another way. So I can skip uh, this because this is just a uh, uh, very uh, common slide. Uh, so why does the catalyst so important in uh, organic synthesis or chemical reactions? So what is amazing about catalyst? How they allow for the faster chemical reactions? So molecules that uh, could take weeks, months, or even years to inject can react within seconds with the help of a catalyst. And these catalysts actually what they do, they provide a pathway uh, to the substrate through which they can react faster by reducing the activation energy. You can see these two profiles. The first profile is the reactions which we uh, which is carried out without uh, the application of a catalyst. And you can see uh, the barrier for this, and this is the uh, the Gibbs free, uh, sorry, uh, this is the activation energy that we required to uh, cross this uh, barrier for the product formation. Whereas if you see this, the act activation energy is very low. So the catalyst helps to reduce the activation energy so that the re reaction proceeds at a faster way. Also, they provide, uh, if there's a possibility for some selectivity in the reaction in the product formation, they can provide that alternative route for the formation of selective product. So uh, metal catalyst in organic synthesis. So the importance of metal catalyst in organic synthesis can be visualized by the Nobel uh, prizes given in the field of catalysis. So in 2005, uh, that metal catalyzed reactions for the alkene metathesis received the Nobel prize. Then in 2010, again, metal catalyzed coupling reactions, basically for palladium catalyzed reactions was given the Nobel prize. Last year, the development of organic catalysts for the uh, synthesis of uh, valuable heterocycle molecules, biomolecules. In this year also, uh, that click chemistry received the Nobel prize and th that is also involves the use of metal that is copper. So uh, this catalyst, how the catalyst works in CH activation. Actually, CH activation uh, is a process uh, of the formation of that carbon, carbon, or carbon, nitrogen, carbon, sulfur, carbon, oxygen, oxygen or carbon, uh, hydroatoms bond or halogens bond. So uh, there are a number of mechanisms available for this process like uh, uh, oxidative addition, sigma bond, metathesis, electrophilic substitution reactions. And in these protocols, actually, uh, the metal first uh, that interact uh, with the hydrogen actually get coordinated between the carbon and hydrogen bond form a uh, intermediate molecule that is organometallic species and then uh, this species can be functionalized with the help of a suitable reactant or substrate. Uh, the application of CH activation is gaining tremendous uh, attention because there is no uh, pre-functionalization requirement for the uh, functionalization of synthesis of the molecules. It is a one-step process can be there. The improved product grid can be obtained, high selectivity can be obtained, and it plays a very important role in the late stage functionalization of the valuable heterocycle molecules. So uh, nowadays, this uh, adapting group approach has also uh, received much attention uh, because they uh, further enhance the achieving the uh, selectivity of the products. So we know uh, when we uh, try to functionalize a uh, CH bond, we activate once to activate a CH bond in a molecule, we can have multiple numbers of CH bond. Then how to uh, we, uh, we will uh, selectively uh, interact with one uh, carbon hydrogen bond. That is a very challenging task. Uh, in heterocycle molecules, the heteratoms can help in uh, attaining the selectivity to the nearby carbon hydrogen center. But what about the simple aromatic molecules and the aliphatic systems? So in those cases, these directed groups, they help 
to achieve uh, the selective fungicidization at a nearby uh, carbon hydrogen bond. Uh, this is the way how they uh, help. Actually, you can see here, uh, this is a carbon hydrogen bond and this is a directing group. When a metal is placed in the chemical reaction, this metal coordinate with the directing group because directing group will be either a heteroatom like nitrogen or it can be an oxygen, it can be sulfur, which have the lone pair of electrons and they uh, interact through those lone pairs of electron with the metal. And same time, this metal also interact with the carbon hydrogen bond. Then there's the intramolecular carbon hydrogen bond cleavage takes place and this metal makes the bond with carbon as well as the directing group. And then ligand exchange process and the repair elimination resulted in the final products. So you can see the importance of the directing group by the, uh, through this uh, image. You can see the number of uh, functional groups like ketones, L, uh, carboxylic acids, esters, amides, carbamates, uh, then hydrogens, and so many uh, other groups are being used as a directing group for achieving the selective functionalization of a carbon hydrogen bond. Uh, Previously, uh, the protocol was only applicable to the ortho position, but uh, nowadays uh, people have worked uh, and they have selectively functionalized meta position as well as para position with the help of the acting group. So uh, in this CH activation approaches, uh, basically mainly the palladium, rhodium, iridium and ruthenium based catalyst mostly be used. Uh, and but among these all, uh, the palladium has received much attention because of the few advantages of this palladium or the other metals because it helps in the formation of multiple carbon uh, and other atoms more like carbon oxygen, carbon halogens, nitrogen, sulfur and carbon carbon bonds. And uh, it, it is uh, feasible to carry out the reaction in presence of pal uh, this palladium in, uh, using the various directing groups. It also uh, possible to functionalize the sp2 and sp3 carbon hydrogen sites with the help of uh, palladium which is very difficult with the other metals. Moreover, uh, we can see uh, this palladium is, has the ability to exhibit multiple oxidation state. Palladium 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and theoretically, palladium 6 complexes are also reported in the literature. So, uh, this is the paper which uh, triggered me to work in this uh, palladium catalyzed reactions. This was published in 2016 by Sir Bidavan They have just carried out the selective acylation of this uh, benzoxygen molecule using this alpha carboxylic acid. Uh, this, I just uh, see a, a problem in this protocol because this alpha oxo carboxylic acid molecules, they are very little uh, in the market. Although we can synthesize these uh, molecules, uh, but the protocol involves the use of selenium dioxide that has its own drawback. Secondly, uh, there's the liberation of carbon dioxide. There's low atomic on with air and the involvement of two uh, oxidant here, that is silver nitrate and the ammonium sulfate. And the, in the literature, it is well known that uh, this, as this alpha oxo carboxylic acid is converted into this phenyl acyl radi uh, radical, likewise aldehydes, tolins, and benzyl alcohols can be converted into this uh, acyl radical. And uh, these uh, substrate, they are easily available. The number of aldehydes, tolins are available. Uh, good atom economy can be achieved because there is no loss of any atom here. Good product fields are also reported with respect to this alpha oxo carboxylic acid in the literature. So I tried uh, to carry out the same reaction uh, with the help of these substrates. So I uh, took this substrate, this benzoxazine and toline, and I carried out the reaction with palladium uh, catalyst. That was, firstly, I used palladium acetate and uh, TBHP as oxidant, tertiary butyl hydrogen peroxide. And uh, I isolated my product. I catalyzed that uh, with the help of proton NMR and HRMS. So both the uh, spectrum were in the good agreement with the, this compound. But the 13C NMR spectrum and the IR spectrum was not agreement with this compound. Because uh, there is acetone, uh, you can see the keto group here, but there was no peak of the keto group in uh, uh, 13C spectrum. So then I uh, developed a single crystal of the compound and that found this something like this. And the product that was formed was this. That was quite a different product from the uh, reported one. So then I thought to uh, go in the deep uh, for this uh, uh, compound uh, and, and then started optimizing my reaction conditions by using various metals uh, based catalysts like palladium, copper, cobalt, nickel, various oxidants I tried. 
and I obtained uh, like a 40 percent uh, yield of this my product along with the uh, 20 percent yield of this byproduct. This is obtained by the hydrolysis of this compound. Then I uh, uh, further optimize the conditions by stress the effect of temperature, time, and concentration of catalyst as well as uh, oxidant. And I could obtain my product in 75 percent yield when temperature was 120 degree and the five mole percent catalyst was used and six millimole of oxidant uh, was used. So with these uh, conditions, I uh, uh, I just synthesized several molecules. Uh, a uh, library was uh, formed, uh, and the structure was uh, confirmed by single crystal data. Seventy-five percent product yield was obtained. But if you look at uh, these two structures, structure number one and structure number three, this CO group. If you see, we don't have any CO group in this attached to this carbon and this uh, nitrogen and this carbon. Okay. So this CO is coming from this toluene. The methyl group of toluene is being converted into this CO, and that is being inserted here. And this benzene ring is also the part of this toluene node for this compound. So to assure uh, that this is uh, is true, we developed one more a single crystal. Uh, that was this one. In this case, uh, the methoxy group was introduced to the toluene, and we developed the crystal. And we finally found that this CO group is actually the part of this toluene. That is this carbon, which is being converted into a sile radical part that is being inserted here. How it is being inserted, I will show in the mechanism part. Uh, so I just then uh, to expand the substrate scope, I took aldehydes and optimized the conditions and I could obtain the 17% yield of uh, product in presence of 14 dioxin solvent. Previously, we used the dichloroethane, but here we need uh, to use 1,4 dioxane to improve the product yield. So, a library of uh, cell compounds was synthesized. Likewise, uh, we also tried uh, the benzyl alcohols for this protocol, and the products could be obtained in, in to, uh, poor to moderate yields. But yes, we could obtain the products. So, after this, the next target for us was to develop the mechanism for this protocol. And for this, uh, we carried out several experiments. Initially, we removed the metal catalyst from the conditions, but there was no product formation. Then we remove a TBHP uh, oxidant and keep the metal. Again, there was no product formation. When the reaction was carried out using tempo, that is a radical inhibitor, uh, the product formation was not obtained. Rather, we obtained this compound, compound eight, which uh, trigger, which tells us that the reaction pro, uh, is obtained the free radical pathway. Now, uh, minute-wise monitoring of this reaction uh, gives us the product 9, which was reported by the BC Rhino. And this product, I obtained this product in 15 minutes. And this product was so uh, reactive that even keeping the reaction at room temperature was giving me the my targeted product. Could you please continue? Okay, uh, the formation of this product also confirmed with the help of uh, single crystal data. And when this product separately reacted with TBHP, only oxidant we used, we obtained our product. So uh, from here, we came to know that for the conversion of 9 into 3A, there is no need of metal. Oxidant is playing some role here. That means some free radical reaction again proceeding for the conversion of 9 into 10, 9 into 3A. So then we developed a mechanism for this. The simple mechanism, which is start with the circular palladation of nitrogen and the metal, giving the uh, intermediate 10. Simultaneously, this these compounds, they can be converted into SL radical using this TBHP radical that inserted into, the, into, the, uh, into this compound 10, giving us the intermediate 12, which on deductive elimination delivered the, this acylated product and the catalyst back. Now, this compound 9, it undergoes some finaling migration through radical mechanism to give the final design product 3A. Uh, this paper was published in, G in GOC. Uh, now then we investigate the Maji uh, work that was reported by him. So I carried out the reaction initially with uh, this alpha oxide carbo carboxylic acid using my previous conditions. I obtained my product. With this, their conditions also, I obtained my product. Uh, so there conclude. was no sign of... Please conclude. Yes, sir, just give five minutes. There was no uh, uh, sign of their uh, product in these my conditions. So we carried out several experiments to confirm that our protocol is correct and we are not doing any mistake. So several actions were carried out and we found that uh, this product that was put by Maji, we can obtain that product in their conditions. And there's no need to use of the silver nitrate that is extra oxidant. 
and this product can be converted into this compound my uh, compound is 3a very easily without catalyst just using a oxidant reaction so that reaction uh, mechanism follow the free radical pathway so then we uh, optimize the reaction conditions we prepare the library of several molecules also confirm with the single crystal data then after my work their paper has been detracted from the journal with the agreement between the authors and the editor this paper was detracted and my paper was published in the same journal and i also worked uh, uh, on the acetoxylation and uh, this butoxylation of this compound to uh, further study uh, the effect of palladium and other uh, substrate of my uh, molecule we optimize the conditions and uh, we obtain the 80% yield of the product with acetic and hydride and keep carrying out the extent 100 degree temperature we study the effect of uh, substrate for the acetoxylation also for the tetrabutoxylation we carried out the several reactions we also uh, studied uh, other hydrocyanic molecules like uh, indolines benzoxazine and this phenyloxazoline for this acetoxylation and the tetrabutoxylation this is a simple mechanism for this uh, transformation this is the published in chemistry select now we also then uh, carried out further reaction uh, this time we have taken this phenyloxazine and we carried out the acylation and we used water as a solvent for this protocol optimize the conditions and we obtain the 81% yield of the product using this tbvp as oxidant in presence of palladium catalyst we studied the effect of benzaldehydes and structure confirmed with the single crystal data we also studied the effect of benzyl alcohols as well as octolines also competitive experiments were uh, carried out using the electron withdrawing and electron releasing benzaldehydes within one uh, reaction mixture and we found that benzaldehyde containing electron releasing group gets faster than the containing the electron withdrawing group we also see the synthetic application of this protocol using some bioactive molecules like antimicrobial molecules and we could achieve uh, the selective acylation of the product with the help of palladium catalyst then control experiments were performed uh, for investigation of the reaction mechanism again critical pathway was obtained and this is the simple uh, mechanism for uh, this uh, protocol uh, this is the publication that we received uh, in this month only and uh, this in obc i also worked on copper catalyzed reactions where we carried out click reaction in sequential manner okay this metal free reactions i worked metal free reactions uh, by, uh, metal uh, this is again uh, multi step reactions and the microwave for the anti molecule synthesis recently i received uh, this uh, tear grant from the sub for uh, carrying out the photocatalytic uh, reactions to convert co2 into valuable heterocyclic molecules thank you thanks okay uh... Now the next uh, talk is by Professor Anil Kumar. Uh, Professor Anil Kumar, for the want of time, please uh, ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Anil Kumar Changani is an environmental ecologist, field biologist, presently working as professor and head, Department of Environmental Science, Faculty of Science, Maharaja Ganga Singh. University Bikaner with 20 years teaching and 25 years research experience. He has received several recognition awards. There is a long list. Again, for the want of time, I will not go through all those, but he would like to highlight he has published over 130 research papers in international and national journals of repute with an H index of 18 and I10 index 29. In the last 20 years, he made and advised several national and international films and documentaries with BBC, Bristol, NHK, German TV, yeah. French TV, and many more. Professor Anil Kumar. Thank you so much, sir. I assure Honorable Chairman, sir, and my August gathering that I will take minimum 10 minutes and finish within that time. Thank you so much. Uh, I must congratulate Dungar College and authority from here and my special thanks to Professor Bojak to give me an opportunity to share my field experience with 
a august gathering of renowned chemists we talk about the green chemistry what i understood green means eco friendly i guess and with special reference to food and water these are the basic component which comes from mother nature and we all survived with this covid 19 with the product of nature with our immunity and we survived many of our families and our friends we lost so i just give you a brief scenario just for your refreshment what kind of desert we are heading and what kind of desert scenario we have so it is not a presentation not a deep scientific thing but what kind of green technology we are introducing in this desert what havoc it is going to be creating so this is our third desert and this is our 95% landscape with agriculture and humans as we all know this is the highly populated desert in the world we have so many kind of land structures in the third desert in protected areas and but traditionally we have common property resources which are the basic gene bank of thar desert's diversity and they have the different names that is orans and gochers if you have been to desnop this area known desnop temple is also known as karni mata oran oran means a sacred brew named after local heroes and deities so this is the scenario in desert no one is guarding these orans it is all been governed by the people these are the pasture lands for the cows known as gochers these are the jod python the traditional water bodies so most of the desert village whether it is a small or whether it is large it is been supplemented by their own resources water bodies named after the nadis and talabs and their catchments and then sand dunes they are the moisture retainers some river beds some forest enclosures some gravel lands some wastelands in record but they are the nutrient banks food and fodder banks water banks for us not shell mein aapko batau to jo 2 saal ka covid phase tha hum logo ke beech mein main apne young students ko especially batana chahta hu is 2 saal mein aapko aur humko doodh dahi ghee chhach ki kami nahi hai desert mein hum kisi ko bhi hum mein se agar kisi ne 5 10 packet फूड के सप्लाई किए अखबार में हमने कोविड में सप्लाई किया लोगों को ग्राउंड पे बट 30 लाख तो लाइव स्टॉक है 25 लाख से ज्यादा तकरीबन वाइल्ड एनिमल्स हैं चिंकारा ब्लैक बग ब्लू गुल वाइल्ड गोर्स इन सब को जो सप्लाई मिला फूड एंड फॉर्डर एंड वाटर दैट 100 परसेंट कम फ्रॉम दीज कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी रिसोर्सेज एंड वॉट वी आर डूइंग विद दीज कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी रिसोर्सेज ऑन द नेम ऑफ ग्रीन एनर्जी एंड ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी दैट यू आर गोइंग टू सी इन द नेक्स्ट लाइफ so these are the water bodies here full with the life most of the migratory birds come in this part and these are the common property resources and this is their character how they are giving us the livelihood how they are preserving our biodiversity so good ecology ensured the good economy this is what we say and nature is the producer religion and culture mind it other than politics our religion and culture was the code of conduct we are still following that and consumer is the humans and livestock and wild animals and we are the land of man animal relation human landscape is full with the life hundreds of birds mammals and reptiles around us this is how people live with the animals in the rural area these are the major trees of the thar desert i won't go into the details these are the shrubs these are the local material utilized by the people to make their houses and shelters all natural resources produced by these common property resources all kind of agricultural implements all local materials utilized by them this is the food item we consumes most of you are from this area and people from outside also know what kind of panchkuta the kher sangri kumtia we used to eat and it is almost preserved in our houses and people get their livelihood from these products every day and every month if you go to the market in thar desert districts any of the district you will find these products in the market and they are all pesticide free they cannot grow in the farm houses they are all wild many medicinal plants i won't go in the detail very quickly 
and how these common property resources protected us in thar desert in this covid has been proven with many of the scientific data we have the lowest death rate during covid in thar desert compared to the rest of the rajasthan india and world we have the highest recovery rate but this is not all is good on the name of energy we are heading for oil dwelling in barmer jaisalmer jalor i was fortunate to be over there for environment impact assessment studies and recently this is green energy solar plants i think what we are talking about the technology but if it is at the cost of food and water i'm sorry we need to think again wind energy this is the result of wind energy in the thar desert the scheduled species like great indian bustard is killed with the wind turbines every day we are spending crores of rupees to protect that animal but at the same time we are killing them on the name of green energy this energy needs an environment audit at very urgent level at policy level and this is the scenario in thar desert nowadays if you go from bikaner to jaisalmer you will find everywhere most of the high tension wires are full with the dead vultures full with the dead raptors eagles great indian bustard and all kind of avian species and this is the scenario people are cutting lakhs of green khejri tree which is the livelihood support fodder support for the people of thar desert and we are cutting that on the name of green energy and in our policy it is been clinched by all the authorities on the name of green energy so we must understand what kind of green energy we are heading for so it's not a rocket science in your google earth on your mobile you can see any image with the time scale or the history of the google you can go to any of the solar plant you will find hundreds of thousands of trees before that solar plant within a year within a two year within a five year the area has been cleaned up this is the scenario in all the area where we are heading for green energy with the solar plants because they need to clean all the grounds not a single tree has been left for that people are agitating in every district in every tehsil every panchayat people making oran bachao abhiyan gochar bachao abhiyan khejri bachao abhiyan this kind of things happening on the ground and if we as academician we as technologist we as a teacher if not understanding their values i think we need to think that this is what happens in the green area all solar plants within 100 meter radius you won't find any bird nest not a single mammal including rodent because they are damaging their pipes electric wires so they clean up all the burrows and most importantly the pollinators has been wiped out from that area honey bees butterflies cicadas all gone people with the date palm farms with the horticulture products they are doing artificial pollination in that area because there is no natural pollinate available in that region this is a simple example with the satellite village khari charnan may 2014 landsat data you can see more than 100 of water bodies over there oh, sorry pointer the light tick these are all blue water bodies and this is 2014 may as we all know that landsat data can be replaced on the same date and this is the scenario in 2022 all blue water bodies has been gone within 7 year because all the solar plates need to be cleaned every day and as the temperature i think this is very good energy the solar is a very free and very eco friendly energy if your area temperature is below 35 where the normal temperature in summer goes to 50 degree area we have been observed they are more than 45 degree Fifty degree now, fifty degree, and to cool their plates, 
they used to have sensors behind their solar plates as temperature raised more than 50 degree the sensor plates activated and water start running to keep them cool so in desert from where you get the water we hardly have water to drink so we are consuming the livestock water we are consuming the wild animals water we are consuming people's resources and producing green energy at what cost you can see the scenario of water as our mandate of this works of food and water so we are not against this energy we are suggesting them very good method we have almost 1700 1700 km indira gandhi canal in the thar desert if you can put your plates on the canal that save water evaporation that save us from silt that save the land damage we are heading for so this can be done and it has been done in gujarat and in punjab so there is urgent need to conserve biodiversity and there is urgent need specially to go for the environment audit on the name of green energy we need to we think about the policy we need to check our technology we need to head in a multi dimensional multi disciplinary way we need to think twice what kind of technology we are evolving and we are introducing to the society otherwise what happened earlier introduced hybrid crop now scientists surrendered after 25 years sorry the traditional was better the traditional seed need to be reintroduced it is not in the wild now same with the livestock now we are saying go back to the thar parker and rati breed of the cow the original seed has been gone so we should not head on the name of green energy and green so before it is too late i think i must share this with you people and thank you so much for listening this thank you thank you professor anil kumar thank you any one question if there is any query i think it's government government has charging 2 rupees from the producers most of the big houses have their own solar plants here in 5 to 10 square kilometer areas and with purchase of 2 rupees they are selling it in 10 rupees to the neighboring states only government benefited the local people i produce energy here in your village you won't get anything from them i'm snatching resources from you i'm cutting your tree i'm drinking your water i'm consuming your resources and giving it to the other states okay i think uh, probably we can discuss at length later so we have i think let us uh, conclude this and we have the last uh, presentation of the day it's a oral presentation by dr chetna rana uh, yes so in a yes in about 4 minutes ma'am Good afternoon, everyone. Chemistry is the study of metals, non-metals, carbon, its compounds, and various reactions. And when reaction comes, definitely speed comes. And when speed comes, chemical kinetics come. I, Dr. Chetna Rana, I am going to present. a kinetic study of industrially important primary and secondary alcohol using inorganic oxidants i am going to include kinetics of oxidation of perfumery primary and secondary alcohol uh, uh, experimental work and effect of alcohol and con oxidant concentration 
and the temperature or rate of the reaction and the final mechanism of the reaction. Chemical kinetics is a study of reaction and the various factors which are going to affect rate of the reaction. So this reaction may be concentration of reactant, ionic strain, temperature, solvent composition and catalyst. Uh, there are various tools which are available to study this reaction that we are going to present over here. Now, rate of the reaction can be monitored by physical methods like conductance, spectrophotometer, optical rotation. I have used conventional titrometric method for my experimental work. There are various quantitative conversion of alcohol to corresponding uh, carbonyl group are available in the literature, but there are very few reports where of very less work on the kinetic and thermodynamic aspect of the conversion of alcohol. I have used perfumery alcohols for my work because India is one of the largest manufacturer of uh, uh, perfumes and the perfumer, uh, and the fragrances. We have number of perfumery formulation available in our literature. For my research work, I have used uh, for this paper, I have used two alcohols, primary aliphatic alcohol 1 hexanol and secondary cyclic alcohol cyclo cyclohexanol. Both these alcohols are used in perfumery industry, they are used in uh, polymer industry and also in the menu, in the formulation of soap and other uh, perfumery materials. Oxidant use are potassium per potassium per sulfate. The experimental work is on the basis that kinetics studied is under first order kinetics with first order condition with respect to oxidant. And um, rate of the reaction is determined from the first order plot of log time. The unreacted oxidant is, uh, is titrated hydrometrically at the, during the course of the reaction. I have used two oxidants, that is potassium per iodate and potassium per sulfate in acidic medium. These two oxidants are used to convert um, uh, uh, alcohols to corresponding carbonyl groups. Primary alcohol is getting converted into uh, aldehyde and secondary alcohol is going to convert into ketone. Now, this table shows rate of reaction of oxidation of alcohol by potassium per iodate. The experiment shows that there are uh, 12 sets. First six sets is with the uh, uh, first six sets where alcohol concentration is kept constant. Sorry. Here, these are the first set, six set, where alcohol concentrations are kept constant and oxidant concentration is increasing. And remaining six set where alcohol concentration is increasing and oxidant concentration is kept constant. For both the set, it has been found that this is the rate of reaction for one hexanol and here is the rate of reaction of cyclohexanol. For first six set, it has been found that the rate of reaction decreases for one hexanol and cyclohexanol. This is the rate of reaction for one hexanol and cyclohexanol. And when alcohol concentration increases, it has been found that rate of the reaction increases from here 0 0.21 to 0 0.51. And here it has been 0 0.16 to 0 0.26. So it has been found that rate of the reaction increases. This table shows rate of the reaction of the same alcohol, but where my oxidant is potassium per sulfate. Oxidant is different. Same way, I have found that rate of the reaction increases when you have alcohol concentration increases. This is a graph showing comparison, comparison shows that here one hexanol rate of the reaction of one hexanol is higher. Here also one rate of the reaction of one hexanol is higher compared to cyclohexanol. Now, reaction mechanism of this uh, oxidation shows that in acidic medium, potassium per iodate forms per iodic acid, which is a strong acid. It's a strong oxidizing agent. So there is a conversion of one hexanol to hex a hexanol, that is aldehyde, and a hypohalite ion is formed. Same way, cyclohexanol is converted into cyclohexanol with formation of hypohalite ion. This is the reaction mechanism for potassium per iodate. And here, Oxidant is potassium per sulfate, which forms per, uh, uh, peroxide disulfuric acid, which is also a strong oxidizing agent. 
so here is the conversion of one hexanol to hexanol and cyclohexanol to cyclohexanol alcohol to ketone alcohol to aldehyde and unreacted oxidant is titrated idiomatically uh, uh, see as i told you that there is a formation of aldehyde and ketone so uh, this uh, formation of aldehyde and ketone is identified by 2,4 dnp test and it is confirmed by tlc at the end it is confirmed by 2,4 dnp and confirmed by tlc test this is a thermodynamic parameter okay this is a thermodynamic parameter found for both the alcohol and inference is drawn is that rate of the red red constant k increases with temperature as we all know and uh, equilibrium constant k is the form uh, for the formation of activated complex for reaction increases with the temperature so k star is the function of temperature so finally here is the conclusion that one hexanol is found to be faster reactant than cyclohexanol and potassium potassium persulfate uh, is a faster reacting uh, oxidant than potassium iodide so these are the references and i would like to thank my principal dr p k gogari professor p k gogari my head dr nt nirgude my mentor and guide dr d v prabhu sir from wilson college mumbai and i also like to thank uh, perfume manufacturer and finally i would like to thank organizer of this event thank you so much thank you uh, any one question yes please it is not related with green chemistry yeah. no it is not related with green chemistry it is chemistry work okay uh, thank you so it does relate to chemistry which is definitely central to many things so uh, we come to an end of this session we had uh, invited presentation and one oral presentation please join me in thanking all the speakers for their wonderful talks thank you very much sir uh, we'll take 2 minutes for uh, uh, momento presentation uh, first of all i request uh, uh, professor bhaskar datta uh, kindly be on the desk sir इसके पीछे आ जाइए थैंक यू सर हाँ बहुत अच्छा है वी आर ऑल्सो थैंकफुल टू प्रोफेसर हैडविक बोलेश्की शी इज स्टिल विद अस इफ यू कैन हियर मी वी आर रियली थैंकफुल टू hadwick we were in a contact since long and uh, you are uh, presenting a wonderful work uh, thank you now uh, i request uh, dr prashant kumar to be on the desk and i request uh, our chairperson co chairperson md sharma sir and anand ji to kindly uh, and professor anand kishore sir kindly present this momento to dr prashant kumar now i request uh, uh, professor ak changani sir kindly be on the dais i request uh, professor nand kishore sir md sharma sir and anand khatri ji kindly present this token of appreciation to changani sir i hope that uh, green energy work will be proceeded by this symposium
थैंक यू ऑल नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर एस के वर्मा सर टू काइंडली प्रेजेंट दी टोकन ऑफ एप्रिशिएशन टू प्रोफेसर नंद किशोर सर फॉर चेयरिंग द सेशन फॉलोड बाय now we have got the correct one so uh, we can present with a particular photograph now uh, to dr md sharma sir and also to dr anand khatri sir with this we are ending the today's technical session thank you very much sir now we are heading towards the cultural program uh, tomorrow uh, at 9:30 pm uh, 9:30 am uh, <laughs> so we are uh, we will be gathering again and i am really thankful to all delegates who were present throughout the session at uh, 6:15 when the final technical session was being started i uh, dropped a message in the group that sir uh, gp singh sir here so i would like to inform you sir 71 uh, delegates were present and uh, i have uh, rarely seen that in the end session and in the ending lecture 71 if participants are really listening so this is fantastic thank you all of you now we are leading towards the cultural program and i request uh, cultural committee members dr shushma jain ma'am is there dr indra bishnoi ma'am is there dr anila purohit ma'am is there uh, if dr shushma jain ma'am can come and uh, this desk is yours and uh, if you need anything uh, will you take 5 minutes so within 5 minutes they are gathering and then uh, we'll start it meantime may i ask uh, guman singh is here is there guman singh meantime uh, they are preparing uh, the desk so if guman singh is there i will yes no uh actually uh, this uh, part we have converted into food and cultural part so few msc students of our department has prepared uh, few innovative products from aloe vera and one is the kalakand of aloe vera so he will try to serve little bit here and uh, yes if guman singh is here so if you can bring so you can uh, एंड प्रियंका इज ऑल्सो देयर तो मैडम आप प्यार कर रहे हैं ना ये हटाएंगे तो मैं रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ गुमान सिंह और प्रियंका से आप अपने प्रोडक्ट के बारे में कुछ बता दें जब तक ये तैयारी हो रही है ठीक है ठीक है तो वी वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट इट ओके गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू प्रोग्राम कल्चरल प्रोग्राम शुरू होने जा रहा है और यहाँ जो प्रोग्राम प्रस्तुत करेंगे वो बेसिकली कोई कलाकार नहीं है उन्होंने चार पांच दिन की मेहनत से अपना प्रोग्राम तैयार किया है और वो एमएससी प्रीवियस और फाइनल के केमिस्ट्री डिपार्टमेंट के स्टूडेंट्स हैं तो 
उनका उस सावधान आप तालियां बजाकर करते रहे ताकि वो अगले साल भी जब भी अगली बार जब भी कॉन्फ्रेंस हो तो और भी अधिक उत्साह के साथ अपना प्रस्तुतिकरण कर सके तो बस मैं यही चाहूंगी कि आपकी तालियां बसती रहना चाहिए थैंक यू सर मैं अब अपना ये डाइस जो है हमारे एंकरिंग के लिए एमएससी प्रीवियस की छात्रा है दुर्गांशी इनको हैंड ओवर कर रही हूँ Good evening, everyone. To our esteemed guest, warm welcome to our college. To our honourable principal, Dr. G. P. Singh, respected faculty members, and my fellow student, fellow student body, a very good evening. Rare are the days when one gets the chance to be in the company of such admired and honest intellectual minds, and I am beyond glee to be experiencing such a day. I, Durganshi, extend you all to the hospitality of our college. and happily invite you to experience with me a dash of color vibrance vigor and joy through the heavily cultural performances prepared by the artistic members of our msc chemistry students so that you can experience the culture that is our marwad first up i would like to invite on stage ma'am are they coming okay first up i would like to invite on stage anshu and nidhi to commence the program with a salutation towards lord ganesh the deity of auspiciousness and pleasant beginnings to seek their blessings anshu and nidhi would you come on stage please please welcome them with a round of applause rightfully serene performance for a serene celebration moving on i would now like to request dr sandeep kar to bestow up okay later on perhaps so so moving on to 
dance performance by monica rathore uh, she is going to perform she is going to give us a goomer performance so i like to invite inv uh, invite monica rathore on stage please monica would you please come on stage
This performance showed us that culture is a part of our blood, a truly outstanding show of grace and poise. Next up, I would like to invite Varsha and Anuradha. They were our NSS volunteers under Dr. S. N. Jatolia. They have prepared a performance of our world famous Kalbelia dance. performance. I can see how our audience are so mesmerized. Next up, we have Lipakshi to sing a song, uh, Bholi Chiraiya. So I invite Lipakshi to the stage to grace us with a musical aura.
What a melodious rendition. Next up, I'd like to invite Chitali on the stage to amaze her with a beautiful dance performance. Chitali, please. That was truly spectacular. Next up, I'd like to call on stage Priyanka and Nisha. Priyanka, I'd like to mention, is an NSS volunteer under Dr. Jatolia and a quite diligent one, I'd like to add. Now, Priyanka and Nisha have prepared a beautiful dance performance for you all. So please welcome them on stage. Rangila
An exhilarating display of skill. I'm sure our audience won't be forgetting it soon. Um, next, uh, would any of our guests like to sing a song for us or would to show any performance? Uh, Dr. Nand Kishore or maybe Dr. Sandeep? Would they like to perform now or later? Yeah. Nand Kishore, sir? Okay. So I would like to well, I would like to request Dr. Nand Kishore to bestow upon us a real pleasure to hear an IIT professor sing for us. Dr. Nand Kishore, please. <laughs> Hello. Although Professor Mahajan told me to play Bansuri, but I don't have Bansuri. So please. Please, please. Start, start. Thoda, thoda badaiye. Volume, volume. Thoda. So good evening to all. I'll try to sing something. Gari बस एक शाम जुल्फ की बस दिल गांव प्यार की उतारता चला दिल लगी ये शौकियां सलाम की यही तो बात हो रही है काम की कोई तो मुड़ के देख लेगा इस तरह कोई नजर तो होगी मेरे नाम की उतारता चला हुआ गरीब गरीब बहार की बजाक जाओ जुल्फ की बजी कुने गाओ प्यार की मुकार का चला हुआ स 
सुनी मेरी सदा तो किस यकीन से घटा करके आ गई जमीन के रही यही लगन तो दिले अगर भी हो रहे गई को हसीन के चला हुआ की बस एक जुल्फ की बस एक निगा प्यार की पुकारता चला हुआ Thank you, thank you. What a melodious performance, sir! It was truly an honor, and as I said, a real pleasure. Proceeding further, we have Pooja, who has prepared a dance, a solo dance performance for the audience. So I like to invite Pooja on stage. Pooja, would you please join us on our stage? Here's Pooja. Nurai ma chilara chilara chida. I'm 
I can see how a guest enjoyed it so much. Now, as I said earlier, Rajasthan is a compendium of art, culture, and heritage. So, to give you all a peek through our illustrious culture, I now invite Ved Prakash on stage to give a rendition of our famous Bhavai dance. But before, I'd like to mention that Ved is the only NSS volunteer from Bika Ne who will be attending uh, the parade on 26 January 2023 at Delhi. A big round of applause for Wade, please. Uh, sorry for that audience. We have a technical wait, please wait. He's leaving the stage. We have a technical problem. I'll think it's saying some time. So since all our chem since most of the audience sitting here are chemists, I have a funny joke for you. So can you tell me the answer to this question? What did the thermometer say to the graduated cylinder? Anyone? No one? Well, the thermometer said, graduated cylinder, you might be graduated, but I have many degrees. Here's another one for you all. Two atoms were walking down the street. One atom says to the other one, hey, I think I lost an electron. The other one asks, are you sure? Can you guess what did the first one replied? And he replied, yes, I'm positive. And here's the performance from me, everyone. Please give a few words of applause.
Uh, this is perhaps uh, the first time i without uh, presenting any technical talk i'm giving a performance on other end but me and uh, nand uh, are regular performers of our, our department so uh, and uh, often uh, nand sings after me so uh, i took the privilege of 
सिंगिंग आफ्टर हिम टूडे हाँ कहना है बेसिकली ओल्ड सॉन्ग बट इन ए न्यू स्टाइल तुमसे ये पहली बार ओ तुम ही पलाई तो जीवन में मेरे प्यार 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 कहना है कहना है आज तुमसे ये पहली बार ओ तुम ही पलाई तो जीवन में मेरे सबके बोलो कैसे कह दो सारी बातें आज मगर बस एक नाही करना है एक तुम तो लाई तो जीवन में मेरे प्यार 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 से दिल ने मेरे मान लिया है तुमको अपना तब से दिल ने मेरे मान लिया है तुमको अपना आंखें मेरी देख रही है जागृत सोते ये सपना मेरे गले में डाल रही हो तुम तुम ही बुलाई हो जीवन में मेरे प्यार 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 कहना है कहना है आज तुमसे ये पहली बार ओ तुम ही बुलाई वो जीवन में मेरे प्यार 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 तुम ही बुलाई वो जीवन में मेरे प्यार 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 This is for the young generation. No, 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 no. Cut, cut, cut. Pehla wala. Oh. 
last one i don't have another one ha ah.
प्यार के पल Sir, I'm sure the audience feel the same way as I do. We just didn't want it to end. Well, further moving on, I think we have had quite a lot of serious classical music, and so to set the further tone of the celebration, I like to invite Chetali, Nidhi, Pooja, Lipakshi, and Gitika for their group dance performance. Everyone, please welcome them on stage. Oh. 
जाओ जी मन दीत कराओ जी अरे क्यों तरसावे हो मन सकल दिखाओ जी हरी शरारत सब जाऊ मैं तो हरी हर सले उन बंगा जी मैं कह लगे What a marvelous display of scale. Um, I was informed that Dr. Pooja Sharma uh, from University of Leeds in Cambridge would like to give a dance performance. Uh, Krishna Sharma, that's what I said. I'm saying Krishna Sharma. You wrote Krishna. What is Yes. Yes, yes. You did. But uh, I'm the teachers are requesting for this to, you know, end it. <laughs> would anyone would anyone from the guests like to give us performance? Any dance, any song? Please raise your hand. Con? I think दिन में जितने अच्छे technical sessions हुए थे बहुत refreshing जो performances हैं यहाँ के छात्रों ने दी हैं और अभी भी बहुत लंबी list है एक interdisciplinary approach जो pending है बाकी है botany with music so now now i invite last hai aap sab ke liye ko dinner ke liye late ho raha hai but still uh, i would like to introduce professor rakesh hars who is a, basically uh, botany mein bahut achhi research hai aapki पर आ, YouTube पे आप देखेंगे तो बहुत सारे गाने इनके आपको मिलेंगे बहुत अच्छे एल्बम मिलेंगे तो ये अच्छी वो रहेगी और मैं रिक्वेस्ट करता हूं डॉक्टर राकेश सर से कि वो भी अपनी आकर प्रस्तुति दें डॉक्टर हर्ष प्लीज
हेलो देखिए आप सब लोग वैसे थक चुके हैं और खाने का इंतजार भी लेकिन ने सर ने रिक्वेस्ट की है तो शायद मैं परफॉर्म कर ही देता हूँ जिस तरह लोगों ने गाया है मुझे नहीं लगता कि उसके लेवल का मैं गा पाऊंगा लेकिन अब रिक्वेस्ट की तो आपको सहन करने ही पड़ेगा मुझे रात दी बस मुझे चाहती हो मुझे रात दी बस मुझे चाहती हो कहो ना कहो मुझको सब कुछ पता है हाँ करी क्या मुझे तुम बताती नहीं हो छुपाती हो मुझसे ये तुम्हारी खता है हाँ मुझे रात दिन बस मुझे चाहती हो बढ़ाना तुम्हें खूब आता है बातें बनाना निगाह मिला के यू मेरा चैन लेना सता के मुहबत में यू दर्ज देना मुझे देख के ऐसे पल के झुकाना शरारत नहीं है तो फिर और क्या है हाँ मुझे रात दी बस मुझे चाहती हो We are very much honored by a performance, sir. That is quite a memorable one. And uh, so, for the last performance, I have wonderful news for you all. Our famous two ex student, actually she's all right now. She's a student. Uh, Komal Dipawat is here with us, and uh, she's known for her beautiful dance performances and songs. And she was also an NSS volunteer. So I'd like to invite Komal on stage. Uh, she'd like to sing us. She is. She would like to sing a song for us. This is the last one song performed by Komal Depawat. 
मैं थोड़ा सेंटर दूंगी गुड इवनिंग मैं आ, मेरा परिचय देती हूँ मैं दो हजार इक्कीस में राजपथ पे जो परेड होती है गणतंत्र दिवस परेड में मैंने हिस्सा लिया था राजस्थान से मैं पहले नंबर से सेलेक्ट हुई थी उसके बाद में मैंने एनआईसी भी किया इसके अलावा मैं जो इंटरनेशनल नेशनल यूथ फेस्टिवल होता है उसमें मैंने पार्ट लिया और मैं अपने डॉक्टर सत्यनारायण जी जाटोलिया जी की इकाई से एनएसएस वॉलंटियर रही हूँ मैं उनका धन्यवाद देती हूँ अच्छा चला दें आप बिछड़े अभी तो हम बस कल पर सो जूंगी मैं कैसे इस हाल में बरसो चार दिन द बड़ी लंबी जुदाई लंबी जुदाई होठों पे आई मेरी जान दुहाई है लंबी जुदाई चार दिन प्यार और बड़ी लंबी जुदाई
Komal, a, per, a flawless and melodious ending to our exhilarating cultural program. Now, before I take your leave, I'd like to thank HOD Dr. Sushma Jain, ma'am, Dr. Narendra Bhojak, sir, and all respected faculties and honorable principal for providing me this opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you, Durganshi, for nice anchoring. Thank you all audience and participants who make the evening memorable. जब इसके प्रोग्राम की मैं प्रैक्टिस करवा रही थी तब हमारे डॉक्टर भोजक सर ने कहा था कि ये बच्चिया पढ़ने के अलावा सब कुछ कर सकती हैं। लेकिन मैं आपको बता दूं कि रिसर्च फील्ड में भी हमारी बच्चियां बहुत आगे हैं नेट और गेट क्लियर करने में दो तो हमारे बीच में भी उपस्थित हैं नेट क्लियर और गेट क्लियर अनु जैन और काजल चारण तो ये पढ़ने में भी उतनी ही होशियार हैं कल पोस्टर प्रेजेंटेशन में आपको इनके रिसर्च वर्क से रिलेटेड इंफॉर्मेशन मिल जाएगी कि ये कितनी <laughs> माया कुमारी और कनिका <laughs> Now I would invite to Professor R K Sharma, Professor Ranjana Dikshit, Professor P K Sharma, Professor S K Mehta, Professor R K uh, Mahajan, Dr G P Singh, and Dr Rakeshers, and all the committee members and participants, and Dr Sandeep and Dr Nand Kishore for in at the dais for a group photo. <laughs> 